20 years, D1NZ, the National Drifting Championship, has carved out its own piece of New Zealand motorsport history. Flying in the face of traditional motorsport categories, the original street racers whose love of cars, power, parts, style and smoking tyres has become one of New Zealand's premier motorsport categories for one simple reason. It's cool. It still holds its rebellious roots, but is transformed into a high horsepower, high tech show on four wheels, which some like to refer as the smoke show. It's a bit like fireworks, but a lot closer. Tonight, fireworks is what you are going to get as three-time champion Fanga Dan attempts to hold off the challenge from a young buck from Tokoroa in the South Waikato in Taylor James. You couldn't ask for a better script. The old bull who just loves to drift against the boy from the forest town itching to earn his first Drift King crown. This is it. The Valvoline D1NZ Grand Finale celebrating 20 years of drifters doing it their way. Get ready, we are about to light the fuse. Time has arrived, get ready for the 20th anniversary of Valvoline D1NZ in the Grand Final. You can see the of Mount Monganui behind. It does promise to be one of those special, special days. Hello folks, welcome to the grand finale celebrating 20 years of Valvoline D1NZ. Stephen McIver joined by one of the Drift Kings, a regular amigo, Mr. Two-Time Cole Armstrong. I mean, you're gonna be hanging out with some of your Drift Kings a little bit later on, buddy, but how are you feeling about this moment? It's, it's awesome, it's 20 years, uh, it's, it's growing so much this sport and we're inside of a massive stadium here. There's guys here that are going to be here tonight that I were, were my inspiration when I first started. So real cool to see the, the old boys back here um, mixing it up. <coughs> and going to have a bit of fun tonight, I think, are all these drivers. And it, and it really has already started to mess things up a little bit because the one of the real contenders is Taylor James. Now, he was, well, points behind Fanger Down, the defending Drift King. Lost his car yesterday, dropped a valve, now driving the Mimico Unicorn, they say. Great effort by everybody supporting Taylor, but it's going to be a real task, to say the least. It is already. The battle trees are set, and uh, he has a really hard run to get to the top there. Bang is sitting pretty good. I think he got a uh, P1 there. Feeling comfortable. So it's going to be an exciting night. I'm pumped up, Steve. The D1 crew have been doing a magnificent job here in the Bay Plenty after the, over the last two weeks. Get a really cool crowd here at Mercury Bay Park Stadium. But you got to do one thing if you're a drifter. you got to have a cruise. You've got to love a cruise, but you've got to love drift fans that turn out here for the grand finale and the 20th anniversary. It is a cracking track that had to be repaired in the last 48 hours. They've tarsiled one section coming into the teardrop. Colin, I think you should take us through the track and explain exactly how good this track is today. This track is well set up. Here we are set for a real straight run into a hard concrete wall. The guys are going one, two, three, four initiating into this first corner. Now this is a concrete wall. They've actually put a bit of a lip down on the inside of the track here, so you don't want to get caught up in that. They have full throttle, wide out onto the wall here. As you can see, the red and blue symbols, the cars will start to come to the inside here as they slow the car down and transition to an inside clip right there. 
transitioning the car really quickly to get back onto this outside wide line. Staying the car nice and smooth, right outside on the wide line. Tucking the car back into an outside switch before they transition the car back up onto the concrete wall. That is such an exciting part right through here where the cars will get so close to this concrete wall as they accelerate so fast through the last part of this section. It is going to be a good bit of fun. Yeah, they're talking a lot, a lot of guys sitting high too, coming to Fang and Dan saying it's quite nice coming high, leading coming into that front straight. You've got to sit high. We've talked about it all season. The entry here is critical. If you enter low, it's really hard to push the car back up, up onto the wall. So we've seen some real electric entries here by the drivers and they're sitting on that wall. You can see the scrape marks there already. It's, I'm excited, Steve. Yes, it's a beautiful shot explaining basically how beautiful the weather is right here in the Bay of Plenty. Mount Monganui certainly putting it on. Have much uh, information about um, planes there, Steve? You know what sort of aeroplane that is? I should be able to tell you. It's one of... Um, I understand there's a story about that one there. The uh, New Zealand Air Force got a uh, phone call saying you've got a jet flying over Tauranga and it's, uh, it's too loud. And they said, no, I'm sorry, we've got nothing that's that fast and makes that much noise. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, I don't care. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. The newly branded Mercury Bay Park Stadium, looking fantastic, the track. We're looking a lot better than it's been. This is the first time we've seen sunshine in the last... Uh, Probably two and a half weeks. Oh, there goes the pros lining up. There's a which is that pro? So there's a fair bit of work to do. There goes the pros anyway. Top 24 of the Pro Championship of Valvoline D1NZ steps up a gear as we get ready to go out and rumble. A couple of names that we've. Uh, and it's hard, I'm trying to work out which name that is. Looking at the back, that would be Adam Davies. We can see from the rear-mounted radiator, it's 180 versus 180. It is top 24 time. This is a D1NZ Pros, and it is the grand finale. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors. Of course, Mimico, Repco, TT Industries, and Valvoline, the name on the side of the D1NZ. D1NZ's had a fantastic season, been part of three rounds of the... Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship, of course the inaugural 67th, uh, sorry, the uh, 67th running of the uh, New Zealand Grand Prix, we're part of that as well, great to have. Now, Tony G, look at the difference we've got out here, we've got the darkness, we've got the lightness, they're in shadows and then huge rays of sunshine. Driving through that, I can't see that being fun and this is the example right now, look at the difference. Yeah, so I uh, yeah, actually had Rody Knowles up here a little bit earlier as well and I wanted to see, get a little bit of insight into that and what was the go with uh, how he was feeling or what he was thinking with uh, firstly the change of grip in that section that they lay the, the new surface um, yep. where the speedway digs it up but also mentioned, hey is there a bit of sunstrike, is there a bit of that, but he seemed to think, I mean I suppose a lot of drift cars are low, they've got the visors on them, um, he seemed to think that there wasn't a lot of sunstrike issues there so it was good to get a little bit of insight, that was only one of uh, many many drivers though of course. From memory if we go back to when the track was originally um, designed, I'm sure there was consideration put into that why they were going that way around the teardrop rather than, if you look at this being very similar to what they've got at uh, other tracks that we've built, slightly different. Anyway, it is time to get into our next battle, our first battle. This is top 24 action, and we've got the Napa Auto Parts Mimico. This is the 20B Rotary, and... Oh, Michael Thorley, he's thrown the back end of that NZ180 into the side of Adam Davies, 20B 180, and uh, Adam carried on with the run as well. Uh, I saw potentially the mistake coming from the chase driver there, so Thorley's got a lot of work to do. Adam needs to complete the run, however, gets through the teardrop just fine, comes through the inner clip makes his way back onto the Repco wall ride. Now this is an interesting one as they come through. Uh, one of the questions I'll have is, was an unchaseable lead created uh, at the start? Was the chase driver put into a uh, precarious situation coming down the straight? We'll have a look. I know that because he's got a rotary, you must choose uh, the uh, that Adam Davies is. And actually, he's from Tauranga, so I have to too. Sorry, Michael Thorley. Where, did Michael Thorley come in too hot? Where was the point that that car needed to basically transition into drift? <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're going to say thank you uh, and we'll catch you soon to Tony G. Yeah, you'll be back, mate. <laughs> As, uh, 
Here we go. Welcome, Cole Armstrong. Wow, it's really set up here today, eh? Everyone's, uh, we've got the computers out. Yeah. Yeah, look, okay, we've just seen here, you, sh- you shouldn't have bullied him out, you meanie. Um, Adam Davies mm-hmm. sets himself up for drift. Michael Thorley, very, very shallow coming in to start. Contact made. Thorley, straight lines. He's basically at a zero point run right now. But my question, and I don't know if I'll show the replay again, Cole, my question, I guess, will be did they, uh, was, was an unchaseable lead created? Was the incident created by Adam? Hopefully, you'll get another look as they come through and maybe show one more time. Or maybe they'll come up with a decision. There goes the pits. To, to be fair, Steve, in, in any instance, really, on entry, unless Adam had a huge bobble, or if Adam had any, here we go, Repco replay here. Okay. As I was saying, any uh, Adam had a big bobble, or a, a stutter on the entry, then yes, maybe he could have caused, uh, a, you know, Michael now, Corley to straight line. Now it is me, I do cheat, I do have uh, ears on with race control, and they have deemed, which is funny, they said 180 is at fault, and I was like, which 180? Well, one, the car number 180, and that is Michael Thorley. Yeah. Yeah, so on entry here, you've you've definitely got to throw the car really hard. It can happen really quickly, especially now there's more and more rubber being laid on this concrete, so it's actually getting more and more grip on the track. So very, very easily uh, easily done, and, and we've just seen there, yeah, Michael Thorley went to throw it in, had a little bit of a straight line, caused himself to have a, a good contact there against Adam Davies now. So good to see that he's actually in the, uh, in the big 20B. He's got a few scrapes on either side of the bumper. Starting to get comfortable. The silly looking there. Now they have called their five minute, but see, it's a five minute. Uh, that they've called a five it's minute. Ten minutes. Okay, so they've right. got ten minutes. They don't have to call five minutes. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Uh, well, the, these cars aren't parked. Talk us through. So there you go. Adam didn't do anything wrong here. Just entered as he needed to. Did get on throttle, I have to say, a little bit late there, but that, was that maybe because Michael Thorley uh, had the had the contact and Adam wanted to see where the car was going to go? You look at that, look at the front wheel, do you see that front left? Have a big bit of movement in it um, as he was going around, so I reckon there's definitely some damage that's that's gone on to that car. I watched a little bit harder on that one and I'm sure nobody wants to see these replays getting run over and over again and now I'm actually starting to question if there was contact at the start. Surely there was. Yeah, there's definitely contact. Okay, I'm good with that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you could see Thorley went to throw, you know, went to throw the car into drift, but it didn't really do that. Got on the throttle and it just drove straight into the, realistically into the side of uh, Adam Davies there, and I reckon it punched him right in the wheel. Oh no! Look at that big mark on the door, huge mark. But is that from Finger or uh, no? That's a fresh mark. There you go. There was contact. Thank you. Look at that, there's Taylor James there, eh? He's in the uh, Mimico team now by the looks. Had a big drama, uh, obviously, with his, his car. Yeah, really, un- like, so sad and so unfortunate. So, well, um, I, I know their team was working massively last night. Uh, I've got to call it 11 o'clock for them to come and pick up one of my spare motors and they tried yeah. their best to... We, I, I talked about that earlier on in the day, Cole, and just, we saw, they were offered five cars. You yourself said, hey, I've got a, I've got a motor. They worked till five o'clock in the morning to try and get the car going. And they couldn't, and then all of a sudden they're in uh, the the other unicorn. I know you yeah, that no. word. <laughs> we actually uh, we offered up two cars. So we've got our S13 with the RB30 in it, which is nearly identical to Taylor's. His is a stroked 3.4, but same head and everything like that. And uh, yeah, he obviously wanted to go to a the bit higher horsepowered motor, uh, but it's just yeah, a few things didn't line up. So, yeah, a bit of a shame for Taylor, but hey, he's jumped into Adam's, you know, second car. They stole that name off me. That was, that was definitely my name, the Unicorn. <laughs> well, they're still here, so that's the only reason they're getting away with it. But they forget <laughs> that the people that have to say it is you and I, and you're, yeah. and you're never going to. Yeah. <laughs> and I, th- I think you're forgiven, too. So a bit of work to be done. Ten-minute call being made. Um, of course, as a drifter, you must show with your hands what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you did right. That's the only way people understand. And and uh, I think you know Adam said he came in there. You can see the movement in it. Um, I'd say the uh, they're really long rack ends inside the uh, front steering system of these cars because the steering system or, or steering kit that is in that that's a wise fab setup. You can see the uh, blue lower arm there. It has a lot of steering angle and what you need is a really, really long tie rod end. Well, I think it's a tie rod end or rack end, one of the ones. And they can get bent really easily. 
they're probably as thick as my finger. Oh wow. And uh, yeah, can can get damaged very very quickly. But here's another another local lad. Absolutely, RHP on the side. Reed and Harrison Performance. This is a Barra. It's a Ford six-cylinder turbo Barra-powered Nissan Silvia S15. Alex Stocky Griffin behind the wheel. Limitless tires and can do oh oh look this one too this one, uh, one my I, I, I knew you'd get excited as <laughs> soon as you seen him look i always got excited over you nico and a couple of others but uh of course in the foreign rotor titus transport silence clothing this is an rb30 he's gone for a big boy motor now used to be a 25 for next the people's champion mr nrd nico reed behind the wheel this is going to be a battle for uh for stocky Oh, it definitely is, for, and for Nico as well. Nico qualified ninth, uh, of course, Stocky in 24th. Yeah. Nico's been driving so well. He was a real, real great driver in these small, tight um, courses. Really aggressive. You watch his launch here. It's a lot of uh, drag racing uh, techniques. Nico Reed definitely does on the start here. I know that car's been blowing a lot of oil, uh, which is hopefully not what's going to happen through this next run, but look at that. Nico Reed leading out over Alex Griffin into the first corner. Here they go. Steve, run us through. Look at that. Right up on that high line, mate. Oh, looking good is your man. Nico Reed. We'll see how he goes. He comes through, grabs that inside clip just by that barrel, and then it'll be into the teardrop. Hard on the gas. Here comes Stocky. They're trying to close the proximity. A bit of a gaps form Cole. Yeah, I think Nico was a little bit shallower on that outside zone. Stocky was really wide as now they throw it back up on. Onto the uh, outside sweeper, Nico right up on the wall. Stocky trying to catch back up with a little bit of left foot braking. What a great clean run here for these uh, these drivers out here. We're in the top 24, eh? This is the top 24. This is the final place in the top 16. Here it is. Repco replay here. Nico entering nice and smooth right up on that wall. You know, opening the door for Stocky to tuck up on the inside. Stocky having a few bobbles in behind here. Closes the door right up here. Look at that transition right up on Nico's rear wheel. Look at that, a meter. Nico is off that outside zone. So Stocky was a little bit wider, gave Nico a bit better drive, pulled away, gave himself a gap. And look at this, a little bit of a bobble from Stocky through there. Didn't really commit into the yeah. wall. Fair bit of left foot brake as well. He obviously chucked the wheel off down at the uh, teardrop section as well. Chucked the right rear off, and it's going to be his turn to try and do something from the lead position. The second half of the battle between these two drivers. Nico Reed in chase. Stocky Alex Griffin in the lead position. Who is going to take it out? This is to find a spot in the top 16. This is to find the who is going to be taking on Adam Camplin. Now we've got a set of battles all through this top 24. It's so good to see we've got a full field. I think there's 26 pro drivers out there, 36 pro sport drivers. Incredible, isn't it? Just straight numbers. This is such a well-supported event. And you can see that by the number of crowd who are rolling in to Bay Park, certainly enjoying uh, 13 hours of drifting today. It is indeed. And uh, it's going to be an exciting night ahead here, Steve. As the sun starts to, uh, does it start to go down? We're actually in a little box here, so we don't really see too much sun, but here we go, Steve, for the next part of this battle. Well, they accelerate down the front straight here at Bay Park. They'll go straight into action. Nico actually looked like he was going to dive into it early. A lot of left foot break for Stocky as he runs up, not quite on the, the line that the judges want. They'll come through to switch and head down to the teardrop. Yeah, it's Stocky definitely having a shallower line through that section. Really hindered Nico on that entry, trying to throw a lot of speed. Uh, into the first section, but here they go through the teardrop, transitioning now nicely up onto that outside zone. Stocky sitting down quite low, wants to lift back up, up onto the wall. Nico as well sitting down low on the uh, sweeper there as they come round to the last part of the section. So a little bit of a messy run there in my eyes. Uh, well, Nico can even pull it up. Yeah, a little bit messy. He's uh, already gone to have a chat to, uh, that's Kenny Ruddle over there. They'll go through and line up side by side and we'll have a look at the Repco replay deliberate. Nico, so quick to get into his drift. Yeah, but look at that. It's very, very, uh, what would you call the uh, entry there? A soft entry in my eyes from Stocky. Really wasn't aggressive on the entry. Nico went to dive in, get right on there and Stocky straight away on the foot brake. Then it really sort of fell apart here uh, as they come through the teardrop. Nico really trying to catch up, shortcutted the, <coughs> the track and then pushed wide as he exited the last part of the teardrop as now they drive right up onto the bank and you can see the proximity pulling away from Stocky as he was down lower on the, uh, on the main sweeper there Steve. 
Well, it's going to come down. We'll go down to the next, next, uh, <coughs> next to the man who will uh, tell them which direction they're going to go. Will it be... There we go. RHP on the side. They're already showing Stocky's colours. Who is it going to be? Nico Reed on the left. Dana Templeman, Joel Counter, Andrew Redwood. Three strikes. Nico Reed goes through. There he goes. The Tanifa. Tanifa out. Where's, where's Stephen McGuire? I thought he'd be down there having a chat with the lads. Well, that actually comes down to timing. We've just got no time to get this show finished by 9.50 p.m. Well, I suppose Stephen does ravel on. I was down with him there, <laughs> down there before, and geez, he's a character. I've really enjoyed uh, this season uh, with everyone in the uh, production class. It's been, you know, once again, Steve's uh, such a different side for me. Normally, I, you know, for years I was down with the drivers, and now I get to really see what goes on behind the scenes. And it is a massive team. This production oh. team that runs the live live stream through Sky Sport, great people, great people. What are you? Are you on Facebook? Um, I was just trying to find a link, and then I just got a message from a friend of ours. Um, it was actually. Fangers darling uh, Nicole saying the lighting on your face looks terrible. <laughs> Our faces, sorry, she actually got to share you. Well, that's because I've just had a spray tan and I'm um, a little bit darker <laughs> than I probably should be. That's a beautiful But thing. here we go, who have we got? Do you know what colour this car is? Yes, that's Ben. Oh, that's yellow. Lucky. Yellow for Ben. Oh, but they sent him out too quickly. It was just a bit of a tease for the crowd out there. Good to see the uh, bad plenty people coming to join the. Uh, what would you call it tonight? The final event. The grand finale of the Valvoline D1NZ. Yeah, I got my team. Hey, there's uh, Adam Davies has two minutes left. He's got a 10 minute and he's got two minutes left. Oh, okay. I'm sure that though that team will get that sorted. You can just see to the side there, got my team here, Armstrong Plumbing, uh, all the crew come along to uh, enjoy the... Um, event tonight, so it's uh, good to see yeah, they need a few of the lads the, out. Tilt the camera up slightly and you'll be able to go and see that uh, lovely, I see, I was walking down the uh, corridor, down the corporate area and I see this huge name, it just says Cole Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, we've got a good prime spot here uh, this weekend, so it's good to see, you know, get to see all the action and also bring across uh, now, which one are you guys on? That's you on there? Just nah. to the left of that, no? No, nah, no, nah, we're there. There they are, just to the oh. right, next oh, to the yes. Daltons. Under the first call recruitment box? Yeah. Yep, that's them in there. Comfortable, got a bit of food going on. Awesome catering here by the uh, team of Bay Catering here yep. at Bay Venues. This is, this is really put on for the grand final. It's uh, such a great day. Obviously, it's been a hectic couple of uh, couple of weeks, to be fair. Rain, more rain, rain. A little bit more rain. Yep. Track breaks. Track breaks. <laughs> concrete. Take the concrete out that's just been put in asphalt. Oh, Drifting. honestly. It was such a huge effort too by the uh, concrete team putting that in in the, in the absolute pouring rain, trying to do the utmost that they could to, to make it work and uh, yeah, the concrete just didn't bind but luckily the tar seal is holding in and uh, we were able to keep pushing on. So we've Ooh. got an amazing set of judges here at the D1NZ and it's great to see some of the old faces coming in, including some old judges. Uh, one of them that I was always a huge fan of and always agreed with his calls was a uh, gentleman named Brendan Dunker. And I uh, just see that uh, he's just popped in just to make sure that the judges which are in the middle room are okay. And uh, this is one of my favourite drivers with one of the noisiest cars and I love it because of it. The Valvoline on the front. Vitor on the side, 0-7, it's the Frankenstein monster. Hashtag Jace because Jace Brown, hashtag because Nikki said so. Of course, Jace Brown out of the Waikato. I have to say a lot of, here we go, for, yeah, a couple of seconds to go. Oh, oh no, okay, ah. wrong car. So Kenny's just said, now this is in the top 16, for, sorry, top eight cars. Is this Scotty D? Is he not driving the BMW? No, issues for that car there. And uh, yeah, these um, went to use Johnny Burns's car, but there's a clock on it. Wow, didn't see that, but here we go. This is going to be a great battle out here. One of my one of my favourite drivers, Cody Paul and Burry, out there showing how it's done against Jace Brown. Here we go, Steve. 
Well, as they head down the front straight, up onto the bank we go. It is, look at Jace Brown. He's really trying to close up on him. He was right on the door. Something's just bounced off as they come down to the teardrop. Inside clip right here. Wow. Clip the back end, maybe. Yeah, that was awesome through there. Cody Pullenbay really slowed that car up as he come into the teardrop. Jace Brown coming through with a lot of speed now as he throws it right up on the wall. Needs to stay hard on the throttle. A little bit messy through the last part of the section for Jace Brown needing to push up higher up onto the wall. But what a stellar lead there from Cody Pullenbury. Cody's been getting in trouble all week for his, uh, all weekend long for his car. A little bit noisy with the, the banging and the... Oh, it's all part, part of on the it, limit. Steve. It's Absolutely. all part of it. Look at this. Repco replay here. Nice entry from Cody Pullenbury. Uh, right, smooth, right up onto the wall. Jace Brown closing the door. Look at this as he transitioned. Just about took the rear end off there of Cody's car as they come through the mid part of the teardrop. Transitioning now. And right here, look, Jace didn't push wide enough and transitions really low. Loses a lot of momentum. Once you've lost that momentum, so hard to get the car back up on the outside of that section. So huge disadvantage, I would say, for uh, Jace Brown. And All right, well, there's a, there's a clock back on one of those cars. They look like Scotty, uh, Scotty Dinsdale's car. We'll see how we go. Back again, second half of the battle. One of the things that impressed me just then, though, was that Jace Brown was in a position that he just looked like he was ready to over-rotate, but managed to hold on or even, like, lose. But it just seemed like he had so much torque that he was be able to get back up on that. Who's that pony over there, no? Here they are, they're all looking, at, you know, and this is the coolest part about the, the, the whole atmosphere here of the D1NZ, everyone, and we always see it all the time, everyone jumps in to try and help out, but here we go, we've got Cody Pullenbury going back into the pits, what is going on here? Kenny Ruddle's going to be a busy man, he's got to go up and put a five minute bell on him as well. As they're going through, deliberating under the bonnet there, making sure everything's A-OK. -okay. Wow. Jace Brown will head back in. Another five minutes by the looks. Yeah, Cody Pullenbury going off, uh, obviously having a wee issue. So they're going to hold Jace Brown there. Or are they going to, yeah, push him back, back out into the pit? So that's a, that's a different one there, Steve. Well, I mean, what happens now? Obviously, we just bring on another battle. We've got to, we're supposed to have a battle between Ben Jenkins. Uh, we, we saw him out there before. Ben Jenkins went out. And, of course, by going out, he started the clock on Scotty Dinsdale. We've just had Cody ah, Pullenbury and Jace Brown. Gotcha. That's what he did, eh? Gotcha. Uh, yes. So I guess we're on the right-hand side now. Wow, they're really trying to... So either this thing has uh, blown a head gasket or something uh, along the lines, but they're trying to push through as much water as they can to bleed the... Uh, Bleed the system by the looks. And so many different people from so many different teams. There's a Stocky's wife out there, Andrea. She's putting water in it. I don't think she's even worked in Stocky's car before. Yeah, no, there's a, a lot of chaos going on right now, isn't there, Steve? We've gone into, what, three battles? It's all a go. All right, and that, they were saying they'll push for time. Woo! Hopefully. Shot. I'm 
turning dreams into reality In the lab with the formula and chemistry The memories spark and motivate And make the industry shake We put the bars in the brakes I'm talking one, one chance at best, yes Painting pictures for the culture, keep the brushes fresh Flip the color, work the drum, my passion never rests Freedom is our teacher, under pressure, now we bless See, I was so go for the go It's one art, one shot, now the future be sure is go Well, welcome back to the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship here, Mercury Bay Park Stadium. We are trying to find places in the top eight, or oh, sorry, into the top 16. This is the pro time. We've just seen pro sport. Steve Daniel, part of the commentary team, of course, joined by Stephen McIver on the ground and Cole Armstrong up here in the box. And it's a big day and a big crowd starting to brew. It is indeed. We can uh, see, obviously, Cody Pullenbarren's fixed his car. Good to see. And they're about to centre with Chase Brown leading out for the second part of this battle. Look at that already. Cody Pullenbarren really sitting behind right up on the inside. This is not what we want to see. Chase Brown right up on that high line, tucking down now as they come into the teardrop. But something has got to be up with Cody Pullenbarren's car. He just got absolutely left behind in that. We're Chase off. Brown, no, oh, just a skim there, Steve, I'd call that. Just a skim then, just a skim. Back up on the wall we go. What can the Frankenstein monster do? The Vitor Valvoline machine. It's the 07 on the door. Look at Cody closing up. Proximity will do that when you're shallowing up the gap. Yeah, <coughs> definitely uh, not the entry or, yeah, not the start, I would have thought. So what's going to cause that? L losing a gear? Well, yeah, uh, to be fair, it was just like he was sleeping on the line like this. Turbo it's, issues? It's something that I tell, say, Calvin, do not do. You sit behind. Look how shallow he is on the inside here. Cutting the whole, the whole sweeper to try and catch back up the proximity. Did well. Catch back up to Jace Brown here. It rotates nicely. Jace just, just pushing wide there on the uh, outside of that teardrop clip there. Rotates nicely. Now look at Cody right up on the inside here. Cutting the track to nothing to catch that proximity up. Jace probably not as high as he should be, but still mid-track through that centre section, but... Not the chase run I thought I would have seen uh, from Cody Pullenbury through that section. All right, let's have a look and see what the judges say. One, two, three, Pullenbury gets the win. Wow. All right. So it's different, you know, Mistakes? like... Mistakes? Is that what it's going to come yeah, down to? Yeah, I think so. You've got, to, you've got to look at Jace's entry uh, on the chase. Cody still did a smooth run, I guess. I would like, uh, you know, probably through the next break, I'll probably have a yarn to the judges just to be like, okay, so proximity over Way's line because in my eyes that was uh, not the best line I'll watch what I say but not the best line um, on the sweeper to catch up proximity so yeah I, I guess I, so he saw a wheel off that was probably the only thing or like a possible wheel off just a smidgen yeah he, he still was Jason still wasn't high on the line yeah you know like he wasn't still up on the wall but you know nothing nothing crazy for what I've seen is um you know, a, a, a big line cut. You know, like realistically, if the line judge should have marked him at like a seven with his line, because he was so shallow through that center section. So, 
see see how we go. What do we? Did you just get a text from the boss? No. Oh, I've had one earlier on today. If that's the same boss that you had. Oh, the boss boss. No, not that one. No, we've got our volume up, Stephen MacGyver. Of course, we're, we're not amateurs at this. We're pros. Me and Stephen have been doing this ages now. Here we go. Look at that. Dave Steadman. Been driving real well. Been excited for him. Um, I've been saying that word too much uh, today. Don't know why. It's so weird. But also, Jason Farron. His car, when he has anti-lag on, I love the sound of it. Full WRC spec. The Barrow Wagon, all the way over from Australia. Good to see he's done a full season uh, campaigning that big purple beast. But here we go. Dave Steadman chasing out Jason Farron here, Steve. Jason Farron keeping it right in the R31 Wagon. This thing is an absolute monster. It's one of the older cars out there in the field, but I tell you what, it's pretty brand new with what it's got under the bonnet. And he is doing a fantastic job. At the moment, you'll start there sliding it around the teardrop and possibly having a couple of wheels maybe off is not going to help you out. Dave, what can he do as he closes up? He's going to know that there's a mistake in front of him, Cole. Awesome transition, though, I have to say, from Dave through that centre section as they exited the teardrop. Sat nice and wide. Now pushing up high on that outside line, sitting right up on uh, Jason Ferrens. A great chase run. Yeah, that was. That was good. The lead looked good, probably up until the uh, teardrop. Just talk us through the replay as they come through. Yeah, here we go. Not not a massive entry here by Jason Farron, but he got up onto the outside of that wall there. Good to see. Dave a little bit shallower, keeping that proximity there as they now transition into the teardrop. Now this is where... Oh, little mistake there by Dave Steadman also. A little bit of a hesitation. Yes, there's a dirt drop there by Jason Farron. He is quite wide through that centre section, but Dave gathered it back up. Held it through the uh, outside section here as they now transitioned and out into that outside wall. So, you know, a few mistakes I have to say from both drivers. Well, it's a turn to uh, turn around and do the second half of the battle. It'll be the, uh, why is the hand out the window? Any reason? What are you doing, Dave? <laughs> Mimico, Napa Auto Parts, Riker 24-7. Vehicle Service Centre here in Mount Maunganui. This is our local lad that is going to lead out. It is Dave Steadman. He's going up against the man from Melbourne and Victoria. Mr. Keep It Reek, Jason Farron. Great to see him with his family here. Comes across from Australia at every opportunity he can. Five times this season to drift in the D1NZ. Certainly almost becoming a, uh, a countryman the way he's going. Clocking up the airports anyway. He, he definitely is. I think he's just been over in... Uh also over in Japan, doing a bit of driving yeah, there. There's Matt Terry there. And he's off to, uh, he's going to do some drifting in Ireland this season as well. So a busy man. Keep it right. They've got a beautiful S15. I think the uh, tickets are almost finished. Yeah, they have. That's a beautiful S15. It's actually parked down in the uh, in the pits at the moment. So go check it out. See what you could be uh, into win. So I think it was a 48 hours. Two hours to go on that draw there. So only only 2,000 entries. Yeah, 2,000 entries, $30 a ticket. Keep it right. Have a look on Facebook. You can find the links there. Jason Farron, he's uh, got he's 45 plus giveaway cars they've done across Australia. And this one here, the very first time we've had New Zealand entrance only. As Farron, he jumps the gun. Uh, he's going to sit into the chase position. It's Dave Steadman's turn. We'll lead him out in the RV. A real, real hard thing to do what Jason did is to try and take off early. Look at that nice wide line there from Dave Steadman as they transition now out and into the teardrop. Slowing the car down there. Jason trying to push right up onto Dave's door. There's a bit of a gap through the centre section though. Dave now transitioning nice and wide there. Jason a little bit shallow up on the inside here. But now as they push right back out onto that outside wall. Look at that rear of the Dave Steadman's car right up there. As Jason Farron tries to close the door on that last uh, last section there. Interesting battle that one there. I don't know why Jason Farron, let's check out the Repco replay here. Jason Farron jumped the gun, didn't need to do it. Not a slow car. Really um, disadvantaged himself on his entry there. Real shallow. Dave dropping down now through as he came uh, through and into the teardrop. Rotating nicely as he pushes back out to that outside line. Pulling a bit of a gap there, Steve, you know, uh, got a bit of a gap. Jason Farron, as we've seen throughout this uh, season, that is a fast car. I mean, we saw it at round one. The only thing I thought was maybe he's run out of those super sticky tyres he was running. Yeah, he could have been, could have been. But it's different here too, you know, we're on concrete. 
Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a way different compound. Maybe those tyres just don't work as well. But there we go. One, two, three. Dave Steadman gets the win. Now, of course, Dave Steadman, up until uh, Fanger went through in P1, was still in a mathematical chance to win the championship. Now he's going for a second place. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that information? Uh, Dave Steadman was in the running to win the championship? Yeah, he actually could. How? There were three drivers that could. I only knew of... Really? Yeah, it was in the voiceovers that I've been doing for the last month, <laughs> since the last round. But yeah, there was a, a, a mathematical chance. But you've got to, if it's a mathematical chance, you've got to promote the opportunity. This one here though, which one have we got? Okay, this is Adam Davies. This is the second half of the battle between himself and Michael Thorley. Now, the winner of this battle... Oh, who are they facing? ...goes up against P1. Which now, that is the battle that we're going to be watching. And I know Taylor James and his team will be watching. Both these drivers have been driving great this weekend. Michael Thorley, I've seen a couple of runs out there before, just real commitment into that uh, first section and into the wall. And then Adam Davies as well in his, in his number one car, feeling comfortable, looking like a jet pilot. I think I have the same helmet, Steve. Really? Yeah, when I drive, I, I feel like a jet pilot too. You look like a jet pilot. Just a very tall jet pilot. What are you, 9 foot 12? Yeah, around <laughs> that. Well, actually, hopefully in uh, 33 minutes, I'll go and get to be a jet pilot. Yes, you're going to go to go and... Why don't you go and take my car? What, the Cobra? Yeah. yeah. It. Well, it's kind of mine. Well, it's not mine. It's <laughs> my father-in-law's, and he'll be watching, saying no, it's not. Yeah, here we go. Second pass here with... Michael Thorley leading out Adam Davies. Adam having a little bit of a mare on the injury. Michael Thorley pushing nice and wide out onto that concrete wall as they transition now and into the head drop, uh, teardrop. Michael Thorley, nice, right, nice wide line there. Maybe too wide and over rotates as Michael Thorley. What? What just happened there, Steve? Oh. What? That. Adam Davies just got thrown a bone. He had a big mistake there on the entry. I reckon Adam Davies hit him and he over rotated. Why do you say things like that? Just to rack up the crowd. Here we go. The entry here. Look, a little bit of a bobble there by uh, Adam Davies. You can see a yeah. little bit of understeer coming into that section. Look, Mark Thorley right out nice and wide. Transitions now into the uh, teardrop here. Let's have now, a look at Thorley's car. Get Chuck the wheel off. That's all right. Gets on throttle. Nah, he's just nah, gone. Yeah. He's just gone. Couldn't catch it. Got out in the marbles. So you can see on the track there, there's the black line. Look outside that. It is just full of rubber pebbles. Already practicing his victory skits. <laughs> so that one there, I think, is going to be a cut and dry one. We'll see Adam Davies take the win, unless the judges saw something that we didn't. Yeah, nah, bit of a shame there for Michael Thorley. He'd be really disappointed. Done a great entry and uh, looking really comfortable in the car. And yeah, just got a little bit wide out there, Steve. Who are they going to choose? Which way will it go? Will it be Michael Thorley in the GT Radio's NZ Vertex 180? Or is it going to be the 20B Rotary under the bonnet of the Napa Auto Parts Riker 247 Mimico 180? And one, two, three strikes. Adam Davies takes the win. I think he was very lucky on that one. Uh, a little mistake. Look at his face. He didn't look He's like a man that was excited. <laughs> he never does. So, of course, he gets to go up against Fang Dan now. Oh, hey, hey. Now, that's going to be a battle. Then he needs to go do some star jumps and get the blood flowing. But here we go. Now, we look. We've got Ben Jenkins. He's now up here. And uh, Scotty D obviously got the car sorted, so good to see. Is it getting dark out there, Steve, or is that just... What, I, what I actually think we might do is, if we get the lights turned on a bit earlier, yeah. we could potentially... Should I do that? I power? think so. I, I think we should turn the lights on now. Okay, I'll get that sorted out. Just, you know, it takes a little bit of that uh, dry spot out there. Hopefully there, uh, Scotty D is going to be able to set down a couple of good laps in this borrowed car. Big Nissan Laurel. Yep, right over it on the dirt. Perfect. 
Oh, I've just uh, sent a message through to the team at Bay Venues to say, can we get the lights turned on? And uh, Brendan White just messaged back and said, oh, uh, I've already done it. Good oh, man, Brendan. He thinks ahead, doesn't he? A lot going on. A lot going on. So this is going to be a great battle. Ben has been driving really well, and Scotty D uh, likes to party as well. So I think there's going to be a good rough battle out here. Well, Ben Jenkins hasn't had the greatest season, so I think he's kind of at a point that he's like, you know what, let's just throw it down. Let's just chuck down a lap and see how we go. Yeah, look at that already. Ben trying to transition the car nicely right up onto that outside wall. Look at that. Scotty D just sitting in behind two. Now transitioning into the teardrop. Hasn't really pulled a gap on Scotty D as our Ben Jenkins out in the front, but a smooth lead run here by Ben. Transitioning now out into that outside zone as they come now back up onto the wall. Look at that, Scotty D still sitting on the uh, rear corner there of Ben Jenkins, but what a drive by Ben. A real, real clean, clean lead run there is Steve. Yeah, Ben Jenkins did a do and they get a massive amount more angle coming out there and still being able to produce so much drive. Let's have a look at the Carter Tires North Shore Toyota parts. 2JZ86, good angle, he's on lock, he's sitting there just basically chucking in, a, hasn't got a lot of corrections or anything. Down into the teardrop, you can see the man that's doing all the work is the guy in chase position. Very smooth, not a lot of corrections. Comes through the teardrop, he's finished in that section there. Again, the chase position's working, his, uh, his butt to the bone. Yeah, nice, nice and smooth there, eh, of Benny Jenkins pushing the car up onto that outside world, uh, wall. As, this is the best part, honestly, for the crowd. It is so close. The smoke's just bellowing up that wall. You get the excitement. I have actually just had a text from uh, Mark, detailed ex, uh, local contractor. Real keen. Keen to get a car, get into it, you know. It's a bug that you catch real easy. What a great idea. We also uh, got another good uh, local contractor out there, Chad from uh, P3 Earthworks. Is uh, Obviously, have you seen the car looking like uh, Sweeper that they've uh, let us have this weekend? It's pretty awesome, the uh, local tr contractors that get involved as well and uh, help out set this um, great venue up. So just to confirm what the delay is between just setting the cars is because the, uh, the sort of time of the day, there's not as much wind as we'd normally get. And what uh, we're saying is we can't dissipate the haze of this beautiful smoke. So they'll uh, obviously set them through, through as quickly as they possibly can. Yeah, it's definitely a tricky thing, especially now as the sun starts to lower itself. You're driving into the sun and it gets right in your eyes. You look right now, Ben's trying to lift his head. Trying to follow here, Scotty D now comes into the shadow, enters in, look at that Scott, right up on the wall now, Ben's just shallowing up a little bit just to try and keep that proximity nice and close there as they transition now into the teardrop. Good line there by Scotty D, but a little bit of a bobble, a little bit of a power loss as he came through the last part of the section now as they throw it up onto the wall, bit of a gap, uh, Ben Gathered there by Scotty D as he pulls away from Ben Jenkins in the last part of that section. And contact with the wall by Ben Jenkins coming through to finish. Yeah, a little touch there. A little touch. Let's check out the Repco replay. I feel like I lost a little bit what was going on there. Scotty D pushing up wide there. Ben just keeping that proximity there. Probably Scotty not as clean a lead run as uh, Ben did as they transition now into the teardrop. Now, at Scotty here is a little bobble through that centre section. Ben keeping a good, a little, uh, good bit of distance. Now this is the part that I missed. Scotty D now somehow just pulled a big gap. Now Ben either had a little bit of a bobble there that I just didn't see. And obviously uh, Scotty really getting a bit of a car length or two of distance between Ben Jenkins. So this is going to be a tricky one for the judges, I'll tell you that. But if we look at it, you know, lead to lead, we're looking at uh, Ben Jenkins did a stellar lead out there. Scotty D probably not as wide as uh, he should have, but, you know, who did the most mistakes really, Steve? Well, it comes down to mistakes, and uh, I don't know how many times I've heard you say it, and it's so true. A great chase has delivered a great lead to now, do so. Now, this is a part that I think the judges want to see too. Look, there's a little bit of a bobble right here by Scotty D. Does he come in a drip? Well, wow, is it a wheel off? Yeah, you can see the dirt turbo. Okay, you've seen the dirt turbo, but this is a part that I couldn't see. 
what happens here? How does Ben get gapped so heavily here? Scott transitions nicely, just does real well. Pushes up nice and wide up onto the sweeper. That was a way better angle through that centre section. So Ben still held a smooth line there. He just got realistically gapped a little bit as uh, they came out of the teardrop. Judges still trying to work out. They're still deliberating. Which way will it go? Will it be the Carter's Tire Services machine? Is it going to be the World of Tires, Laurel? It is indeed, and you know, another, you know, it's been 20 years. It's, uh, here we go, here we go. Whoa. One, one two, three. Ben Jenkins, they uh, called it one more time, but Ben Jenkins gets the win on that one. Yeah. Woo, could have done it. Could have well, ben Jenkins would be a happy man. So somebody's put oil down. Oil Somebody? or water? Well, yeah, to me you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't put that beautiful uh, Valvoline uh, oil sorbent down if... Uh... Yeah, true. So actually, Steve, I did some laps yesterday in our other S13 and poured oil all the way around the track. Which one? So you weren't in... Uh, so we've got the SR that Calv's competing in now, you know, I think he's in the top... Uh... So hang on, Calvi's in an SR? Calvi's in an SR. And, and you were also... in the other green one that was an RB? Yep. Correct, and that one blew oil all over the track. I had a great time. We blame Calvin for that, so well done. Oh, did you? Yeah. No, I went and told all the drivers sorry because I, oh, I hate people that do that. You know. I also said uh, how good he was, how good you were driving. <laughs> I, I said uh, I was. Uh, it wasn't so much of a bus throw. It was a friendly bus throw. Yeah. It wasn't like what I used to do to say Andrew Redwood back in the day when he was out there. Yeah, I yeah. just say that because he's uh, gone out from commentary, sorry, of Judge's duty back out again. Well, yeah, I hope he's going to rig along because uh, right now we've got Jordan Joyce coming out with Sam West, another local hero. Sam West been driving uh, not too bad for the weekend. I seen him out there on the pit straight, gave, a, a, gave, gave him a bit of a pep talk. Come on, buddy. Throw it harder. That's what I'm talking about. Sam West, the man. Here he is. He's in the RHP Red and Harrison Performance 180. The battles are where it's won. You know, Sam probably didn't qualify as well as he'd like. Uh, Jordan Joyce did pretty well, I have to say. Top qualifier, and I think it was, was it in Topol, round three. Didn't have the result he needed, but certainly continuing to show just how good he can be. Yeah, stepping up, first year yeah. in pro. And then going up against Jordan Joyce. Okay. Now, is that going to be an issue with the fact that that wasn't swept? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Jordan Joyce, the uh, Elite Performance. Good to see uh, the team here from Elite Performance. Stock Street, of course. Jordan Joyce. Good to see this car. They're just waiting for the other judge to come now before they can send the drivers off. Here he is, ready to go. One, two, three. Let's see this first part of this battle out here, Steve. Let's see how they go. They're side by side waiting for the lights to go green as Jordan Joyce is sent off the line. What's going to happen? What can Sam West do? Oh, great entry by both these drivers. Look at that. Sam West blocking up that front wheel right up on the, on the teeter that they've put on that bank there. As they transition now into the teardrop here. Yes, yeah, Sam West having a little bit of a bobble there, but gathers it back up. Trying to close the door on Jordan Joyce, showing a great lead run now as they transition and come back up onto the concrete wall. And look at that of Jordan Joyce pushing the car nice and wide onto that outside line. What a great lead run there. Great job to finish for Jordan Joyce. They'll go through into the teardrop, turn around, do it all over again. Jordan Joyce qualifying in 10th position. Sam West in 23rd. Let's see the run again. Jordan Joyce. Great entry there by Jordan Joyce. Probably not as much angle as uh, the judges would like to see, but doing a good job. Sam West keeping a good bit of proximity through here. Now that's it, you see that. Sam West just kind of just about over-rotated the opposite way he should have. Uh, gathered it back up really well. Now as he nearly gets caught in the smoke, they transition back up onto the wall. Look at that, smooth by Jordan Joyce, putting the car real nice and wide there, Steve. Yeah, comes through to finish. Back on to the front straight. As Sam West, he lines up in the... What's this car? A 180, sorry. 
I saw you just mid stopped. I mean, we you all, stopped we mid have, sentence. We all have bad habits. It's definitely one of mine. Um, Jordan Joyce, him and the team. They've got a corporate box downstairs. Certainly enjoying the uh, enjoying the drifting here today. Sam West having a bit of a corridor to launch Master Willie. I think they're just waiting for a bit of that smoke to uh, dissipate there, Steve. As I said, they're taking off right now. Look at the sun right in their eyes right now. They're actually just checking the bonnet clips. They've uh, sent Willie over. Willie said, nah, he's good. Just treading out time. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Well, here we go. It is the second half of the battle. Sam West turn to lead as we ride on board the Inspire U drone. Nice angle for Sam West coming up off the wall. He'll head down to the teardrop. Yeah, a little bit low from Sam West through the uh, through the first part of that section and just gathered it back up. That looked like it was going around, but did really well to hold that together. Jordan Joyce now transitioning really tight on that inside section. He's going to struggle now to push up wide, but Sam West just sitting so low around that sweeper. Uh, there's no way that um, Jordan Joyce could have caught up on that. You know, Sam was right down. Check, let's check the rep, Repco replay out here now. As they come into the uh, section here now, Sam's still sitting down like half a car length now, pushes it back up. Bit of a gap there by Jordan Joyce. Hasn't really got that proximity as they come into this teardrop section. Sam West gathered that car up. I thought that was going around there, Steve, but held it back up. Jordan Joyce trying to cut that corner. Now this three transitions and tucks it in real tight. And then Sam West just can't get the car up higher. Look, he's halfway to, to uh, a quarter down the inside of the track, so not the best lead run there for uh, for the finish part of that lead run there by uh, Sam West. Let's see what the judges have to say. Will it be Sam West that takes the win? Is it going to be Jordan Joyce? And it will be Jordan Joyce getting three strikes. The black car will go through. Stop Street on the window. Jordan Joyce thumbs out the window. He's happy to see it. He'll get back to the pits. Get the car ready for you to rubber. And go again. Celebrating 20 years of New Zealand drifting this round. Um, this year, Cole, you two times New Zealand for a ping yourself. Um, what are some of the cool memories that you've had? Man, I've had lots. Like, we've been, we've been uh, fortunate enough to go over to China and compete in the World Drift Series there. You know, and, and what we're doing right now, we're in a, in a stadium, or this was an Olympic stadium, that these guys put some bits of plywood down, tar sealed over the top of it, and uh, let us go crazy there. Uh, me and my team, Andrew, Conrad, Avon, Ethan, uh, we, yeah, we've been to some cool places, Australia many a time for the World Time Attack, which I think is uh, back on again this year. When you look back at some of your old crew, Alan was one, he saw oh, him, yeah. it was good to see him today. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing, that the next generation is coming through, Alan's here with uh, uh, his young fellow Mason, and uh, real cool to see them here, you know. My what little fella Theo's here too. It's That's cool. pretty cool though, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, um, what about when it look when you look back at some of your wins and rounds? I mean, I know there's a few that I think are pretty special. You won here once? Yeah, I have won here once. I have to say, like, you know, you don't yeah. you don't always want to blow your trumpet on, on beating people, but I have to say it was something I talked about last night. I remember when I had first time ever my R thirty four here and then my G thirty five here with the NASCAR motor. Yep. And I had Shane Van Gisbergen driving, you know? A V eight supercar star in my eyes and he was driving one of my cars and I was battling with him it was it was so awesome and that's that was the day when we were in the car park here at Bay Park you know now we're in a stadium um, so I have to say yeah I've had some great times but here's another battle up here Steve yeah of course we've got James McManaway going up against Tyler's Kurt Blackie McManaway you're about a meter or probably about four meters off the line actually but we'll see what happens as they head down to the teardrop just gapped yeah, look at and that. Wow. Course. Way off the track. What's happened there? Kurt Blackie's come out of drift as well. So Kurt Blackie doesn't have, they have to remain red, in. Did they get red flagged? What just happened there? Because Kurt got out of drift before even James had done anything. I think there's all down. Oh, okay. He's kid. Wrong side. Who was meant to lead? Who's the top qualifier? Looking at here, the top qualifier, 14th position was James McManaway. Oh, okay. So it is right. But here we go. Repco ah. replay. 
Oh, I think Manoway it's just didn't even enter. Huge failure. Didn't even enter. Come through the section. Mishap through here and just, yeah, right up on the inside. Wow, I have not seen anyone come up on the inside of the track right there. That's a little bit of something different. So, of course, uh, very shortly we've got the Pro Sport Top 8. I think we've lost the PA out the back, so... Uh, as much as I hate saying that, can be the pro sport drivers oh, in the top sport, eight to start heading out towards your cars. They need to get a rig along. We're on live TV and things are happening real quick here, Steve. I'm yeah. going to get out there and do my parade lap. Uh, not my parade lap, actual battle lap. Hopefully I get the battle. The uh, the ultimate of ultimate is uh, Gaz Wado. I'll see if I can take out one of our uh, little S13s and have a little bit of fun. Oh, so he's dug into the track. They're going to come through and sweep that off. And look at the sweeper. Hey, that's not the sweeper. That is... Uh, it just pushes. Hooks and Hogan. Oh, he missed that. Oh, look, he's got a, he's a brush and shovel, just a fancy one. Yeah, pretty awesome to see. That's what I mean. Great local businesses have come on board for free, you know, and uh, providing uh, this great equipment to keep the track live so we can see these battles. So we're looking right now, Kurt Blackie's got a pretty big advantage right now over James McManaway, eh? Well, McManaway just lined up. Yeah, I made him. Obviously, he's thinking, I made a mistake. I'll just go through and uh, and sort it all out. We'll go back into the second half. And that's the one thing I wouldn't want to do. Well, we are side by side again. It's the second half of the battle, and it looks like one's getting ready to uh, just bail out. No, they're still going. Yeah, look at that. Wow, James McManaway, that was not needed to create the contact. Woo! Mongrel McManaway has come back again with vengeance. Oh, that is not. Oh, wow. Tell Kurt Blacker to park that. Check this Repco replay out. Entry here by Kurt Black and McManaway way down on the inside, way offline. Just drives straight at Kurt. Look at this. Bang. Woo-hoo-hoo. Right at wheel to wheel and just pushes Kurt right into the wall here. Not what we want to see from a bit of a battle. Look at that. Just a full bully tactic there by James McManaway. Wow. Sent Kurt right into the wall, and by the looks, that's broken an arm here. Yeah. Uh, give a wave out there, Kurt, to uh, all the fans. We want to see you back out there, mate. Hopefully, uh, <coughs> the car can be fixed. It looks like the rear lower arm is uh, broken there, buddy. Yeah, look, James McGannaway's uh, cooked the front there, too. Do you want to go to break? Hopefully, uh, yeah. both these guys can get that sorted quick as. I'm sure Kurt will be able to drive the car back round into the pits and uh, get the team straight onto it. Either the tyre, I think maybe the tyre's de But there you go, look at that, James McManaway's <laughs> bent the front wheel massively. That is crazy. Well, there, there he is there in the JDM Performance. I think it's JDM Performance. Uh, 180 SX. I'm pretty sure that one's a V8 single turbo. It's like around 1,000 horsepower. It's a monster of a car. And, uh, yeah, we just, we just got to see a bit of action right then. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty full on. All right, so while we uh, wait for these cars to get out there to sort themselves out, we're going to throw to uh, one of our ultimate fans, uh, one of our ultimate drift drivers out there, Mad Mike Ledet. What's up guys, I'm Mad Mike Redette, Red Bull Pro Drifter. We're down here at the Mad Lab, Hampton Downs. You can see all things hands on deck. We've just revealed the Mad Bull. You guys probably would have seen that over social media over the last week. Um, we've got the Rumble Stadium truck that's about to go into the container, um, but living the life, bro, drifting. And that's where it's at right now. Grand final, D1NZ Bay Park. Um, congrats to all the drivers. Congrats to D1, 20 years. It's a massive milestone. Fanger, uh, man, some incredible memories battling with you. 
some ad props to Fanger for being Every, I think every single round of D1 he, he's been at from from the get-go and then you've got these youngsters and even like my young fellow Link you know is out there drifting 11 years old in his little MX-5 which was like a lockdown build and you know he's got his dreams so like man if you guys have got the vision you got the dreams you're halfway there man the rest of it's just a bit of hard work and determination and you can take it as far as you want I and mean, we've proven now we represent New Zealand some of the world's biggest brands all around the world and this is my life drifting built from D1 so yeah chasing dreams entertaining fans and doing big burnouts. Drifting and D1 let me express my style and personality um, where drifting is so engaging because it's not about the budgets. It's not about who's got the fastest car. And um, Yeah, with me at the time, I was on a super limited budget and we did everything we possibly can to build this car in its first generation. And, you know, we've seen some amazing drivers come through. I'm now hosting on my grassroots drift days. We had Drift Force yesterday. Um, and see like the Pullenberries that have been like regulars every single Drift Force, they're out there battling each other. And now here they are, you know, Case with a lead. I think he's actually won the, won the championship before it's even got to the final. All I wanted to do was get in the top four. It was never like looking at the podium, it was top four. Why I wanted to get in the top four? Because the top four got to do the victory burnouts to the end of the day and break whatever was left in the car. So some very good highlights, lots of victory burnouts over the years. So enjoy the grand final this weekend, Bay Park. You.
Well, welcome back to the Babbling D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It is pro time. This is the top 16, trying to, uh, the top 24 actually, trying to find a place in the top 16. And we've just had, well, heavy contact. James McManaway and of course Kurt Blackie. Now, this is another uh, thing to look at, Cole, is that Kurt Blackie and James McManaway. I'm just looking on the left, uh, sorry, the right hand side of the tree, and it's all about this guy here. No, this is a second half. No, this one here is a huge battle right now. This it is Taylor is James. Taylor James yep. versus Troy Jenkins. Now, this is uh, has championship. Uh, what's Con connotation? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a pretty big word. I wasn't going to say that. Encyclopedia. Championship things that could yeah. wreck it. So Carter's tyres on the side of one. The other one should be Proware. Valino definitely underneath it. And of course, Roundwood, New Zealand. The names on the side of that Mimico Napa Auto Parts that should be there. At least it's got AWS everywhere. Andrew Stewart will be happy. This one here is to try and battle his way to a championship win. There is lots and lots of work for Taylor James to do. Everything is about him trying to win every battle between now and the final. But there's another guy on the other side of the tree. Fanger Dan Woolhouse that'll be watching to see where this battle takes us, Cole. That's it, mate. Taylor James, I have to say, has done pretty well jumping into this car, uh, undriven. Now, uh, everyone's having a few comms, uh, delays around there. I know they're trying to send the cars right now. We're seeing people run around all, all over the show up here. It's quite crack up. <laughs> It certainly is. I know. Uh, what, waiting on those words, send cars. Goes down to Launchmaster Willie, who pushes the button. The higher qualifier is. I was, gonna, I was trying to work out what was. Oh, look at Troy Jenkins. Bit of a bobble coming through, but Taylor not as far up the wall as you'd like him to see. Yeah, transitions nicely into the teardrop there, holding it together. Yeah, bit messy from Troy in the, uh, in the back part there. Taylor right up on the inside now as they're down to push the cars. Right back up onto the wall here. Taylor's wanting to hold that thing. They call it the unicorn. They shouldn't call it that because that's <laughs> definitely my car. But oh, the hate is real. <laughs> good well, to see Taylor James got a clean lap there. The uh, first pass is done. There's one more to go to see who can go through. I would have to say that uh, advantage would probably be in the form of Taylor James. We saw a little bit shallow for the chase driver. But uh, we'll see what Troy can do in the second Yeah, half. here the entry. Troy's way down on the inside there, trying to obviously keep the proximity uh, against Taylor. Taylor not really sitting as high as I'd like to see coming through the sweeper on the concrete wall there as they slow down into the teardrop. It's uh, Taylor James, so... You know, look here now, he's trying to get the car up onto that wall. Troy's sitting down a little bit lower, trying to catch that proximity back, so... Not, not quite the cleanest by both of these not guys. I know the there's a bit of pressure on Taylor James, you know. Uh, championship on the line here. Let's see what Troy can do as he heads down. It's his turn to lead out. It's Troy Jenkins versus Taylor James. Taylor James in a borrowed car. The RB34 is kaput. Work to do for that car to come back. A season off season to go to get it there. Yeah, you could see right there, Taylor James way low on the uh, sweeper there as Troy is sending it in for the first part of the section. Nice drive here by Troy in the teardrop here, pushing nice and wide. Now Taylor's trying to close the door, sitting in a little bit lower here down in the teardrop, but keeping the proximity there. Troy's not as wide as he should be as well, but what a close battle there by Taylor James and Troy Jenkins to finish this one off there, Steve. Well, we'll have a look and see the replay. A nice solid start by both of these drivers. You see Taylor a little bit shallower, but he's allowed to come through. He's actually just trying to close up that proximity, but he's right on the line. Is it too far low? Yo, look at that by Troy. Real wide there, right up on that concrete wall. Great to see. As they slow the cars now down into the uh, teardrop they go. So they come through, they'll head back up onto the wall. Again, Taylor really trying to just, just close up that gap. Just really well, look at this by Troy. Trying to push up onto the wall. Bit of a midline track through, uh, midline through the uh, last part of the section there, but Taylor closing the door right up. This is gonna be another tough one for the judges, you know? A few mistakes were made both sides. 
Interesting to see. I know the uh, CDT camp will be hoping that uh, it goes Taylor James away. Look at that. One more time for Andrew Redwood, but Joel Cunner and Daniel Timmerman go through. Does Taylor James? Well, that is the first job done for Taylor James. He makes his way through. I'm Dave Steedman and I'm Adam Davies and we make up Team DSR. I drive the, the 20B uh, 180 SX uh, and also the 13B 180 SX so uh, try and stick to one but this, this season has been two so. Yeah and I drive the uh, S14 with the uh, RB32 power plant. Uh, so Adam and I have been part of D1NZ as Team DSR for oh geez, must be about seven or eight years. Nine I think, this might be our nine. Maybe season, something like that. Very long time. We're getting old. I, I, I first started watching drifting on via option DVDs and when YouTube first came out and had a, had a little Mazda Familiar I sold and bought a, my first 180SX and, and turned that into a, a, well, it was a track slash street car and um, eventually got written off and I decided to build my first proper race car. So that was where the 13B 186 started. Adam and I have been mates since way back, well before we got into competition drifting. Also had a Mazda, I think he led me down that path. And uh, yeah, then started watching some drifting and getting pretty interested in that. So swapped the Mazda out for a real drive Sefero and yeah, the rest is history really. <laughs> so mine, so I've always stuck with the RBs, that's what I know. Started off with RB20, evolved that into an RB25, eventually went to RB30. Now we're all the way up to an RB32 with the uh, stroker kit. So that's come a long way and uh, got lots of lots of real real good uh, equipment to go with that. Uh, twin cam head, uh, big ball Warner turbo, and um, yeah, she's she's singing in the last few uh, seasons. It's been really reliable, especially with the dry sump. The, the, the power um, it produces has evolved over the years as well. You know, it started off at 8,300 kilowatts if we were lucky, and it's progressed. We've got, we've got over 600 kilowatts now, over, over 900 horsepower at the wheels um, on high boost, so yeah, plenty of ground. This, this car here, the 20B car, um, it's a semi PP 20B, um, OEM 20B, so it's got a back center plate in it. Uh, it's got a big G uh, Garrett G42 1450 on it. Um, Samsung is five speed sequential, again, Winters, Wise Fab, um, yeah, all the sort of usual. I guess, I guess you'd say usual bolt-ons, uh, and that makes about 630 kilowatts, so 8, 850 horse at the wheels, so good, good, uh, good package. A lot more torque in this car than the, than the old car, so uh, I wanted to be different. It's everyone was running back in those days, like Dave was saying, everyone's running RVs, you know, it was RVs everywhere, sort of like these days it's 2J, so um, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just, I had a RX-7 years and years ago, and, and I sort of always liked road trees, and and I thought, well, I'll try something different, and wanted to sort of go off to the side from what everyone else is doing and it's been, I mean it's been a phenomenal car, I mean, the old car's been phenomenal, it's been the most reliable car I think around for a long time so. Yeah totally, this season's been a real mixed bag, um, first round, we, we don't talk about the first round, that was a, that was a write off, <laughs> uh, second round we're feeling a little bit better, um, well, write off for Adam on that, on that front. Um, but since then, yeah, uh, personally I've had, I've had great results, uh, the car's uh, just fallen into form and uh, I've managed to pedal it to a couple of podiums, so yeah, real stoked with that. Took the win at um, Talpo for round three and then third place in Manfield uh, round four, so yeah, really, really hoping to do well uh, here in our home track of Bay Park. Really, really keen to get on that podium again. Rex is obviously my father. He's uh, he's, uh, he's a shareholder in Mimico who obviously helped out year on year, helped, helped him dig out Bay Park, and he's uh, he's just he's in for in for the love of the sport, you know. So um, he's the one that, that gets his track cleared off every year with the help of like some Cole Armstrong and some other helpers that are that dug it off. Uh, he's just I don't know I guess maybe he's living vicariously through me because <laughs> he couldn't do it when he was younger. I'm not too sure, but um, he's just passionate about it. And he wants everyone to. You know, wants the sport to succeed and, and everyone to, to have a good time. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't think we'd be where we are without a, 
I just want to, you know, thank our thank our partners I had on board. You know, Mimico being one of them. Um, we've had Napa Auto Parts on for the last couple of seasons. Uh, Ryko 24/7. You know, we've got tries tries tyres on this year. Yeah, just all the little ones. Yale combined haulage. You're definitely and, and vehicle service. Yeah, vehicle service. That's, that's my company. Yeah, our sponsors, like Adam said, we we would not be here. So thank you to all our sponsors for that. Also our crew. Yeah. You know, they they go above and beyond, and I was. You know, it sounds, it sounds like a bit of a laugh, but I always say we have the best crew here, and I actually truly believe that. <laughs> the lads from Team DSR, such good bl They have given Taylor James, a championship contender, a car to have a crack in. Now, there's a reason we call this a smoke show. Just look behind me. The uh, D1 boys are warming up. But can you imagine having a hot lap on one of those? Well, guess what? Some this week got a hot lap in a D1NZ drift car. I can't describe, like, just sitting in the seat. I was just focusing on just standing put, and like, I don't know how they focus on driving and like, all like the, you know, yeah, it's pretty really yeah. busy. Yeah. It's definitely warmed me up. That was just an experience that, you know, I could only dream about, so, yeah. I too have had the good fortune of being a passenger in a drift car and to be honest you uh, you get startled by how talented these D1NZ drift drivers are and at the same time you almost brick yourself but it is so much fun if you ever get the chance go and do it. Now the D1NZ team have been incredibly busy this past week getting in amongst the community in the Bay of Plenty they have done a magnificent job. In the last couple of weeks we've been doing a few uh, expedition meets with uh, some schools and uh, taking the cars down, me and a, me and a few uh, local drivers took our cars down to uh, Otomoto Intermediate and uh, caught up with a few kids there and that was, uh, it was awesome to bring these cars down and show them what uh, pro spec level cars are like and uh, just show awareness of, of the D1NZ and the uh, grand final that's happening uh, this weekend. We're in Bay Bear in the mall there, just had the car on display, third one of the three boys to do it. Uh, it was great, interacting with the public, uh, all sorts of knowledge from people, some being uh, absolute unaware of drifting and that there's concrete hidden under Bay Park's clay, and then some really uh, unexpected fans who knew a lot, you know, little petrol heads of the future potentially, uh, and to bring them something that, you know, they only typically see online or from afar to bring it right there, they can touch it, sit in it, and talk to you about it. It was really cool. I was luckily enough to um, go to a school visit, um, had a whole lot of uh, Little kids jump in the car, um, ask a whole lot of questions, got to sign some posters for them, um, and all their book bags, school bags, anything they could give me pretty much. So I got to um, express uh, the, my love of, of drifting, and um, yeah, it was awesome. Principal was all about it. Um, we got all the kids off the, uh, the tennis courts, and um, we were able to let loose in first gear on the, uh, on the tennis courts and, and uh, get a bit of smoke happening for the little kids. They've done such a good job and you can see the delight on the young children's face of being around, wow, cars that make lots of noise and produce a ton of smoke. All of them, all of these men that are out here tonight want to be a Drift King. Only one will be a Drift King tonight, but they have, uh, others have come before them in the last 20 years. Let's meet some more. I'm Cole Armstrong. I won the 2017 and 2018 D1NZ Championship back to back. Bang it down here. I've won three D1NZ championships over the last 20 years. Hey, I'm Darren Kelly, three-time D1NZ champion. 
Hey, I'm Carl Reutemann and I won the 2007 D1 NZ Drift Championship. I remember one of the battles I had with Gaz Water, obviously. He's the GOAT, he's the man, the dude that we all look up to. I remember coming in there well over 200 k's. I think we got clocked at 207 k's, 206 k's. And it was just a blast uh, right next to this man, going as fast as we can um, at Pukekohe. Such a great track. Best memory in D1 um, would be uh, the Ford versus Holden battle with me and Shane Van Gisbergen. You know, um, back when we were running the Commodore and and he was in the Rattler Falcon, it was it was just one of those moments. You know, like um, for me. Loving V8 supercars and stuff like that, and um, having him um, as an icon from that sport. Uh, so some of my favourite memories uh, would have to be getting to drive tracks like Pukekohe. Um, obviously winning the championships was a massive part of uh, my career within New Zealand, um, but driving tracks like Puki and Bay Park and uh, custom stadiums and things that D1NZ has put on over the years has been pretty cool. Probably the biggest highlight for me was, I think it was the second round I ever did, we bet Fanga Dan at Pukekohe Racetrack, which was my home track. And I guess uh, Fanga was somebody that we really looked up to. He was kind of the man in drifting kind of thing. And I was, nobody really knew who I was. Um, just a small guy from Pukekohe. Yeah, so that, that was definitely, I think, one of the highlights for me. Yeah. The drifting uh, of New Zealand is, it's phenomenal. The, the growth of it is, is massive. It, the grassroots side has really grown, I think but it's just gonna keep progressing. There's so many guys out there that have so much passion and are so clever with making cars. It's gonna be huge, I think, where the sport will keep growing. Won't stop. I think I've been doing it for 11 years in competition now and I was there for the, the 10th year anniversary and that was like a big deal and seeing how much it had changed from day one to, to 10 years and then how much now it's changed from 10 years to 20 is just mind blowing. And seeing the level of the cars, the like the setup, the knowledge, the teams. We were in a lot lower power cars and a lot uh, more racetracks, so we were kind of using momentum and, and a little bit less power. And man, we see drifting's developed so much. Like now you're in stadiums with massive crowds, kind of thing. Like it, the effort that D1NZ has gone through to build these purpose built tracks, it's, it's changed so much. So it's really exciting to see what it does in the future. 20 years of Drift Kings, that's why we are celebrating 20 years of Valvoline D1NZ and just hiding in there and now they're going to come out, uh, your Drift Kings. So Bay Park, here come 20 years of Drift Kings, make some noise, let's go. It is the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship, your 20 year anniversary and the 20 years of Drift Kings. Look at those convertibles organised by Steve Daniel himself. And right next to me as well, up in the commentary box, we have a nine year commentator. He hasn't been on the microphone uh, apart from earlier this morning since 2018. Warren Sear, a name that lots of people remember. Welcome up, mate. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for welcoming me up into the commentary box. And uh, Steve, of course, would normally be the voice that would guide us through <laughs> this, but uh, he's taken the opportunity just to go down and observe what he's what he's created here. And Cole, of course, is uh, well. He was the <laughs> first one out the gate, right? Home track for Cole. He's got to be out there first. It's been a home track. I mean, Bay Park, Mercury Bay Park Speedway, it is an absolutely electric atmosphere out there. The crowd is an absolute bumper crowd. It's sellout. Oh, look at the state of some of these cars as well. You beautiful Impala there. And uh, Warren, you can run us through some of the stars that we're seeing, the, the DKs of yesteryear. Yeah, there's uh, there's an empty retirement village somewhere, Tony, because <laughs> these are definitely the stars of yesteryear. That was uh, Adam Richards just came out the gate there in that beautiful Cobra. Following him out the gate, that is Justin Rude. The, the, we call him the godfather of drift. He was really one of the, uh, the driving forces in bringing drift to New Zealand. That is Carl Reutemann coming out. He was the uh, 07 champion, the E&H Motors Sylvia. He was a long-time drag racer who converted over to... Uh, yeah, sorry, he was a drag racer who came drifting. He, he was good at going in a straight line, and then he went, oh, I can go fast and turn corners as well. And following that, Tony, you know a little bit about this. This is the hard park winners that you put together out the back there. Yeah, the D1NZ Showcase Hard Park. So thanks very much to everyone who applied for that. And uh, sorry to the ones who didn't make it along, but we have a few awards that we did give away. Cole Armstrong on TV there. Look at that. He's soaking in the absolute electric atmosphere out on track. Uh, tell, I mean, Cole, I remember him coming out in this red R34 coupe. He had no yeah. sign writing, nothing when he first came out. Ex yeah, that's exactly right. He came 
came out and I think he attacked that first Pukekohe round. And I think if, if I remember rightly, he may have come first or second the first time out. It did take him a while to finally get to that DK crown and I know that it, that's a grating point for him that maybe uh, someone else might have beaten him to it. But he did do it two times and look at that big smile, he's at home. There's the big bird, he's waving, he's lapping up that attention. What have we got here? A 70 caddy. That's Steve Soul, Soul Train. He's just hiding away in the back there, yep. isn't he, Steve? Very chilled out person, if you know Steve. Uh, yeah, very well. Certainly, yeah, loves to just chill out, doesn't he? Very well known for the camo paint yeah. jobs. Of course, he was behind the the WSR camo paint jobs. Tony Bremen, uh, Kurt Whitaker, Stephen Soul. Uh, there's a couple of other drivers that were part of that team as well. There is Gaz Whiter, Gary the Goat. Now, he's going to get some company tonight, <laughs> potentially, isn't he? Uh, hopefully he doesn't fall off the back of that <laughs> as the uh, hydraulic. Gaz doesn't look like he feels that safe there. I think he might be uh, regretting his choice maybe to go not go after a, a snapper or two today, Tony. Jarius Farido following in through as well. It's a name I remember from a long way back. Uh, almost probably one of the first drivers to see out there in the Drift Winning Championship uh, off the streets of Whangarei, I believe. Yeah, JT, uh, look, Northern was the home of drifting for a long time, right? But then arguably, I think the base probably become a bit of the home of drifting recently. Uh, but there's another Northlander as well, as we mentioned that. There's something in the water up there. Liam Burke, the animal. He was actually the only DK that I didn't get to call. He was the only one. I called him in pro sport, but I never called him as a pro. Adam Richards coming through in the Cobra. Then behind him, that is Justin Rude. Now, interesting fact about Justin Rude, well, not so much Justin, one of his cars, Sam West is out there still driving it. So, yes. I mean, as much as the, uh, I should be careful how I say this, but the uh, the drivers, they slowly age themselves as they go, but the cars, you know, they're still hanging on, they're still competitive. Do you want to know the worst thing about that? Both <laughs> myself and Kenny Ruddle drove that car on the skid pad <laughs> at Hampton Downs when Justin and Fanger tried to teach us to drift. And there they are. Do you know how Fanger Dan tries to teach you to drift? Just send it? No, he says, I'll stand here, you do a donut round me. If you hit me, I hit you. <laughs> <laughs> and there yep. they are, the Showcase Hard Park winners. That's Craig Moorfield there in the best pre-85 Mazda 808 rotary-powered wagon. And a oh. beautiful looking Impala coming up the rear there. That's Gareth White. Uh, but look at the, oh, just what a great parade it is there. So Lots much. Of thanks out. Of course, it goes to Steve Daniel as well for organising those convertibles. So much history out there, so much experience. I think we, we were doing some numbers earlier in the year, right? And I think Fanger Dan has now become the most successful drift driver ever in New Zealand. He's, he's had the most round wins, most podium appearances, and potentially tonight he joins Gary Wider as a four time champion. Now tell me, is Fanger Dan the only driver that we know of, that I know of uh, from memory, that has done all 20 seasons? I believe so, yes, that is correct. And he's also the only driver, I believe, who's won titles in different chassis with different motor configurations. So I actually had a fun conversation with Fanger before, and I said to him, oh, which car would you drive? If you could drive any car that's done D1 over the last 20 years, which one would you drive? And, funnily, and he didn't give a response that I thought at all. He went, oh, look, it's one that we haven't really seen. I'd love to do it in a Corvette. Oh, really? I, and I don't know if I can say that because I've probably got him in trouble, <laughs> right, because it's cross-brand and whatever, but he thought that would be a great challenge as we see Carl Reutemann, always smiling as Carl Reutemann out of the E&H Motor Stable. He is now a uh, well-known ATV racer. Look at, look at that. Beautiful That's car, well-deserving of that award in the D1NZ Showcase. Now, in the break we saw, um, or in the segment, we saw the drifters talking about their favourite part and their favourite memories yes. of D1. Now, you as a, uh, a commentator calling, them. Do you have your favourite memory from the oh, nine years that you were out there? I've, I've got some very special and powerful moments that stick in my mind, right? And I, and I think back, and look, I sometimes I don't like bringing these up because they're very personal to people, but I think about Gaz and Tony Wider after they lost the beloved mother Vicky in that third title win. Uh, I think about moments like uh, calling Shane Van Gisbergen in a borrowed car, Darren Kelly's R32, down at Christchurch, and just the wave of emotion that the crowd rode as they saw a professional driver coming into what they perceive as their sport. I think about Mad Mike. Mad Mike, of course, had one hand on the title and then he was knocked out early and that was probably one of the most emotional interviews that's ever been given on the podium. So just there's just powerful moments. And then, quite honestly, Tony, there's just these cool things that happen I talked about golf shots, right, in that one lap, and sometimes it's just those, the young guys coming through, and they have that moment, hi mum, that's hi for, that's you Leanne, <laughs> hi mum, hi Bryce, hi Leanne, you guys aren't here, you're uh, watching on TV, tuned in, hopefully you're enjoying the show, as the DKs are out on track at the moment, and we do thank them all for being here, the only one of course that isn't here, Tony, is Darren Kelly, because he's got previous engagements at uh, Road Atlanta competing in FD. Yeah, I guess uh, some people have got better places to be than Bay Park Speedway, and one of them, uh, perfectly good reason, Formula D Atlanta, uh, 12, 14, 1500 horsepower, Aston Martin V12. Look at that beautiful AC Cobra on the screen there. Who would have thought 
20 odd years ago, we're standing at Pukekohe watching guys in cars that used to be diesel that were converted overnight with welded diffs on tyres that came off silage stacks and we now have professional drivers competing at the highest level globally. And, and you're looking at the likes of Aston Martins, do you ever think you'd see an Aston Martin dressed up in drift kit going right. sideways, let alone in New Zealand, uh, Mustangs? I I didn't think we'd see an FD spec Mustang, to be yeah. fair, that Fagger Dan's piling. So, look, it's great to see Brendan White down there too, just shaking hands with all the DKs. He's had a lot of history. We said earlier this morning, if, if somebody dropped a bomb somewhere, Brendan White would be one of the people who would survive because he's been here for so long. Somehow he's still got hair. I don't know how he's still got hair. It's getting grey. I think maybe he dyes it. Do we have a, sp <laughs> do we have a sponsorship arrangement with anyone who colours hair? Is that, is that what's going on? Fanger Dan shaking the hand of Brendan White as he comes. Of course, Fanger's on yeah, a Mustang. Right? Fanger had to be in a Mustang. Yeah, absolutely. So, Fanger Dan Woolhouse, uh, one hand on the trophy to be another DK for the fourth time in a row. And, and Mac, special mention, how good is that race suit looking? It is looking special. It was uh, Kira Fastmaster Enterprise. I think that's one of. Uh, is it a Marina, is it? Is it the. Yeah. That's what the new suit yeah, is for Fanger Dan and the uh, RTR Sentry batteries. I was hoping he's going to have his uh, cowboy hat on, actually. Adam Rich. Is, is he cowboy now? <laughs> well, he did have a cowboy hat this spot. Adam, in. Adam Richards looks pretty comfortable in that Cobra there that Steve Daniel uh, kindly uh, wrangled. I, I saw Steve and uh, Launch Master Willie cruising around the mountain. What do we got here? Uh, so that is the DK Parade all done and dusted and of course the D1NZ Showcase Hard Park. But right now it's time to look at a season review. The 67th running of the prestigious New Zealand Grand Prix also playing host to the first round of the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Sean Potros started his championship in the best way with a Q1 performance topping qualifying with 83 points. Our three times and current New Zealand champion Fanger Dan Morehouse sliding the Century Batteries Mustang into second. Well, coming into battles with both of these drivers on opposing sides of the draw, they would meet in the final. Fanger Dan Morehouse taking victory and putting himself in the perfect place to start his 2023 campaign. Round two saw the championship move to the home of the Warriors, Mount Smart Stadium, for the first of two custom tracks this season. A host of international drivers were in attendance, but it was the Kiwis who would reign supreme. Kurt Blackie having issues with his Colab Digital Alice Powered 86 saw him given the opportunity to pedal something different. Thangadan Woolhouse passed him the keys to the Century Batteries Commodore. Alex Pallier was the surprise in qualifying, topping the leaderboard with Thangadan in second. A few drivers having mechanical issues over the weekend, with many others testing the limits of the track against the hard concrete barriers. Mitch Lana having a forgettable moment in the galore part Supra. Mitch had a massive issue for that car, what? And he oh broke my goal. Oh my god! What is How it? is he still driving that? There's a broken arm on that car, and I do not know how he is driving it. How oh. is that wheel not falling off? As the round came down to the pointy end, Kurt Blackie and Fanger Dan would meet in a fairy tale ending for Woolhouse, battling his mate in his own car, great for Century Batteries, with the win in the final giving Fanger a huge lead in the championship. Round three and the Pro Championship would join the Super Sprint New Zealand Motorsport Championship. Toting as Sam West drifting his 2JZ powered RHP Reed and Harrison Performance 180SX to Q1. Heavy impact between Nico Reed and Connor Halligan in the top 16. It's Connor Halligan really trying to close the gap. Connor coming back and trying to knock on the door. Wow, and uh oh. <laughs> wow. Michael Thorley making his way to the final, where he'd meet Team DSR's Dave Steadman in the Mimico S14. A tight battle in the final, but it would be Dave Steadman who would take the win. Fanger Dan now holding a large championship lead over Kurt Blackie. Round four, the penultimate round of the 2023 championship, saw the series head south to Manfield Circuit Chris Amon. It was time for Taylor James to enter the title fight. Only needing one run in qualifying, Taylor piloted his pro-wear Valino RB34 powered S14 to Q1 with a 90.5. Adam Davies 89 points in second with Fanger Dan in third. Moving on to the battles, Taylor James made his way to the final and would face none other than Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Look at this already, Steve! Taylor James, massive injury, Fanger Dan shoulder it backwards! He's grabbed it back up! Somehow that man can turn that car backwards and he look back up on Taylor James's door! Team DSR drifters Dave Steadman and Adam Davies would face each other for the battle for third. Davies unable to get his car to the line, gifting Steadman the last spot on the podium. The final would be the biggest of the season. 
If Fanga Dan won, it would crown him a four times D1NZ champion, but Taylor James had other ideas. To keep his championship hopes alive, Taylor would use the power of the RB34 and the insane grip of the Valino tyres to win the round and set himself up for the Bay Park Grand Finale. Thousands of tyres, hundreds of battles, but there can only be one Drift King. The Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship Bay Park Grand Finale. The time is now. It is a season befitting a 20-year celebration. And who will be your Drift King in 2023? Well, right now, going P1 in qualifying is your defending three-time champion. It's Advantage Fanger Dan. Taylor James qualified P11. Can he go all the way? We'll find out shortly. The guys will continue testing. And then it's game on, and the fuse will be lit. It's boogity, boogity, boogity. One of the cool things we get to do here with the D1NZ is get some amazing kids to come along. And these kids, they've come a long way. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah we're oh, it's about an hour and a half out to Little Nukuho, uh, near Waimana there in the Eastern Bay of Plenty. For us, you know, one of the challenges is always around engagement. How do we engage our kids? And, and um, I know things like this just help to make school a place um, that they want to come to. 
activities and opportunities like this is something different, um, fresh for them. And I think things like this, being allowed to go and see a burnout during school time, hey, if you're a kid, it doesn't get better than that. So, no, thank you so much for having us. Yes, the kids having a lot of fun with Principal Steve Daniels. Just think about that for a moment. Uh, we have two protagonists for the Drift King Crown. One is Fangadan, your defending three-time champion. The other is the boy from the South Waikato in Tokoroa. His name is Taylor James. I'm Taylor James. I drive a Nissan S14 sponsored by ProWear. I think it's my fourth season in Pro now. Last year we came out third, wasn't too bad, but um, yeah, we've had previous good results in that. I guess it probably started like, probably shouldn't say it, but it was on the streets of it, I guess. Just had sort of turbo cars, skylines and stuff back in the day, and um, just sort of progressed from there. Um, a skyline I had as a road car. I took to a Hampton Downs track day, actually. It was my first ever track day and sort of just caught the bug from there and um, got a Sefero, ended up entering pro sport in that um, back in like 2018 I think. Yeah, just progressed from there, built an S14, done one season of pro sport in that. We took that same car to pro for our first year, second year and then this, this one, is, this will be its second year in pro. My first ever round in pro was at Teratonga right down south and I managed to get third and that just gave me the bug, that extra bit of grip, the bigger tyres and that, it's just it's an, extra, an, an extra buzz on top of it again, you know, so from there on in it was just trying to full commit to what we can and try and make things work. You feel the nerves and the adrenaline like before you even get onto the track, you know, and it's, it's cool like sort of emphasising a bit of skill. When you come into competition there's, there's a, a criteria of what the judges want you to do, so I, I like that aspect of it. It's, uh, the feeling of, you know, the, the pressure and you know people are watching you to do well and so I know, oh, I like that side of it. A lot of people, it, it sort of gets to them a bit, but I just sort of, I don't know, when I drive out there, I sort of just try and brush off the nerves and just drive hard and see where we end up at. You know, people like Fanger, um, Adam and Dave, like those sorts of guys, those are the guys I looked up to when I was young, you know, like watching the sport, coming into pro sport and that, like those are the guys that sort of got me into the drifting, you know, and it's, um, I don't know, that, that's the buzz for me, just getting to drive with any of those guys and everyone's got good setups, you know, everyone's got strong cars and gearboxes and engines and that these days and I don't know, I think it helps, you can commit more and you know everyone in pro is, they're good to go, you know. Well, so you've got a facelift S14, Sylvia, like, you know, we don't have the budget to go and blow at a shop to build a car, so we just build it all ourselves, all our roll cages and everything. It's an RB30 block with a 3.4 stroker in it, um, dry sump. We, we, we found that to get away from most of the oiling issues RV motors have is just dry something that it literally pushes in what it needs and sucks out what it doesn't. We run just an old Jericho four-speed gearbox, nothing flash, just once again it's a budget thing for us. Um, but it works, it's fine, touch wood, it's been great. And just a vintage rear end with some um, drive shaft shop eight rear axles, Wise Fab version 2 front and rear and um, run a Max ECU. It does make a good amount of grunt. We run a Borg Warner EFR 9280 turbo, so a big turbo, but we do have a big displacement motor as well. So, um, yeah, so Brian's tuned it up. I think high boost is like 31 pounds and it's like 970 horsepower at the wheels, but there's not many tracks around here that we need to use all of that. So we've turned low boost up to a setting that we feel is about right. Um, but now this year we're running these Bellino tyres, um, thanks to Carl Thompson. Um, Bellino New Zealand, is, it's, we're, we're almost needing all of that grunt to get it to the ground. Like these tyres are just soft and grippy, they have the side bite, like yeah, we almost need all of that grunt just to get it to go because they, they, they are seriously a real grippy tyre. Eh? This year um, Darren Kelly's not driving in G1NZ. He's opted to help me and another mate of mine, Mitch Lana from Australia that's over here. Um, it's just good to have him, you know, like every time we go out, he's like, what are the tyre pressures? So he notes that all down and then after the round, we can, we can relay that information and then like, 
these pressures didn't work with this and this and we can just change stuff. So next year we'll end up with a decent setup for every track, you know. It, there's so much setup in the cars now that it, it does make a difference. There's that much adjustment and the cars are so on edge of being too grippy. It's a yeah, big help having Darren on board. So you've got like quite a big crew, like a lot of it's sort of family and mates that I've grown up with, you know. It's, we make it work. Everyone's got a job to do and they help us out where they need to and yeah, it's sort of cool. I've always ha tried to have sort of as much input in the car as I can, you know, like it's cool that they work on the car and do stuff for me, but I'm also one of those guys I'd rather try and do it myself as well, you know, but when it comes time in battles and everything's heated and that, it is sort of good to be able to just chill out a bit, let the boys, you know, change an axle or whatever, it's, yeah. So no, big thanks to all the crew, honestly, it's that they make it happen every round, time after time. Well, welcome back. It's the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are here at Mercury Bay Park, the stadium of stadiums. This is the home of the grand final, the Concrete Jungle. Or as uh, Mr. Stephen McIver likes to say, welcome to the jungle, baby. <laughs> Well, we've got cars on track. It's practice time for our pros. They're just finishing off before we move into our top 16. Now, I'm looking at this car here, looking at the rear tyres and trying to work out which driver it is. A lot of it comes down to what rear window has he got because has it got the, uh, is, it the is it the 13? Is it the 20? 45 on the side. I'm going to say that's Taylor James. Yeah, trying to look into the uh, window of that car there, Steve. I can see a bit of orange on that helmet, so I do believe it's Taylor James and the Green Brothers 13B powered Mimico Ryko 24-7 Napa Auto Parts 180. And Taylor James in that borrowed car from Team DSR. Uh, we spoke about it way earlier in the day, Steve, but the camaraderie, the sportsmanship of these guys down in the pits, fantastic to give Taylor James, trying to chase his win for the season, uh, a borrowed car while keeping ahead of Dave Steadman and the other Team DSR car. Absolutely. What an amazing thing. We've talked about it numerous times. Five different drivers offer Taylor James a car. Cole Armstrong offers Taylor James a motor. One of those drivers that offered him a car is the man who leads the championship that doesn't necessarily want Taylor to be able to go. Of course, that being one from Mr. Fanger, Dan Wilhouse. He said, I've got a spare Mustang out there. I, I think it was a case of, I don't know if I can drive a left hook. So, here comes Team DSR. If they're not giving rollers and uh, and rock trucks and things like that. Here they are giving another car to another driver and of course they're trying to get their man Dave Steadman into second place in the championship. Com camaraderie, it's amazing. We look at the cars here, these are the pros out there, they're uh, going through and doing their thing. Earlier on though today we've seen the pro sport drivers out. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of their championship round. So I had the pleasure of managing all of the pro sport here we see James Dudley out on track being chased down by Daniel Daniel Edwards he could that's a he had a great drive Ryan Perry out there as well chasing down uh, one of the top of qualifiers early on Scott Keegan and the two brothers some good close battles hard driving from these pro sport guys there we are Ryan Perry again in the active VMA Case Pullenbury your newly crowned pro sport champion there in the Go Loco S for 14.9 I think they call it close to an S15 doing an absolutely fantastic job showing us why yeah, he knock, is knock the champion. Who's there it was Daniel Edwards but I think that was going to be enough to uh, maybe upset him a little bit Case he is the champion he's not the champion elect anymore he is now being crowned and congratulations to that team another couple of great drivers we've seen Ryan Perry doing an amazing job this one here Tyler West yeah very great battle I mean this by the stage of the day these guys are well bedded into the track and what they're used to with their cars they've got the setup dialed properly and we saw some extremely close proximity from all these drivers we had massive reactions from the crowd and the atmosphere out there oh, look at the on smiles it. on the faces the crowd love it here at Bay Park it's the place to be it's the place we crown a champion tonight's the time here we go as you see him battling his way through Case Pullenbury, a wheel off for the man up front, Ryan Perry. Yeah, Ryan Perry just pushing so hard into the teardrop that he whopped off, but there it is, the round champion and your new D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Case Pullenbury sprays the champagne. That was the round win podium there, along with Ryan Perry. Well, you of course have a round winner. In this case here, we've also got a championship winner. Look at the man, what a smile. He goes up and lifts the trophy aloft. Wins. Rod from Valvoline, passing over the cup. Wins all five rounds of the Pro Sport. Pete Drever there sitting in second. All five rounds. Pro Sport Championship winner by far. Undisputed, if anything. 
Well, this is the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. There's some amazing drivers out there. This one here, Elite Performance on the side. This is an S15, and it's super quick. Smith Industries on it as well. The 719, of course, Sean Potros. But there's one man at the top spot right now. Can he go all the way? Of course, there can be none other than the man who campaigns the Ford Mustang RTR, Mr. Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Hey guys, my name's Fanger Dan and I drive the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D and I've been drifting for about 20 years. So my passion for drifting began um, oh, around about 21 years ago. Uh, just a group of my mates um, all hanging out. We had our own workshop and had some pretty cool street cars way back then and started watching the Japanese drifting. We took it as maybe a bit of a craze, you know, like, oh, it's drifting stuff, oh, we'll give this a crack. Um, yeah, so look what it's turned into now, you know, um, a very professional motorsport, um, still fast growing around the world, and look at the type of the vehicles that we're competing in. D1NZ had actually been running for most probably a season, I think, and I did the odd event and then it was like, okay, I really love this. This is, I want to do well at it. Um, I, you know, I actually hit, my car was actually still road registered at that time. And um, I was like, nah, she's, we're deregistering it. We're doing all the stuff, um, you know, new engine package and, and just started the full season, you know. We met a lot of cool people throughout that journey. Um, that we're still friends with now and um, yeah definitely like pretty proud to be part of um, the start of D1NZ. I guess um, the highlight for me was I think it was around 2011 when um, Shane Van Gisbergen came drifting with us and it was more it was like the Ford versus Holden you know um, I guess for me that was really awesome to see two supercars as such um, drifting and having a good battle. Um, they were some pretty awesome memories. You know, whether I qualify number one or qualify mid-pack or whatever, um, I just want uh, someone to come up to me after qualifying and say, that was so mean, I loved it, like that, I, I, you know, even if I spun or something like that, um, I've given it 100% and, and someone's remembered that, you know what I mean? Like they've gone, man, like pity that you spun on that last bit because that run was on fire, um, there was no mistakes made, but pushed it too hard here. And then moving into competition, it's about having a rememberable battle like you know the, the you know your fans walk away from the event or whatever you see on tv that it's something that they they people talk about you know so we actually run uh two ford mustang rtr uh spec 5ds uh one has a uh, five liter coyote supercharged v8 uh, and just runs a tti sequential gearbox with a factory rear diff um, and axles. This car here showcases what you can purchase from a dealership as a road car as such. Um, 750 horsepower um, straight off the showroom floor so that's pretty awesome um, but we have ramped this car up over time and it's about 930 horsepower and it's a pretty awesome setup. Um, we won the championship in it last year um, proving that you don't really need the best of the best um, that you can do it, or the fastest car. Um, this car has pretty good grip, um, but for the power that it's got, it most probably needs a bit more suspension, travel, and, and things like that. Our actual competition car that we were meant to be running this season runs a 428 cube Cornet racing engine, and runs a four-speed gearbox with a Winters quick change rear end. Uh, it's a lot lighter, 90% carbon fibre. It's, uh, it's about 300 kgs lighter than this car. Um, super awesome, it sounds amazing. And revs to the moon and back. Makes about 880 horsepower. It's a little rocket ship. 
factors and the weight difference. Like the way that you build a car or the way you make it sound um, represents the type of person you are. Twenty years of Z1NZ, twenty years later, there is the crown, there is the trophy. A special thank you to Kenny Ruddle from Overstead TV. Today we're live on Sky Sport or TV3. In those days it was one kid. Silver Bullet Productions and Overstead TV. 50 million global views. Kenny, thank you very much for what you've done for New Zealand drifting. But it is time now to look at the top 16. Steve Daniel, part of your commentary team, joined with me up in the box. He's just been out there, of course, Cole Armstrong. How was it in front of an amazing crowd? Man, I have to say, awesome crowd, but super awkward. I have to tell you, that's not something I've done, uh, done before and uh, <coughs> yeah. Waving at a, at a lovely crowd out there, especially when you're not competing, it is definitely different. But hey, what a crowd we have out here. It is so good to see the thousands of people here supporting these great drivers. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a battle on our hands though, Steve. And it is a big battle because if the man on the right hand side of our screen takes the win, he's going to be in an amazing place when it comes to the championship time. It's the Mustang versus the Rotary. The Nissan versus the mighty Ford. That's it, look at that. Adam Davies closing the gap now, getting right up on the door there, but bang it down, putting that Mustang right up on that outside line. Adam Davies dropping a wheel there as he transitions on the inside. Look at Bang it down, right out on that wide, wide line on the teardrop there as he now transitions to come back up on the hill. Look at the smoke they're going through, but has just pulled a massive gap on Adam Davies, but look at that, he's clawing it back. Right at the, oh. it's the last part of the section. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your first battle of the top 16. That <laughs> battle was as good as a final. We've got half to go. We see the return serve. Let's have a look at the replay as they both leave the line and power up onto the concrete wall. I have to say, Adam Davies was sleeping on the on the line just there. He should not have left the, the gap that he did behind Banger, but Banger right up on the wide line, opening the door for Adam to come up, but right here, Drops a wheel, does Adam Davies on the inside as the, they come into the teardrop. Bang it, nice wide line. Pushing into the midsection here as they now transition through. Adam doing a nice transition, but just got left behind a little bit. Look at the gap. Banger pulls away on him, but claws it back, does Adam Davies. Banger probably not as high as he uh, has been throughout the weekend there, Steve. Wow, that was an impressive start up. This one here, as I mentioned, this one for Fanger Dan is as good as a final. It's the biggest, probably the, one of the biggest battles that he has had. This is the time for him to return serve. We've got, of course, <laughs> Fanger Dan, our number one qualifier, Adam Davies qualifying in 16. Adam Davies wants to get his guy through into second place. That is Dave Steadman, our last round winner at Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon. There he is. And he wants to knock that man off the top perch right there. That is Fanger, Dan Woolhouse. Yeah, look at Fanger. Real, real focused on the on the job. He's got a head right now. Adam Davies ready to send this 20B 180 SX as we roll into our first battle. Well, second part of our first battle of the top 16. Well, let's see how they go with Adam Davies in the Napa Auto Parts Riker 24-7 Mimico. It's the 20B Rotary who leads out the Mustang. Fanger Dan, three times champion. He's oh, got it. Wow, this is huge, Steve. Fanger has just dropped the wheel on the inside. Adam Davies just needs to hold this through here. Look at Fanger, catching back up. Really closing that proximity, but look at that. Adam Davies holding a nice line on the inside here. As now they transition back through the smoke. Look at Fang, another wheel off there for Fanger Dan as he tries to catch up. Oh, how high Davies. up the wall is what Adam is Davies? What is going on here, ladies and gentlemen? Is this a massive mix-up by Adam Davies out there? Oh. Fanger Dan really putting the car on the line. Holy moly, ladies and gentlemen. Fanger over rotating the finish. What has happened? So Fanger comes through. What happens here, Cole? Right now, Fanger's entered. Look, over, nearly over rotates. Hits the really power, drops the wheel there to try and catch back up. 
nearly comes out a drift finger. Holy moly, right through here, gathers it back up, does another little wheel drop there, transitions so nicely does Manga. But look at the job Adam Davies is doing in the front. Everything he needs to do, the car is positioned nicely. Transitions now to come back up on the wall. Another wheel drop there by Fanga, trying to close that proximity. Steve, this is our first battle right now, and if we had a massive mix-up. Oh my gosh, championship mix-up, is it gonna happen? Woo! Don't worry, if you're looking at that one there, it was after the line, Fang was allowed to do that to slow his car down, but he's not going to be happy. The car's dirty. Which way are they going to go? It goes down to Nick. Is it going to be a win? I don't know which way it's even going to go. there were some serious mistakes that went down. We have not seen that from Fanger Dan at all through the season, and that is just blowing my brains right now. Adam Davies just... He just drove a nice line, just uh, Fanger had a little bit of a mistake on the entry and had to Here catch back up. Oh! Whoa! Adam we got Davies! Adam, like, oh, let's go down to Stephen McIver. I think he's going to have a chat with Adam <laughs> Davies. Okay, okay, look, let's just hold on for a minute because we were going to just talk to the winners in this round of 16, but uh, championship on the edge. Like, okay, first of all, the guy leading the championship in the top 16 is out now, all right? How good does that feel? Oh, he's beaten me twice now, so I've got to get one up on him surely this season. So, uh, look, he's put on a mean lead run. I knew I had to do whatever I could to, to beat him, and I just I just stuck it on the wall and stuck it on his door. So, awesome. Can't, can't believe it. Well done. I, I am going to go back over the side. It's that new race suit, Rowdy. That NASCAR-looking race suit, Rowdy. I just, just quickly um, did not see that coming, and now you're going to have to sit and wait. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. Um, yeah, I, I laid down a really good lead run, and... Just, um, it was a bit slippery on that entry, and I was just trying to push it hard, you know. I don't want to, do. if I'm going to go out, I want to go out in style. But, um, yeah, Adam's given me um, some good battles this year, and, you know, um, I've bet him the last two times. So, um, he, you know, he's, I've got to lose sometimes. So, um, and, you know, big ups to him to lending his car to Taylor, you know, to, to chase me in the championship. So that's um, big ups to Adam and his team, and, yeah. And look, Dan, the chase is on. Keep the race suit on. It's a long way to go. Wow! How about that? Davies through, Fanger Dan out. Oh my gosh, Cole Armstrong, that is a shake up, and that sells some, one more person. He's got some work to do. Oh, that puts a lot, a lot of pressure on one person right now. Adam Davies will be stoked for him. Stoke for Adam Davies. Like you said, uh, Fanger's got ha had many uh, uh, victories over him, so really good to get that at home. But that puts some huge, huge pressure on someone's shoulders right now because the door has just been opened massively. Now, I remember a few years ago where I named Gaz Grove the giant killer. He took out Nico Reed. Does Adam Davies, depending on the results, become the giant killer of 2023 with that one performance? Well, <clears throat> with that one performance comes another one. Roofing Industries on the side of this 2JZ-powered FC RX-7 going up against the man, the myth, the legend. The only person that's ever won four championship rounds in a row, the Titus Transport. Four and Rotary Silence Clothing. It is the RB30 power plant under the bonnet <laughs> of the People's Champion, Nico Reed. Camplin gets ready to line up. Nico will just blaze the tyres and he'll get ready to go park up next door. The higher qualifier will move into the lead position for the first part of the battle. Nico Reed qualifying in ninth position. Camplin in eighth place. Steve, that was our first battle in the top 16. It was huge. I've just had to drink a full bottle of water because I was so parched. But here we go. Adam Camplin leading out Nico Reed as they enter into the first section there. Look at Adam Kaplan, nice and high on the wall. A little bit of a bobble, scraping the back side of that car there, but look at Nico Reed, tucking up real nice and tight there. Well, is Nico Reed, a little bit of contact. DCL zone, it's okay to, oh, Adam Kaplan spun. And took the front end of the tunny far off. Whoa! Someone tell Nico to stop, otherwise he's gonna wreck his front bumper. Those are expensive. Yeah, they are. Luxury sports on the, on the front of that. Stop, stop now. Tell him on his radio, just stop. Yeah, Rossi, come on, get on the radio. Hard, wow. This is battle number two out of Camplin. Where did he throw that spin from? Look at the entry here from Adam Camplin. I'm on the wall, I'm touching the wall. Look at the rubber just flying up. 
Now, Nico one, Reed right there with him. One thing we got to look at is, was there any loss of drift from Nico Reed? Nah, He's got a wheel off, on. just a handbrake on. Was there contact at that point? Was that the contact that... What? Yes! That was contact. That was already... The front bumper was already broken off. Yeah, that's when the Nico transitioned, right? Yep. Yeah, we'll have a look at it. To the teardrop. I want to be wrong because, you know, I'm a biased Nico Reed fan, so I'm ha happy for him to always win everything. There was definitely contact as Nico came in. Uh, there was contact on the transition into, obviously, the head, uh, the hairpin. Or the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, teardrop. the teardrop. I'm but just I wondering don't... whether or not he's dived down. Because the thing that I'm looking at, and probably the same with you, is did the FC spin by itself? Was there something that, that was there contact? 100%. Look, the judges wanted to come okay, back. Look. here we go. So Nico is flying, flying into that midsection. And there we go. That was it. <laughs> yeah, that's all she wrote on that one. Okay. I think wow, the, uh, I the can't judges... believe this. Like, this is, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are excited as I am because it has just kicked off with a bang. We've right. had one championship possibly opened the door opened massively and uh <coughs> yeah wow it's so gonna be an exciting night here Steve. what's the time does anyone know the time is? yeah of course not it's even a, seven o'clock my gosh it's still three hours of amazing drifting to go adam kaplan it's his turn to play the chase game with nico reed up in front nico right on the place he needs to be down there grinding the wall oh that looks so good by nico reed as he transitions off the wall and into the teardrop Slowing that car down now, getting back on throttle, doing a nice job here is Nico Reed. Adam Kaplan just sitting up in the behind, really shallowed up that line, and look, he's right down on the bottom of the teardrop, trying to close that proximity, but Nico Reed running the wall, the people's champion. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. there he is, Adam Kaplan. Come on, slow it up. Go and do it. He's coming, do it. That stuff goes everywhere. You see Finger Dan before, he had it all over his face even. But oh my gosh, that's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Nico Reed leading out Adam Kaplan, running the wall, the people's champion. Look at that wastegate, firing off those flames. The transitions now into the teardrop. Doing a great job. Now as he drives back out, look at Adam Kaplan. Transitions through here, but real shallow. Real, real tucked up on the inside. It's hard to get the car back up onto that outside wall. But Nico Reed showing, yeah, what's up? I will run that wall. And Adam Kaplan's like, I'm going to do it. I'm out. <laughs> That's what you like to see. Make a great super saloon. Look All right. at the state of the car. Oh, man. Now, this is going to be interesting to see. I'm... We're going to push the result. What is it going to be? Nico or Camplin? One, two, three. Nico Reed takes the win. Well done, brother. You're through to the next round to face Adam Camplin. Yeah, um, can't wait. Um, Adam drove good there. Um, he's a good driver. And um, hey, bring on the next battle. You pumped? Yes, definitely pumped. Um, got a lot of sponsors here and family here to support us. So um, hey, let's see what happens. Go get it. Yeah, so I'm talking about go get it, Nico Reed. He talks about family and sponsors. Great to see Davey Reed down there today. Make a, I haven't seen him this season. What a great man that man is, Absolutely. Davey Reed. Oh, I can tell you I've had uh, quite a few good memories with that man. Absolutely. Well, not like that, but you know, like good times. Yeah. After the uh, functions and whatnot, uh, great family, and they uh, back Nico 100%. Yeah. And it's uh, really good to see him back in the uh, D1NZ this year. Now, one of the things we get to see a lot is uh, car drivers heading up and speaking to people that are in the area. I'm just wondering if Adam Campbell is going to come up. Like, I don't know if he's got anything to argue up, but um, I just have this feeling he's going to pop up and have a word what with What for? Him. Dude, you spun. Yeah, well, you, you oh, spun. Is my, is my mic on? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah you're good. You're good. <laughs> Alex Pelea. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about this we, uh, this young man. So when I was 15, uh, when he was 15 years old, we were down in Christchurch. This just goes to show my age. We were down in Christchurch and he came up as a, uh, as a fan of uh, my car and my style of driving and whatnot and uh, said, I'd, I can't wait to uh, get into the D1 one day. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Pelea out there with the big boys. Right now he's got Ben Jenkins 
up next there, Steve. He certainly does. Thank you for letting me know which one it was. That's a yellow one, isn't it? Um, Alex Pelera, of course, in the JS Racing Talk Performance. That thing there has got a two-liter F20C Honda 400 horsepower. It's an S2000, and he's going up against Ben Jenkins out of Auckland in the Carter's Tires, Puka Kaui, North Shore Toyota Parts, 2JZ powered uh, Toyota GT86. Now, of course, the higher qualifier, which will be the 96 car, sets the pace. We'll lead them out first Did time. you say it only had 400 horsepower? That's what he told me. Nah, 400 kilowatt it might actually be. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got 650 horsepower stringing out of that little two litre. Let's just change that there in my, in my documentation. <laughs> Looks like they might just be checking the brake lights, making sure everyone's brake lights work. Depends. Front and rear. So, Kenny's in the, uh, I'm interested to see what Kenny says. Oh, look at that. There's the, there's the P3 Earthworks. Uh, look at this. Oh, and look cool at little the... piece. Chad, uh, another local contractor supplying <laughs> the uh, sweeper here is oh, P3 please Earthworks. Oh, don't hit the signage. No, surely, surely, surely not. There's a lot of clay on the track, so they're obviously just trying to oh. get all of that, uh, that off there. But what a great... Uh, Great thing to see out here, and thank you to uh, Chad and the team for supplying this for the D1NZ this weekend. <laughs> Look at that, that's so cool. Just giving it a, a bit of a brief sweep. It doesn't get much cooler as a sweeper than that thing, does it? No, it sure doesn't. Oh, and there goes uh, George from Inspire U. Oh, and that's what George is looking at. George from Inspire U Media, he's been our, uh, our man of choice for the last couple of seasons. With the D1NZ in the world of Joan, that guy has just come with so much technology. JS Racing Talk Performance Developments, all the names over that car, look at it. It's a pretty cool machine. Of course, Goodman Engineering amongst many others. Keep it read on the side of the Carter's tyres, Pukekohe machine, Ben Jenkins. What else, Rosine? They do a lot of painting on it. Yeah, those cars are always immaculate and it's so good to see. Look at the scrapes and bangs and bumps on the back of that beautiful GD86. P3 Earthworks. That thing has certainly done its uh, a couple of laps this weekend. Yeah, really, really good to see. I can't, how are they meant to see out of that? That, is, that must have like that no, two-way. No, that, that isn't human powered. That's like the Cars movie. Really? Yeah. What do they call that? Track D. Track D. That'll do. Track D. P3 <laughs> the Track D. <laughs> it's amazing. It cracks me up the, the, the names you call things when you have kids now. Like, my little fella's got a, a little oh. dog. You call that, it this, Doggo. See you know what that is? That's called a Tony Wilson shot. Tony Wilson, one of the greatest videographers in the country follows the motorsport world this guy is like i started in videography and he was my idol and i tell you what he still is outside of you Kyle. thanks bud well i mean i've learned so much more about drifting than i have in the last nine years sitting next to you <laughs> that's what i'm here for but there he is there's oh. the man himself tony knows what he's doing yeah. he makes you feel comfortable out there when he's filming right in your face Gets, captures that shot. So I Look think that's that. Martin upstairs getting that shot. He'll be, what about me? So there you go, Martin, there's a shout out. <laughs> and that just, as we were talking before, Steve, just such a great team in behind. There's another one of the cameramen up there in the hey, box. Give us a wave Martin. there, mate. Good on you, Martin. <laughs> and look, what, it's Tony not cold. He's got shorts and T-shirt on. It's freezing out there. Someone get that man a jacket. Won't be a few more minutes, ladies and gentlemen, before the track is well swept now and uh, ready to go for the uh, third top 16 battle. Well, right let's see how they go. It is Alex Pelier who's going to lead out Ben Jenkins. The revs are rising as Kenny Ruddle just sort of goes across and says, calm down when I'm ready, not when you're ready. That's it, mate. That is it. Look at the night. It's just so still beautiful for all the uh, <coughs> rubbish sort of weather we've had over the last week. Bay of Plenty is now turning it on. 
You know, oh, I can just see sure just are. to the side. They, like I've been saying all night, got a good corporate box for their Armstrong Plumbing and Drainage crew there. The boys are out there having a few brews and a bit of a feed and enjoying the atmosphere tonight. So all right, hopefully so everyone up there has a good bit of fun. The cars have been released. Why? Because they're obviously testing out to checking that part of the track. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess now the car, they had a scrub area, so they're now going to obviously scrub the front tyres, try to get some heat into them. Yes, of course. Scrub and the rear. And track will start to cool down very, very quickly. It's, it's amazing what happens to that track, especially concrete. doesn't hold heat like Tar Seal does, you know? Now, I couldn't help but notice uh, at the very end as you came off the track before, I saw this massive smoke. You're quite photogenic, aren't you, Mr Armstrong? Well, you know... Done a little bit of it over the years. Yeah. Must be. Well, I wouldn't know, but. I was waving out to my mum. Mum, uh, old Le uh, Leanne, she's at home, I'm sure, watching right now. Is Dad uh, here or is he. Uh, he's yeah, Dad's here. Yeah, but it's a bit cold for mum, so she's just going to stay at home with Nana. Oh, I just adore you. Yeah, she's lovely. But here we go, Steve. Run us off for this next battle right now. Well, straight down the straight we go. This is top 16 action in the Valley D1NZ. Alex Belia leads the way. Here comes Jenkins. Maybe a touch with the wall for Belia. What a good entry so far for Alex Belia in that little S2000. They transition now into the uh, teardrop. Look at him right out on the outside zone there. Ladies and gentlemen, but look at Ben Jenkins closing the door in that GD86. Wanting to now get right up on the side there, but look at Alex Pelea right up on the wall, and Ben Jenkins is closing the door. What a look chase. At this, ladies and gentlemen. What a chase, Ben Jenkins. What a drive by Benny Jenkins. Really closed the door right there, but we have to go back. We say it all the time, Steve. Without a good lead, you don't have a good chase. And Alex Pelea, the South Island youngster, putting that little S2000 up on the wall there. Well, they come through head on down to the teardrop. You can see right on the line, and this is where Ben Jenkins, well, you're my mobile clipping point, I'll go where you go. Just shallows up slightly, but that's just to get right on the bumper and watch what happens here. Great transition by Benny Jenkins. Just got the drive. Look look at the acceleration. Just sitting down a little bit, but right on that A-pillar. What the judges are wanting to see. Great first part of this battle. So, uh... They flip around now, Steve. Well, that was the first part. This is the second part, the other half of the battle to go. The Carter tyres on the side, certainly going through a few tyres tonight. Let's see how Ben Jenkins goes from the lead position. Look at this. Oh, Benny touches the wall right up on the side, but Alex Belia is not giving him an inch as they now transition into the teardrop. Alex Belia wanting to get right on the door, Benny. Not really quite as wide as we'd like to see, but great line through here now as they drive up onto the uh, outside wall here. Alex Belia trying to close the door, but look at Ben oh, Deacon. that is so impressive. Right on the wall. Woo! These two drivers are putting on a show. They're saving the best of the final, the grand finale tonight. Wow, that was impressive, mate. Steve, this is the third battle. I'm going to lose my voice. Benny Jenkins, a little touch there. See that? A little bit of a correction there by both Ben. Of them, both of them a little tap. Yeah, they both dived in there really well. But obviously, Alex following the lead car. Remember that. He is putting the lead car as a mobile clipping point. So where that car goes, he goes. But look at this transition here by Ben Jenkins. Set the car nice up onto the wall and just on the throttle. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is some... Top driving by New Zealand's top drifters. Well, it's going to come down. Which way are they going to go? Or are they going to go again? Mate, that was hard. Both of them, <coughs> sick entry. Alex Blair probably had a small advantage, possibly on proximity, like a small advantage. Uh, ben may have had like a small disadvantage. Wow. One, two, three. Alex Blair gets the win. Hey, the boy from the Deep South does it, hey? Hey, in the grand final weekend. Uh, look, I'm having a, a, a wonderful time, you know. Ben actually got one up on me on my uh, first, well, my second D1 round, but the first round of the season and uh, had to pay him back, you know. He did a stellar job. I want to thank everyone at D1 and all the contractors for actually putting this on because for a while there, she was pretty bloody rough. So uh, I'm stoked. Let's keep going. Woo! All right, let's keep going. Get it.
Let's keep on going, all right. And it was great to see that he talked about the contractors, and there were so many of them. I know Brett Morrison, he's a mate of mine. He was straight away, he was the first person down, a concrete cutter. He was putting cuts in there. You were on the phone the whole time. Uh, oh, the phone was going hot, mate. Absolutely hot. Just talking to all local contractors, and it's so great that they, you know, they're all just so willingly keen to help out in any way, shape, or form. And uh, as I said, you know, we had uh, Chad's little uh, sweeper here. We've also Jason, he was on the digger, also helping uh, me remove all the clay. So pretty cool to see, you know, people are just willing to help out and uh, get this place up and running so we can have an event like we have right now. But here's a man I love to see drive from the necky. These two, well, both of these guys. We've got Sean Potros and the black Elite S15 and Cody Pullenbury. I love this dude's style. Cody, he drives so well. Cody, I mean, he is, him and his brother are two incredible drifters. They both started in pro sport. Again, it just shows how important the pro sport class is for the D1NZ. And uh, of course, the Taranaki man on our screen right now, Sean Potros, a former winner of the pro sport championship, Elite Performance Stock Street. That's the 2JZ, 800 horsepower in the San Silvia S15. And of course, he's going up against Cody Pullenbury out of Auckland, the CK Earthworks machine. The same sort of thing, 2JZ under the bonnet in the San Silvia S15. Who is going to take the win? It's the next battle on the left-hand side of the tree. This will be to face Alex Pelier, who just won the battle over Ben Jenkins. We'll get ready to send him straight down the straight. Sean Potros qualified in fifth position. Cody Pullenbury in 12th. Potros will lead out this part of the battle to NZ. He was second in the championship last year. This kid here is certainly going to taste the one, surely, in his career. Well, he's not really a kid anymore, Steve. This man is a stellar driver. And you watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Both these guys are mental. Two cars, and look at this. Sean Potros straight on the wall. Cody Pullenbury oh, he's right on the out there. there. Right on the door there as they transition now into the teardrop seat. Look at this go. Well, let's have a look at how he goes. Sean Potros right on the line. You can just see it billowing smoke. Cody, though, he's not intimidated by what's happening up front. Really trying to close the gap. Up on the wall we go, Cole. Here we go. Look at this. Sean Potros sitting the car right up on the wall. Look at the sparks, ladies and gentlemen. Cody Pullenbury right there. This is what we've come to see. What a show these guys are putting on. What a lot. You see them both lead, lead out into the first turn, and they're both locked at the hip. This is sick, Steve. Like, straight up. This, it, look at Sean Potros running that car on the limiter all the way through the section. He is putting this thing on the line. Smooth through here. Cody Pullenbury, a little bit shallow, just keeping that proximity. Look at that transition now. Sean Potros just full send, full throttle. A little bit of a dab. Look at that spark there as he drags the back end of that car on the wall. But... Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are having a blast as I am watching these guys out here put a god damn show on. Oh, good old creeping out there. He'll creep into the lead position this time. Cody Pullenbury, Sean Potros, D1NZ Pro Drifters, every single one of them tonight putting on a show, not just for the venue here, of course, Mercury Bay Park, but for an amazing audience, thanks to Repco Auto Parts on Sky Sport, Fox Sport, KO around the New Zealand, around Australia and the Pacific Islands. Oi, Steve. This is sick. <laughs> this is sick. This is straight up sick, man. Man, we've called some pretty cool events together and it's just something about Bay Park that just lifts the calibre again. It does. Look right there. Sean Potros does not have much tread on the back of those tyres. He needs all the drive he can get, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the second part of this battle. Off we go. It's Cody Pullenbury's turn to lead the way. He heads up towards the wall. You can see straight away, lower down the track proximity. And is that an over-rotation? Oh, my God. Did I just call that Sean Potro said no tyres, and he has just over-rotated? Yes, you did. Oh, wow. He cooked them too hard in the first lap, and that's cost him. You know what he cooked them too hard in? In the scrub. You cooked don't need to do that. But ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Cody Pullenbury running the wall. 
showing us why he is in the top 16 and in the D1NZ. What a run there by the young fella. How much lock these cars have, it just surprises me. Sean Potros will be well and truly disappointed in that, but let's check this out. Right away, you just see Sean Potros just didn't have the drive, like cooks the tyres really well here, but just couldn't get it and just over-rotated. Couldn't hold the car back, just didn't, didn't have that rear drive and uh, gathers it back up, but that's all she wrote right there. Cody Pullenbury just needing to finish the lap. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this youngster. Bam, up on the wall. Look at the smoke just bellowing off there. That is mental. Wow, that's the point. I mean, I think there was some contact there. Somewhere in that haze is uh, Sean Potros. Car still looking elite. Well, this side by side, we'll have a look and see who takes the win. Dana Tipperman, Joel Counter, Andrew Redwood. It's Cody Pullenbury takes the win. Well done, buddy. Uh, I've never seen you so excited whacking the top of your car. Why did that win mean so much? No, it was just a gangster battle, you know, and the bro's such a good driver. Just like, you know, I knew I had to push hard, and we just said before we came out that it was going to be an on battle. It's on the wall, on the doors. Let's go. Hey, how, how good's your little bro? Hey, too good. I might have to retire next year. <laughs> no, 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 keep it here. Let's have a quick chat to Sean. Sean, I know at the beginning of the uh, day, I was talking to him and was hoping to maybe push a little harder and maybe get close to that podium position. What happened on the chase? Oh, yeah, just a bit slow off the start, but slippery, and then you got hit the marbles and went backwards into the wall, but hey, that's all right. It was a good battle with Cody. He's a mean driver, so he put on a mean chase, so putting on a crowd for all the people here. The stands look packed, so... No, it's mean. It's been one of those seasons, hey? Yeah, it is. And it, no, I couldn't do it without elite performance, rear up clothing, um, Smitty, um, Top Tune, all of that. So, yeah, they make it happen for us. So, yeah. See you next year. Yeah, of course. <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, Bay Park, do you want some more drifting? Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they do. They do. There's more coming. Top 16 continues. Stay with us live. Welcome back to Valvoline D1NZ, wherever you are around the drifting world. Welcome to Mercury Bay Park. We are moving to the second half of the top 16. Breaking news, run the braking ticker underneath me. David Hunter is out. Still trying to figure out why he is out. Obviously it'll be a mechanical. We hear he's gonna do a, a, a bye run, but Hunter is out. Jordan Joyce goes through, lads. Oh, are you talking to us, Stephen? <laughs> yes. So David Hunter yes. is out. <laughs> Oh no, David Hunter out. Is that because he's gone to a 2J? Is that that Toyota thing? Probably. Rubbish. Got to stick to those RVs where they pump oil out everywhere. I love them. But Steve, do you reckon that we could turn up like... Can everyone out there in the uh, stands, can you guys hear us easily? Uh, or not? I'm unsure. Hopefully you can because I'm losing my voice. Well, let me, Getting into it. let me message the team at Bay Audio Visual. Yep where I work, and yeah. I'll see if they Bay Audio Visual where I work, and I will uh, see if they can turn, turn, the, turn the old volume up. Oh, we've got the animal. This is Liam Burke. Won a championship, came in, won a championship. Yeah, one and done. I'm out. Oh, wow. I just got to speak up. We can barely hear you. Really? See? Told you. Sort it out, Steve. It's all my fault. Oh, did someone miss to pick up a boot? <laughs> oh, yeah, forgot that. Blimey, that would have been a, uh, someone would have run up a mischief. Oh, wow, whose was that? Uh, it was my one when I was running the wall hard out. Nah, I think it was Sean Potros's. This is going to be a good battle. Well, it is the animal Liam Burke. What was he, 2000 Drift King? 19? No, 2020, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think so, 2020. Because I won 2018, Darren won the next year, then... Vangas won 20, 
221. No, 2221. So yeah, Lee must be 20. So Fang has won three in a row. Two in a row. No. So Fang has won. No, Fang has won one. No, Fang has won 22. Yeah, and now, hopefully, maybe, my fingers are crossed. What has just happened here? Liam? Dave Stedman is sleeping. RB versus 2J. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we missed the start on that, and so did everyone else by the looks. But Liam Burke has shot off. Dave Stedman was near caught sleeping. He's caught back up now. Where is his car? Somewhere in that smoke cloud as they now transition up onto the wall. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, look at Liam Burke picking another gear as he runs around the wall. This is great drifting out here. Put it on a show, the Valvoline D1NZ Pro Drifters. <laughs> what has gone on there though? Dave Stedman was sleeping. Huge mistake there with Liam Berg. Sort of held uh, Dave Stedman up and nearly got caught out. But anyway, they gather it back up. Liam Berg really laid down a great lead run. Apart from the little mistake coming through the centre section, Dave Stedman did a great job gathering it back up. Also, a bit of a correction, but that's all right as they now send it back up onto the wall side and uh, finish that first run, but that was, uh, that was a different one. Like, what were we looking at? And I just, all of a sudden, they were already halfway down the track. Dave Stedman needs to pump it 110%. 110. Liam Burke. 110. 110. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to see 110%. Dave's windscreen's fogging up. Maybe you got some anti fog. Here we go, the second part of the battle out here with Dave Smith Stedman leading out the animal, Liam Berg. And there it is. Huge understeer by Dave Stedman. Massive understeer. Drops the car right back down. No, Dave Stedman Oh, he shut down and got out of there. Liam Burke drops a wheel. And how quick was Dave to get out of there? Now, wow. Now, of course, Dave was in the lead position. Because he bailed out, he, Liam actually doesn't need to complete the run. Of course, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But he'll want to because that's sick right now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Look how badass that is. Liam Burke putting a show on. What a shame that is for Dave Stedman. Something went wrong. I, re I feel like he was uh, he was losing some fluid fairly heavily, eh? Hey? But here's the entry here. Massive understeer. Look at it right now. Huge understeer. It was like he was down on power. He was he was down he was down on power, or the thing was in limp mode, or something along the lines. But not what we want to see. Steve, you're over here writing notes. You feel like you're, you know, you're it's critiquing cool. what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Cole said this. Cole said that. <laughs> just, just, uh, just scripted, just scripted. We don't it's run all scripted. smoke and mirrors. We don't run scripted. We, uh, we run off the cuff here, Steve. Valvoline. That was scripted. <laughs> oh, here we go. Good friend. Jordan Joyce, great driver, been driving really well this weekend, love his style, just so aggressive. Absolutely, of course in the Elite Performance Stock Street, 750 horsepower, 2 JZ, it's a Nissan Silvia S14 out of Auckland, it's Jordan Joyce. Now who's Jordan going up against, it's going to be on the right hand side of the tree, and oh he's supposed to be going up against David Hunter. So we've been told David Hunter's out. So is he taking a, oh, I guess he's taking a buy run. Look, my mum just texted me and said, I can hear you. So obviously the Sky Sport and KO and uh, which are the other ones? Every, uh, five, uh, Fox, Sport, Fox Sport, KO, of course Sky Sport and uh, they simulcast through other, uh, other areas around the Australasia, the Pacific Islands. Yeah, so they can Bonnet's hear up. us out there. Oh no. Why is Michael Bond there? Because he works on the cars. Hard. Yeah, but you just use the word works. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does a lot behind the scenes. 
Oh, look, another great champion. So here we go. Jordan Joyce getting a bit of a bye run, ladies and gentlemen. Soak this up. He's going to have a good bit of fun out there. Getting comfortable in the car. Hasn't driven for a little bit. Pushes the car right out onto the outside of the teardrop there. Look at the smoke that is going on in the stadium. Jordan Joyce putting a, a show on for you, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. The Elite S14 running the wall right around the outside. He qualified at 10th place. I reckon that was a 5th place qualifying run. That was a good place. That was a good run. Hey, look, another good person. Filthy Phil Sutherland. What a man. A legend. That oh, man is. Go filthy. He's, uh, he's watching at home. Missing it, I bet. He had a great R34 skyline with an insane, insane 2J. I don't know why I said that, because then never insane, but his one was, I really liked that. Great bloke, such a good heart. You know what, when you think about it, we've had so many. We can, um, uh, what was I going to say, Steve? I just lost my train of thought. You oh, I was going to say, we've had so many awesome people, right? So we did that 20 year parade. Kurt Whitaker, yes. Legion. Love that dude, so cool. Carl Ruderman. Man, when I first started, that dude was what I used to now call Darren. He was just a surgeon, so just... I don't know what the word is actually. This is where it's bad with my useless words of big words. But he was just so technical in his driving, drove so well. Um, I remember Justin Rude when I first started going up to him, you know, he's the godfather as they used to call, uh, started the uh, D1NZ way back in the day. And uh, you know, I actually went up to him and was like, man, can you just watch me to see if I'm like good enough? Like, wow. I'm real keen to be in the D1NZ, but like, you know, I don't know if I'm good enough yet. So, crazy, you know. I remember Fanger Dan as well. They called it, uh, this was in the, uh, Still Vodka series, you know, Talpo, the sleepy dog, lies there awake. So, uh, it was crack up. Um, all the all the memories of uh, seeing these guys again. Jarius, you know, so I never actually got to drive against Jarius. You know what, something else, just to interrupt you, we didn't actually have a result from the last battle. All right, let's have a look and see what the uh, what the result is. Okay, this is Liam Burke oh. versus Dave Steadman. One, oh. two, three, Liam Burke takes the win against Dave Steadman. I, All right. I guess we probably already knew that. Yeah, I, th I thought it was self-explanatory, but yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. Here we go, Kurt Blackie, real good local driver against Connor Halligan here. A new up-and-comer, both can drive it so, so well. Well, we'll have a look and see what happens in this battle here. We've got Kurt Blackie, what's going on here? Window net, no. Something's going on. Let's get, give us a thumbs up anyway. Colab Digital Gas Tech Services. It's an LS3 700 horsepower Toyota GT86. He's going to go in and be going up against Connor Halligan out of Topo. Then the Jason Overs Builders, McKinstry Roofing, Henson and Murray. 1.5 JC powered Nissan S14. Both about similar sort of horsepower, around 650 to 700. And as the higher qualifier, Connor Halligan will set the pace to start. Oh no, Connor's gone deep into the wall. Look at the massive correction. Get this foot on it though. They come through, get ready to switch, and they'll head down into the teardrop. How far up can he go? Great drive by Connor Halligan. Look at him already. Oh, pushed, oh, pushed really wide there. Kurt now needs to transition nicely. Drive through that smoke. Hard on the throttle, Kurt Blackie. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. What a last part of the section. The boys are putting a show on. But Connor Halligan, big mistake there, going deep into the wall. You've always got to think, right, Steve, if that concrete wall wasn't there, where would he go? Way off track. track. Off track. So you got to look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Connor comes in here, nice, right in the wall, and then bang. Big correction through there. So he would have gone way off line through that outside zone there, but really, really good to see by both of these drivers right now. Well, here we see the uh, the move back up onto the wall again. A nice job by both drivers. It's that shallower angle, of course, it's going to allow a driver to catch up, but that's where he wants to be, and it's getting right on the door. Not too much movement. It's all about holding it. 
holding the same arc the whole way around. A smooth job in the chase position by Kurt Blackie. Another strong drive, but uh, is that touch with the wall going to cost Connor Halligan? It's now time to return serve. Wolfie heads back out. Of course, Wolfie being <coughs> Kurt Blackie. He qualified in 19th position. Connor Halligan qualifying in third. That's to go up and take on the winner of the next battle, which will be Russell Beer versus Taylor James. They get ready to be launched down the straight here at Mercury Bay Park Stadium. This is the grand final of the Valvoline D1NZ. Goes down to the hands of launch Master Willie. You'll see the ref start to rise on the screen. And Willie says it is time to go. We see the red lights and they'll start to build. There we, there's one, there's two, there's three. We go green and we accelerate off the line. Kurt Blackie leads out. Connor Halligan and Chase. Here we go, Kurt Blackie. Big entry into the section here. A lot of left foot brake, trying to settle the car, get it up a bit higher than where he is. Really low down on the sweeper there was Kurt Blackie. Bit more grip than probably what he thought, but just about tipping it off the teardrop there, Steve. Oh, a great drive though, as he heads back up the wall. How far up the wall is he gonna go? All the way, big tap. And that has caused the, yeah, he's blowing the right rear tire. Now he's blowing the guards off. Holy, holy, <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh wow. my gosh, that's how you blow wow. the guards off a car, isn't it? Wow, if you wanted to see something epic, that was it. That looked like the softest touch on the wall. But I guess we've got to think, right? These GD86s don't have a rear, rear end on them. Of course. You know, like my 34, I could put that thing into the wall like 800 mils. And, you did. And, 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 <laughs> and drive out. And still drive out. But look at this boy, Kurt Blackie. Comes through the section here, got a lot of pace. Look at the gap he pulls on Connor Halligan and just bam, sets it in the wall and that's it. Blew the tyre, stayed in it on my dad. Oh my gosh. Wow. Hold. Oh. That's a way to say, look, I tried my best. So he's destroyed the uh, the rim? Right, which is he, the, he destroyed a whole lot. Just So, like, it's literally decimated the rear, uh, the rim, the right rear tyre, and the rim itself. You can see just... Probably need to get the sweeper out. <laughs> oh, it looks like we might have a decision. Oh, Do you yeah. think Connor won? Well, no, I think there's a chance it could. Might Connor have. made a lot of mistakes, I have to say. Was his like, mistakes as oh big as that one? Oh my god. Look, that, that was once a uh, beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there's a mahi to go. Come check this out. This Look at this. Wheel. Come and check this out to the viewers. They're going through and uh, getting everything <laughs> cleaned up. It's Connor Halligan. I don't know if they've told me he's a winner, but Connor. It's good. Well drove it, driven out. Let's have a look at the results now. Will it be uh, left for Connor Halligan or right for Connor Halligan? One, two, three, loading. No need to load. Connor takes the win. He'll get the win. And he's going to go through and take on who? The winner of Russell Beer versus Taylor. Uh, how about that? Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but I saw his bloody wheel hanging off, suspension. Who knows, but that was pretty crazy. No touch, no nothing? No, no, I managed to just keep it behind him and... Um, yeah, it didn't go into him, luckily, but yeah. Just quickly, were you a bit worried about... Did you touch the wall on your lead? Yes, I did. I did. I hit it pretty hard, actually. It's a little bit slipperier than that like practice we just had before, so... Yeah, I come a little bit hot, and um, yeah, definitely, I think the back of my car's probably look a little bit average. <laughs> You're alive, mate. You're alive. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. We'll go again. Okay, there. Connor Halligan goes again in the grand finale of Valvoline D1NZ. There is more to come. Carnage in the concrete jungle, baby.
Elton John once said Saturday night's a great night for fighting. Well, when you take a look at uh, Kurt Blackie's car after this run, you'll understand it looks like Wolfie's been in a bit of a fight. A little bit of a clean-up going on, but have a look at the run. Well, let's have a look at the replay. Ripco replay. What happened here for Kurt Blackie versus Connor Halligan? Blackie running that midline up through the wall. You'll see him make his way back down into the teardrop section. Everything's smooth sailing but it's about to turn pretty damn pear-shaped for him. Runs the midline, starts to lift up, and you'll start to dime it off the turn, bring the nose down, hits his clips. Then all of a sudden, what happens here? He comes on up the track, and then bang. Kurt Blackie, just like Pink Floyd, has a hit with the wall. All of a sudden, off flies every aspect of that 86, and uh, decimates the rear end of his car. Looking very pretty, no longer. So we get told, you better slow down, you better stop, as we realise that uh, you've got no rear tyre because it's shattered. Just like your hopes of winning this round, but there's always next season. Kurt Blackie, bit of mahi to do, bro, but uh, you'll be back as we get ready for our next battle. And this one here is another huge battle. Well, it is Russell Veer. He returns for the grand finale, going up against Taylor James. The Napa Auto Parts Ryko 24-7 Mimico. 180, it is 13B versus what? No doubt a 2J for Russell Veer. Russell Veer, the higher qualifier. Veer qualifying in sixth position. Taylor James, a forgettable qual um, qualifying result. Wow. Here we go, Steve. The next part, this is a championship implications right now. Taylor James in a borrowed car up against Russell there, tipping it in as he comes off the wall through this midsection. Taylor James, one, two, drops the wheel through the teardrop. Needed to catch back up here. Now he's, wow, holds that 180 right there. Now as he now needs to transition nicely. Back up onto the wall, does Taylor James, but look at Russell there. I can run the wall if you can. Check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Both in borrowed cars. Wow, that's cool to see. So cool to see. Let's check out the Repco replay here. Look at this, nice smooth entry here. Taylor James, a bit lower than it probably uh, would like to be. Look at this car sort of bucking around there, getting caught up on the uh, <coughs> center section through them in there, and then bang, one, two, wheels off. Does Taylor James, as he comes into the teardrop, really trying to slow that car and just, wow, rotates a massive angle on, but gathers it back up as Russell Veer now pushes, look at him, nice and high, up on that wall. A great lead run there is Russell Veer, with Taylor James just trying to hold on to things, really. Wow. Now remember ladies and gentlemen, this man here on the right hand side of your screen, he's got a shot at this championship. Yes he certainly does, Taylor James, central equipment movers of course, normally pro wear on the side, Bellino tyres and Roundwood New Zealand, and he already starts by gapping, look at there! What? What just happened he do that? A couple of corrections, I think Taylor a little bit off his line, maybe a wheel off. This might be another one of those ones that comes down to who made the most mistakes. Oh, without a doubt, Steve. Like, how did Russell Veer catch up so quickly? Like, massive transition there by Russell Veer to really close up the proximity. Look at him. Wow, big shunt there on the wheel with Russell Veer. Has and he just, just done Taylor the biggest favour out? That is a straight line. That is a zero score. Wow. I'm going to go back to the first run. Ah, that's, that's, done. that's all she wrote right there. He just gave Taylor James the win. Because Taylor didn't zero out. Taylor didn't zero out. Ugly run, but... Look at that by Russell Veer. It's like he just puts the jet burners on. Came out of nowhere. Transitioned through the centre section. But yeah, a few mistakes there by Taylor James. But Russell Veer coming back right now. Watch him come back through the centre section here. Transitions way early. Right up on the inside. Cutting it to get that proximity. And then just doesn't match the angle. Taylor had bang. Contact there already. Taylor stays in it. But Russell shuts it down and uh, hands the victory. I, I call to uh, Taylor James on that one. Well, I think they will have a result. Wow, that's 
you know. Still waiting for the judges. I was just talking to Danum about this. We? I think we're still waiting for the judges to make a decision. Right. Here we go. They've come through. Who is it? One, two, three. Taylor James gets the win. Wow. You're uh, having a... <laughs> big breath, mate. You're having a hell of a weekend. Uh, how's the car feel? It actually feels pretty good. Um, I think we're taking a little bit too much grip out of it then, to be honest. Um, I just couldn't keep up on the line I wanted to with Russell, but I'm not sure what he done in his chase. It must have been something pretty bad or whatever, because, um, yeah, my chase wasn't the best, but absolutely wrapped to get the win. And um, can't thank the DSR guys enough, my crew, everyone. It's, yeah, it's been massive. Can't thank them enough. But do you dare to dream that you can go all the way? Oh, who knows, but yeah, I'll give it a hell of a try. Good man. And there he goes, Taylor James. All right, we're ready for our next battle. We're just talking about that, Steve, you, you know, like, Kudos to the man jumping in that car and doing so well. It's, it, it really guts you. I, I've had it before where, you know, engine failure. He'd been driving so well. He's really starting to get comfortable in that uh, S14 of his. And, uh, you know, really starting to work those Felinos really, really well. And then to have an engine failure at the final round where you've got, uh, you know, a real good shot at the championship. You know, it's uh, kudos to that, that team and, and obviously Taylor as well to keep his head high and uh, keep pushing hard to, um, you know, strive on. Well, Cole, it is the grade eight. It is the top eight, the top eight for the grand finale. Adam Davies will go up against Nico Reed. No, it's not the same car. It's a different one. He's greedy and has two. The other one's campaigned today by Taylor James. Alex Pelea will go up against Cody Pullenbury. Liam Burke will go up against Jordan Joyce and Connor Halligan. Takes on Taylor James. That's the top eight. As a higher qualified, Nico Reed will line up in the lead position for this battle. He finished in ninth place in qualifying. Adam Davies in 16th side by side they go and qualify very well did he look at the focus he is focused look at him he just looks over Chebro let's do this <laughs> love it here we go Steve right us through this next battle well Nico Reed the people's champion kicks them into life getting the tunny far up right up by the wall and he's he actually sucks Adam Davies back into it as well. You can see the Tanifa flapping around and behind. Adam Davies again trying to close up the gap as they head down into the teardrop. Yeah, great bit of driving by Nico Reed, grabbing the car, obviously connecting with the wall pretty heavily. Adam Davies now really needing to hold it. It's probably going to have a bit of an advantage as Nico's been pushing real high. Look at the spark from Nico Reed running the wall. What a drive from him. And Adam Davies in the chase there, leaving a good gap. I would say a safe gap, uh, just because you don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes those cars can get hooked up, but let's check out the Repco, Repco replay here. Nico Reed initiates and then just boom. Does make him correct a little bit and he gathers it back up. He actually runs the wall pretty hard on that entry through there. But look at this by Adam Davies. Closes the gap right back up. Being probably a smart drive on this, not getting too close to Nico Reed. Uh, where he's going to get the door closed on him and really have nowhere to go. And then watch this from Nico Reed, ladies and gentlemen. I'll put my car on the wall all day long. That's why he is called the People's Champion, because that man knows how to put a show on. He certainly does. Nico Reed, Mr. NRD, Nick's behind the wheel. Of the Tanifa. The mighty Tanifa. 20 years, D1NZ. The nameplate, celebrating 20 years of drifting. We've seen the best of the best out there, including Cole Armstrong, because he's one of them. Yeah, way back when, way back when. Well, second half of the battle time now for the Napa Auto Parts. Riker 24-7, Mimico. Rotary. Look at that. No rear tail lights, no rear bumper, no front bumper. That's how you do it. That is definitely how you do it. Titus Transport on the side of Nico's car. Silence clothing. And of course, Putty and Allen representing four and Rotary. 
Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, from Nico Reed. Getting right up on the tour of Adam Davies. Adam really low on the sweeper here, needing to be a lot higher as they transition. A wee wheel drop there by Nico Reed as they come into the teardrop. Nico wanting to close the door to get right up on the door of Adam Davies. Now as they transition into the centre section, Nico really low but crows in the door. Look at this by Nico Reed, ladies and gentlemen. What a battle we have here to finish off. Woo! Come on, Nico. That they is have... what oh. we want to see. <laughs> I didn't expect to see Adam Davies, the first one to get the hand out there. I really thought it would be Nico. Absolutely love that. Let's check this out on the Repco replay. Nico Reed showing us from the south side how it's done. Great lead there by Adam Davies. Just a little bit shallow in my eyes <coughs> up on the bank, but gathers it back up through the teardrop. Now look at the smart driving here by Nico Reed. Real short line. Transitions nicely and does a good job to get the car back up on the wall. Just stay committed. Look at that. I'm on your door. Hey, buddy. What a drive there by Nico Reed and Adam Davies. So good to see. What are we in? The top eight now? We're looking at the top eight for a spot on the top four. What a drive. What a hats off. I'm clapping for those two boys. That was such a good drive there. Lads, if you can hear me now. Big ups, what a drive, I love that. Well, judges decision and straight away Adam Davies takes the next step up. Adam Davies. Adam Davies, quite a little bit of a surprise around the, the, the traps about that one, but well done, bud. Oh man, he did so well to keep it off the wall. He, he tapped the wall and was heading for it and he just got his foot back up again and he was into it. So I, was pretty, I think I was pretty lucky he did that, otherwise he was all over me, eh? So uh, awesome, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to go to top four home, home round, so. Can't be any better. Keep it going. Let's talk to Nico because he that was one hell of a chase. That was a chase from hell. Man, they yeah, they call the entertainer, man, and that that chase. My God, you're almost jumping into the rear, the front seat with him on the way into the front straight. Nah, definitely. Um, Steve, we you know we're here to chase, and um, this weekend is um, we'll be pushing really hard, and yeah, like I said, bring on the next battle. All right, pal. Well done. Bring on the next battle, all right. What is the next battle? It will be Alex Palieva versus Cody Pullenbury. Alex Pallier, of course, the Jays Racing Talk Performance 2 litre. It's an F20C, I think it's 680 horsepower. It's a Honda S2000, year 2000 S2000 out of Christchurch. I always tease him for being a bit of a lawnmower. Drift in a Honda. So our only Honda in the D1NZ. And it's lined up. JS Racing. And he'll be going up against Cody Pullenbury. Pullenbury in the CK Earthworks. 700 plus horsepower to JZ. Nissan Silvia. Oh. So it uh, looks like we're getting ready. There's a lot of chatter in the background here and uh, lots of things happening in race control. I think they're, uh, they're looking at... I hear they're considering putting some cars out that uh, have already been knocked out but oh. possibly didn't turn up. Do you know what? What's that? I nearly had the opportunity but I've drunk too much water and they won't allow me to get out on the track for safety reasons. <laughs> Check uh, out what the is pump. in the water, yeah. The, the pump bottle well, is going down. That's what we've both been drinking. We have indeed, you know. It's well, that's all I drink. Me too. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Me too. Um, my apologies, Cole. Um, water private, is... A private number is ringing me. Answer it. Nah. But <laughs> I see bank. Banks. This is kind of like a blow though. Terrible one, but oh, this is going to be a good battle. Alex Flair has been driving really, really well in that little nimble car. Well, let's see how he goes, Mr. Alex Pallier and the Honda, the 2000 S2000. Creepin's already creepy. Cody Pullenbury on the left hand side, Alex Pallier on the right. Alex leading out as a high qualifier. Look at that entry, nice and smooth by both of those drivers. Alex Pallier running the wall as well. Everyone is jacked up and they are getting into it tonight. It is party time. Alex, we had a little wheel drop there, but 
Cody Pullenbury doing a good job just sitting off the back side of that little S2000 now as they transition back up onto the wall. A little bit of left foot brake, but Payard back on the gas again. Look how close to the wall he is. That. Oh, they turn it on for Bay Park and they never stop. They do indeed. I hope everyone out there is uh, enjoying this as much as we are up in the commentary box. Let's check out the Repco replay. Alex Blair, oh, bit of a shunt there. I actually didn't see that. He really put him offline a little bit uh, on the sweeper where he collected the wall pretty hard. So, Cody Pullenbury doing a good job sitting back just enough. Tight line through here as they exit the teardrop and head back up onto the wall here. And look at this by Alex Blair. Smooth, right up on the wall there. Great set of driving. Wow. Like seeing that from both those guys. Well, he's got the ground effects going on. JS Racing Talk performance out of Christchurch. He's come up to the North Island and battled his way round after round. Great to have Alex Blair as part of the D1NZ. Cody Pullenbury, it's your turn to lead the way. It was a sick lead run in the first half of their battle. What could Cody do this time? Look at Alex Blair. Alex right on the bumper they come through to switch almost runs himself out of room but no and then allows the car to drift back up onto that qualifying line they come through and switch up to the wall we go sparks flying out of the back end of that Sylvia Cody pulling Barry we know he loves it on the hard on the gas ripping off the bumpers that is a great bit of driving by both those guys Oh, it is excitement all over the show today. Let's have a look at the replay thanks to Repco. Yeah, what an entry there by Cody Pollenbury. A little bit low on the bank, but gets right back up there. And look at that. Alex Pelaire follows suit two. Transitions the car nicely into the teardrop. Look at that by Alex Pelaire. Early, early transition. A little bit of a wobble as he came into the teardrop there. Nothing too crazy. But look at this from Cody Pollenbury. Did you see the sparks coming off the back of the car as he squats through the midsection? Cody Pullenbury, keen to take a win like his younger brother did. Well, we've got a result. Let's see who is it going to be. Alex Pullier, Cody Pullenbury, three strikes to Pullenbury. He's going through. Okay, let's stop this talk of retirement because your brother won the round of pros, but maybe you're going to give this one a nudge, eh? No, yeah, I hope so. I knew that was a quick car, so I was just trying to stay with him off the line. And, um, yeah. No, Can you believe the battles we're seeing tonight? I know, but it's good to be back. Let's go. Good to have you back, mate. Let's go and talk to Alex Perlia. Oh, bit of a damage there. Yep. All right. Close, man. Close. You've, you've had such a good season. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's been progressively getting better and better. I made a few mistakes there, um, but Cody pulled on a wicked lead. Uh, I could hear him right next to me, and like I said before, this is why I'm here. Do cool battles with wicked drivers and no one better than Cody. Uh, hope he goes all the way. Are we going to see you next year? I am trying my absolute hardest to be back next year. That was always the goal. Uh, so any sponsors out there, hit me up. <laughs> you do that, man. You do. I'd love to see you back next year. Yeah, I'm doing my best, for sure, for sure. Thank you so much for having me, guys. We'll see you next year. Well, there he goes. And we'll see you next year. That's what we want to hear. Of course, all these drivers would certainly love a little bit of sponsorship if you want to go up and hear myself and Cole mentioning your name in association with these amazing drivers don't forget to just get in touch get in touch with me and I will find you an incredible driver an incredible driver yeah, yeah but well. Cole Armstrong he's a two times New Zealand drift king only half of what Gaz Wider ever got but still incredible a few people <laughs> going across the track to go and have a look yeah. at the nice Brother. There's a bit of debris somewhere on the track. Is there? Well, there's cars been running the wall flat out. Good to see over all the crowd out there still here enjoying this atmosphere tonight. These drivers are putting on one great show for you out there for the grand final here, Steve. They certainly are. They have uh, been putting on, I mean, this is the best driving I've seen in a long, long time. D1NZ, Bay Park. 
I mean, we used to get this sort of thing at Pukekawe, and then we discovered this little track in Tauranga. I know, and it's such a massive amount of work, but it's well worth it. And this here is our, looks to be our next battle up. Liam Burke, returning champion, come back for one round. And uh, the man himself, Jordan Joyce. Now, of course, there's going to be fireworks on and off tonight, the track. So the people that are hanging around, Tauranga's biggest fireworks display, thanks to the team at Pyro Company Fireworks. And when I say the biggest, I mean the biggest in over a decade. Why? Because here at Bay Park, they can only send the fireworks up to a certain height because the whole place has a roof on it. You can't see it past 90 metres. So they've worked out another way of sending it up and blowing these things up and over to somewhere close to 200 metres. CAA said, yeah, we're not landing any planes in the airport nearby anytime soon. You better light the sky up and we'll be doing that. So, of course, for the people that are watching at home, maybe we'll show you some crackers. For the people that are here at the track, make sure you stay ar stay around and check it out. Triple six on the door. This looks like, is that the animal? Yes, it's Liam Burke. It is indeed. Good to see. Good to see him come back. And in the car, just like... What has it just been sitting in one piece? Because I tell you right now, my car's definitely sitting in like a hundred pieces. Oh, I can't believe that for a second. You always had your car immaculately presented to the race <laughs> at all times. I can tell you right now, there's probably one or two guys that are here actually right now that'll tell you it took a lot of cable ties to get it back to uh, at least look like a car. No, Avon would never say that. He's never been more of a prouder uh, crew man than he was for you. Yeah, Avon, uh, I think is actually here tonight still. He uh, is down in the corporate box. Alan, however, probably would say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan's here as well. Well, hopefully Alan's still here. I know uh, Andrew's uh, watching back home with his family. Oh, yeah. Why is not Andrew not here? Oh, he's got his family back home, you know. They, they've had Ripper Rugby get, today. Oh, get a pass out. No, he's, got, he's a rugby coach, Andrew is. Ripper Rugby. I didn't Mans realize that Hugh, he's in yeah, they're out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mans and Hugh, they might be watching as well, the young fellas. You've got to say that part of the country definitely built. Oh, look at that. Mans won as well. And Te Aumuru, man, and a that's young little. From, eh? Yep, yep, yep. You're from Te Aumuru, Te Aumuru. I'm from yep. Te I think uh, old mate uh, the Clive, eh? he's from Tukuroa. Yeah, yes, actually. I think my mum and dad uh, know them from back in school days. Or his brother. I think Stephen's got a. I didn't realize uh, your parents were that old. Yeah, they're they're up there. But great, they're great, you know. They're great, but yeah, no, it's good to good to have uh, the the fellow crew still still watching and uh, being a part of this great series that we have here. Well, let's have a look and see what's going to happen now as the elite performance Sylvia of Jordan Joyce takes on the animal Liam Burke, getting straight up to the top shelf. Yeah, look at that. The animal just really caught Jordan Joyce off guard there. Jordan tried to keep up with him and transition early. Wow, big contact there by Jordan Joyce. Look, Shuts it down. But Liam Burke doesn't. He's like, and what? And what? <laughs> That's why he's called the animal. He will stay in it and keep going. But look at Jordan Joyce as well. Right back in it. Trying to catch back up. Man, my hat goes off to Liam Burke. You know, he's a protege of one Mr. Fanger, Dan Woolhouse. You tap Fanger, and he kind of just laughs you off and keeps his foot buried. He's clearly said to Liam, if I ever see you not doing the same thing. Let's have a look at this replay. You know, Jordan Joyce tried to jump him and obviously be right with him, and you, you, you can't do that here. You just have to leave with the car and sit side by side. Transitions through that. Look, Jordan just on a way sharper line through there, and bang, couldn't slow the car down. Hit the side of uh, Liam Burke there, having a big shunt, shut it down. Liam Burke stays in it, pulls away. There's going uh, to be conversation at the after party. What for? Uh, I think it's going to be chatting. He's going to be like, bro, I hit you and you did nothing, but he's like... Stayed in it. It's some top notch. But yeah, watch this. So it's a detail zone right now. Liam Burke touched the brake, which you're allowed to do. Jordan Joyce, boom, Just didn't hit the brake hard enough. Shame to see, because Jordan Joyce was driving really, really well. So it looks like there might be a quick five minute being, well, doesn't mean if it's fast or slow, it's a five minute being called. Who's called five minute? Jordan Joyce is wanting to check out yeah, the- Yeah, uh, Jordan has. So Jordan Joyce has called five minutes. 
Tony's going to have to do some running if he's going to get out there. He's in the second uh, the second pit area. Great thing that they've done in the pits this uh, this weekend, giving the fans the ability to go up and see all of their favourite drivers up close and personal with actually well, whilst ensuring the, the safety of everybody in that area. They have. They've done a great, great setup this year. Big uh, shout like out to WC Paul Fallon, Keith and the team. Yep. Really set it up, eh? I mean, this team does a lot, such as uh, Jack's Ridge when it comes to the Rally of New Zealand, uh, Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship, their 37 rounds they did this summer. They do it all, and they do a great job of it. They learn a lot, and they're able to bring it in. So here comes Kenny, Kenny Ruddle from Oversteer TV, the original Silver Bullet production. That's the man I thanked earlier on. This man here has made more TV for the D1NZ than any other human on the face of the earth with 50 million views across his two pages. Now, he's just the man who looks after the drivers and he's going to walk up, he's going to plonk a piece of whatever on the top of that roof and say, here's your five minutes, it starts now. 50 million views. 50 million views. It's, I hope he's got a YouTube account because you've been getting right. some good kickbacks on that. Yeah, Silver Bullet Productions, which was SPBNZ, that was his first one, 38 million or uh, 32 million views on that one and then of course oversteer tv with 18 million views really that's a real deal there's so much more than i could ever dream of. <laughs> yeah well, that's true <laughs> thank you Carl. no worries well while they're out doing their thing taylor james is coming out taylor versus connor halligan Ooh, tough battle. So Taylor Janes, of course, is in the uh, Pro Wear, Valino Tired, Roundwood, New Zealand, and then, of course, all Adam sponsors, which is Napa Auto Parts, Mimico, Ryko 24-7, and Yale. All these sponsors going up against the Jason Otis Builders. J-O-B, 1.5 J-Z. It is Topaws, Connor Halligan. Yeah, look at Connor Halligan, just setting the bar high straight away, right up on the wall. Really leaving Taylor behind, it's actually uh, blowing me away right here, but look at this, Connor Halligan. This is how it's done, my friend, with my car, laying it down as they now transition nicely right out of, back up onto the wall. Connor Halligan being sensible this time, really not hitting the car too hard into the wall, but throwing, throwing some sparks. sparks off, yeah. But look at that, just Taylor James could not keep up. Well, let's have a look at the Repco replay. And it wasn't because Connor was running a shallow line, he was up on the wall. Yeah, he was not. That was a great lead run right there by Connor Halligan. Initially entered straight up on the high line, on the wall, into the teardrop, just teetering on the edge of that concrete there, Steve. Transitions nicely. Look at the gap he just pulls on Taylor, who's right down on the low, trying to catch back up. Bam, bang, bang. Sparks are flying. Connor Halligan, he is here to mix things up tonight. Well, they'll go through to the second half of the battle, and it will be Taylor James' turn to lead out. Taylor, you might have some work to do. Of course, this man here still chasing a championship. How far can he go? Connor Halligan, the 919. What an entry there by uh, Taylor James in that borrowed 180, getting the feel of it, trying to get the car up on the wall there. Connor Halligan closing the door in right up on the inside here as they now transition. Big wheel drop by Connor Halligan. He's up. Taylor James has just been giving it again. Oh, wow, we are you kidding me? Connor Halligan had just thrown away this battle by going off track. Wow, the gods are on Taylor's side tonight. Cause that was a, he just got thrown a leaf right then. Throwing a leaf or a bone? Throwing a bone. Connor Halligan straight off. Let's check this out, Repco replay. Nice entry there by Taylor James, still a bit low. Trying to get that car back up onto the wall but look at that Connor Halligan right there with them putting the pressure on as they transition through here now watch this Connor gets straight back on throttle and just bam over rotates and just gets lost wow wow right just drives away with it holds on to it 
I don't want to say it, but I talked about this tonight with Dana. It can happen so quickly. Look at that. Taylor James is now in the top eight. He's now in the top four. He's, yeah, sorry. He's now in the top four. He's got two to go. There's going to be somebody that is going to be number crunching hard right now. Is there a logistical chance? Is there a mathematical chance that if he goes all the way, that he can still be? What? <laughs> Taylor James gets the win. Wow, Stephen. Let's uh, let's see what Taylor's got to say after that. Uh, someone's smiling on you tonight. Uh, your, your chase wasn't flash, but your lead was all right, and then. Connor just lost it, man. Nah, um, on my chase, I, sort of, I threw it in behind Connor, pulled the handbrake, and I don't know if it's bent the rod in here or what. So um, I tried to use the handbrake. It worked a, a very small smidgen, but yeah, same on my on my lead. I went to um, went to grab the grab the handbrake, and it just wasn't there. I could feel it fighting with the foot brake and stuff, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. But yeah, yeah, I don't know if this car's got a blessing on it or what. But we're very very lucky to get that. <laughs> All right, fingers crossed, buddy. Fingers crossed, you're in the top four. Kind of Halligan. I think many thought after your uh, your lead that you're in good space. What happened? <laughs> yeah, well, my lead wasn't too bad. A um, little bit deeper going, but anyway. The cut back of the car's already gone, so it doesn't matter. Um, I just got a little bit lost in the smoke, just trying to you know stick with them because I knew it had a fast car. Well, it's got the sticky tyres on there, but yeah, I just got a bit lost and overshot that corner. But that's the way it goes. Have you enjoyed D1, man? Oh, heaps. It's, it's massive. Like, there's nothing better for me. Like. Yeah, especially Bay Park, it's the best round. Um, you know. And you've learned a heap, right, this year? Oh, this year has been a massive learning year. Um, coming from Pro Sport last year, yeah, it's been a massive learning year. Um, lots of lessons, um, so we'll take those and come back next year. That's what we want to hear, come back next year. Quickly, who do you want to thank? Yeah, um, got a few sponsors here tonight. Um, Jason Ober's Builders, O27 New Home, they're all here in the crowd, so shout out to them. Um, Henson and Murray Engine Rebuilders, McKinstry Roofing, Engines and Spears, and just, you know, everyone that helps me out, it's, yeah, it's massive and I appreciate it, so thank you. When are you going to take Uncle Daryl for a spin? <laughs> I think he's too scared to jump in the car, to be honest. Yeah, that's why they call him Chuck. That's why they call him Chuck. Yeah, a bit more dangerous than rugby, I think. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Well done. See you next year. Well, we're back out. It is ready to bring out our next battle. Wow, what a mix-up that's uh, that just happened there, Steve. It's one heck of a... It is a uh, one heck of a battle going on. Where? Here. Mercury Bay Park Stadium, the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are getting closer and closer and closer to final time. Last pass coming up, who will that be for? I'm not sure, but I'm sure, Steve, there is some partners we need to thank to uh, <coughs> for, you know, making this event happen. Yeah, of course. There's a huge thank you to everybody that makes this work. Of course, Valvoline, the naming sponsor of the D1NZ for the last few years. Link Engine Management, Dale ITM. There are so many others, of course. We've got Mimico, Rex and the team from Mimico. We say thank you. There are so, so many more. Of course, TTI, Panhead, uh, Sentry Batteries, Repco. They bring us all the broadcasts. Casper Transmissions, they've been around forever, we can't forget those guys, we've just got to make a mention and of course uh, just all of the amazing staff that we have, we've got uh, a whole heap of amazing staff that just uh, work tirelessly round after round after round. There goes the work, there goes the mahi, what is going on here? I don't see the counter on there but I can see Nick saying get on out there, it's time to battle again. So this will be Jordan Joyce. No, it won't be Sean Potros, will it? Jordan Joyce. Yeah, Jordan Joyce. Jordan second, Joyce, second sorry. part of their battle. Versus Liam Burke. The animal's got a big advantage. So we've got Adam Davies going up against Cody Pullenbury. We have Taylor James going up against the winner of this battle here, Liam Burke versus Jordan Joyce. We know that Liam Burke has basically got a 10-0 advantage. So that's Liam, well, you never know. So this is the top eight. This is the last battle of the top eight, the last pass of the top eight, to find ourselves our four drivers. Wow, Steve, it's a mix-up. It is a mix-up. What is going to happen? They must be so far ahead of time. 
It is 8.17 and we're nearly in our top top four. Ready to roll. As we see the guys out there trying to warm those tyres up after a bit of a uh, bit of a uh, bit of contact out there. So Jordan Joyce is making sure everything's good to go. He is going to be pushing really hard and a disadvantage with a 10-0. Who are you going to see soon, Steve? I'm going to see whoever gets crowned a champion. Who's it going to be there? Yeah. Nice. Won't be long. So they're checking to ensure that Jordan Joyce has his safety net and everything up into position. Tony Wilson just doing his thing. And here we go. Jordan Joyce leading out now for the second part of this battle. They throw it in. Liam Burks has got a 10-0 advantage right now. He just needs to hold it together together. But Jordan Joyce is laying down a great lead run here. Trying to force the uh, oh, there's a big over rotation for Jordan Joyce. Hands it off to uh, Liam Burke. And that is going to be enough. Liam goes up and will drift himself back up there. We'll pull up alongside Jordan Joyce and we'll go through into the top four. Who would have imagined that uh, Liam Burke would show up? Now, who is Liam Burke going to go up against? Taylor James. <laughs> Here we go. The crowd pleaser. Yeah, you just watch this here, Jordan Joyce doing a great job here, getting up nice and high on, on the bank, touching that wing just there, and then watch as he rotates through here with a lot of speed, doesn't really hit the brake till late and just bam, over rotates the car, that's all she wrote right then and there. And uh, Liam Burke just finishing that section off. But yeah, watch right here. Touches the brake, gets on throttle. That Bam. For what? Wheel off? Straight line. No. What? Nah. Did a scene him over rotate. I just wanted to do it in slow motion because it looks real cool. Oh, it does. Got to get in there and speed ramp it. Still no result. Should I just tell the judges which button to press? It's okay, press the measure up flooring guy on the right hand side of the screen. See him chatting away? Where? He's talking away, they're, they're having a bit of a corridor. Stock Street elite performers. Jordan Joyce, the president of the former pro sport party, now <laughs> pro party. Liam Burke, one, two, three, he gets the strike through, he's got into the top four. The animal is alive! <laughs> yeah, not the way you want to go out. Jordan's a mean driver. I've, I've watched him come up through pro sport. Um, I was watching that, we could have just had a, a mean battle there. Crazy, I, I just bent my handbrake right at the end there, the, the push rod's been so. We'll go such that, but me, me and one Jordan, um, next time we, we're going to slay it, man. Hey, hey, that's really interesting because the guy you face next, Taylor James, has done the same thing. He's bent his handbrake as well. So what gives, eh? We'll see you in the next round. That's crazy, man. Yeah, no battle with Dave. I wish that could have um, gone a full round. That would have been awesome, man. Awesome. All right, mate. Nice to see you back. Let's go have a talk to Jordan. Yep, not much tread left on the rubber left on those tyres. Oh man, two runs, what gives? Oh man, we had a good time regardless. Uh, losing to Liam is probably the best thing right now because he's not even in the competition. So um, i like to say thanks to everyone that come out to support us, me and Sean. We put it on as best as we can and we're coming back better than strong next year. Um, thanks to D1, you know, even though what happened this weekend, we're still out here having fun. Yep. And that's the main thing, eh? It's a good fun, though, right? Yeah, uh, we'll be back and we'll definitely be coming stronger, that's for sure. That's right. Keep smiling, brother. Right. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, buddy. So there you have it. Surprises all around, and we have a cracking top four. Can Taylor James keep the run going? 
Can he maybe, just maybe, get in front of Frankadan and become a Drift King for the first time? Do not go anywhere. Live from Mercury Bay Park. Straight drop in the chills, I'm talking Taking over pieces and shares A bomb race sky high, check the movement is here, yeah Yeah It's one up, one shot, now the future is yours, go Yeah It's one up, one shot, now the future is yours, go It's one up, one shot Turning dreams into reality In the lab with the formula and chemistry The memories fuck and motivate And make the industry shake We put the bars in the brakes I'm talking one, one chance at best Yes, painting pictures for the culture Keep the brushes fresh Flip the color, work the drama, passion never rests Freedom is our teacher, under pressure Now we bless See I was so go for the go It's one art, one shot Now the future is yours, go Yeah it's one off, one shot, now the future is yours, go! Versus coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the scheme. The true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one. One shot for the kill. The breeze cut freeze up. Straight drop in the chills. I'm talking. Taking over pieces and shares. A ball break sky high. Check the movement is here. Yeah. yeah. It's one off, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Turning dreams into reality In the lab with the formula and chemistry The memories spark and motivate And make the industry shake We put the bars in the place I'm talking one, one chance at best Yes, painting pictures for the culture Keep the brushes fresh Flip the cover, work the drum, a passion never rests Freedom is our teacher, under pressure Now we bless See how we're so good for the go It's one art, one shot Now the future is yours, go Yeah it's one all on one shot, now the future is yours, go! Versus coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the scheme, the true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams. It is cooling down here at Mercury Bay Park, but the most important thing is we're heading into the top four. There are people everywhere around Bay Park tonight. Hey, Bay Park, you ready for the top four? Takes a while, takes a while, we'll try again. Hey, Bay Park, do you want to see the top four? I think amongst all that, it was a yes. It's time for the top four. And it is time, all right, as we get ready for our first battle, which will be on the left-hand side of the tree. We've got Adam Davies facing Cody Pullenbury. Cody Pullenbury, of course, in the CK Earthworks. Two JZ powered Nissan S15. The other is Adam Davies. Adam Davies out of Tauranga in the Napa Auto Parts. Ryko 24-7 Mimico. This is a 20B with close to a 1,000 horsepower in Nissan 186. Can he go all the way? What's the chances that uh, Taylor could go all the way on the other side and we could see a rotary, all rotary final? <sighs> tell you one person that's going to try and stop that. I can tell you two people actually. One of them is Cody Pullenbury. And why? Oh, I thought his car had stopped. Well, he will line up 
side by side. Cody, the higher qualifier. He certainly battled his way. One over Alex Pelier. Also Sean Potros. And Jace Brown, he's a 12th qualifier. Adam Davies qualifying in 16th position. He beat Michael Crawley, Banger Dan, and Nico Reed. Now it's time to face each other. And it'll be Cody Pullenbury who leads the way. Very shallow to start for Cody Pullenbury, but gets up and oh! 20B gets bent. Now Cody needs to hold on to this one here. Dang. That was a tough one. I've seen what Adam was doing right there. There is he, Adam. He was trying to uh, hold things together right where Cody went in deep. Adam did the same and uh, just didn't work out, bro. Damn. Cody, we saying, like, well, where's, where's my... So, of course, this therefore means that, what, we've got a five minute? Uh, yeah, hopefully it's only a tie Adam hasn't had one, has he? Nah, Adam hasn't had one. Let's check out the Repco replay here. Watch this by Cody Pulibari. Big angle there by Adam Davies. Grabs it back and then just grabbed the handbrake. I don't know why he did that. Just needed to stay on throttle, but he, like he wanted to get higher on the wall. And uh, yeah, it just didn't really work out for him on that, that occasion. Well, Cody Pullenbury comes through to finish. A few sparks. He's good at throwing sparks when he gets back up on the wall. A little bit of left foot brake, just settling the car down. Yeah, the car is nice and low there. But there it is there, bam. Suck the back in, suck the front in. Hopefully it hasn't done too much damage and it's pretty sweet, you know, like... He may have been okay, and he's just ridden up the wall enough that it's just bent the uh, tie rod in, and these guys can get it fixed. But massive advantage now for uh, Cody Pullenbury. That's that. How cool is that? Two brothers. Uh, at least now we could say on the podium. Well, they're going to go and have a look through. We can see. Uh, well, Tay's crew. There goes Bob down there. Simon Lee. Looks like Chicken will be around as well. Dave there, or is he already up in the Mimico box? Dave will be there. Okay, they're Take having a look. Over. So they're looking at exactly what you said, the tyre already. Now, if there is a timer, it has started now. Why has it started now? Because they're, they've popped the bonnet to have a look. No, you're allowed to do that for safety reasons. They haven't jacked it up to put it on axle stands. They haven't touched the car uh, with yes. a tool. No tool or anything like that. So they're just assessing the situation. Now they have generally, you obviously can't take the mickey on it and, and take forever but you can definitely take a bit of time just to really make sure things are okay. So one of the things that they'll be looking at is uh, they're looking, they know what tools to get. There goes Rex down there. Rex does know what he's looking at to be fair. <laughs> <gasps> but yeah, Adam Davies might be on the trailer, he might be done. Why'd you get that? Bent the rack, yeah, I'm looking at that. They're not really trying to uh, jump into the car right now. Has it stripped the bolt out of the steering rack? Daryl Turk from EFI and Turbo. Look at that, whole front off. Bit of a bugger right there. Bit of a bugger. Whose phone's that? Uh, Simon's. Hey? Well, hopefully, uh, can we get Stephen MacGyver around there? Stephen, just run around to the pits there, mate, and uh, go check out what Team DSR's up to. I don't know if he can actually get out there with the uh, with we can. microphone. He can get anywhere. Absolutely, but will his microphone work? Oh, I know. Not too sure, actually. It's a really good point, Steve. Jeez, you really set, set the tone, aren't you? <laughs> well, if I started going in-depthly about things called paddles and ensuring that they've got the right amount of uh, RF signal, then it might bamboozle. 
Well, they uh, have now started working on the car. They started looking, so I don't see the five-minute counter, though. Yeah, me either. Where's Kenny? That means they must get all the time in the world. But nobody knows. The camera crew's there. Where is Stephen MacGyver? There he is. Find out what's going on there. Look at that handsome man. What's going on down there, Stephen? <laughs> Just got to double check this, we're all working here, boys. Oh, you can hear me, fantastic. Oh, mate, you're done, right? Uh, yeah, for that for that battle, yeah. The boys are going to try and fix it so I can get out for a third and fourth, but oh, I'm gutted. I just, the guys have been working hard on it, and, and I felt like I was, I was on form today, I, I felt. Qualifying was a bit scratchy, but I don't know. I, I, me and this track, I don't know what it is, but I like to bend my car here. Hey, t tell me about the season though, Look, reflect on the season for Team DSO, who have been so generous in giving Taylor an outside chance, an outside chance of winning this championship. Yeah, look, it's been a bit of up and down for us, but like Dave's had a round win, you know, third place last round and I was fourth, I, I guess I might have to settle for fourth again, I'm not too sure yet, but it's been it's been a good season and I think by the end of it, I think Dave will still come away with third, which is which is awesome, so can't thank the team and sponsors enough, it's just it's been a, been a roller coaster to be fair. To be fair. So. Mate, you're, you're a, a fountain of patience. That's all I can say. It's always good to have you guys in the pit and Valvoline D1NZ. So I'll let you get back to it and uh, let's see if we can get up for that third and fourth battle. Eh? Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, we're back into it. Dave Stedman watching on. There's not a lot of work being done. Well, it can't be if Michael Bond's just standing around, look, doing a lot of chatting. Okay, not a lot what's, of doing. what's Kenny saying? Hopefully we've got a bit of communications there and these guys are going to try and uh, attempt to fix the car. They've, as we understand, they've forfeited the last part of this battle. Or have I made that call way too fast? Nah, they've already jacked it up. There's no five minutes going on. I think it's got some serious damage going on there. Yeah, see, they've, they've, they've bent the steering arm, uh, uh, then, I mean, a lot of control arm, so. Safety first. They will probably uh, call it, and uh, I would say park that car. Oh, guess what? They've got a second car that they can pull the arm off because it's identical. Oh, can they? Who's, which car is that? <laughs> no, they can't. Taylor James is using it. Oh, wow. They keep spares. For, oh, are they both exactly the same in the front? Identical. Identical. The only difference was, was there's different boxes in the May. Yeah. So look at that. Typical Michael Bond doing nothing and the actual driver himself, Adam Davies, in there doing all the work, you know? Yeah. Now, when I said to before that Michael Bond was doing nothing, you said he was a hard working fella. No. <laughs> no, I was joking. I was joking. Oh, Team DSR, one of the most incredible teams that we've got in the D1NZ. These guys will help absolutely everyone they possibly can. They'll even help the series, and without them, I don't know if we would have been out here drifting tonight. Thanks again to Rex Davies and the team from Mimico. Of course, the guys from J-Swap Contractors and the, uh, the team from Fulton Hogan. Do you know who that guy, have we found out his name yet, who was on the posi track, Bobcat? I need to ring Rex. Let me just ring him, because that guy Needs a big shout out and a thank you because that was awesome. Probably wouldn't ring him now. I think he's. Well, what's he doing? He's just standing there. So who's our next? Um, who's our next battle anyway, Steve? Forget these guys. You know, they'll maybe. Well, Liam Burke and Taylor James. Oh, it is. Someone tell Chicken he needs to put his t-shirt down. His motor's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the go. He has forfeited this battle. Yeah, I said that. What do you want? He hasn't forfeited the next. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he's going to be able to battle for third and fourth. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, look, they're going to replace this. If they can fix this. it. This man here, right there on the ground, Daryl Turk. The man that will help out anyone in all situations. Now, he was up late last night with Taylor James and the team down at Dave Stedman's uh, Vehicle Service Centre till 3 a.m. this morning, trying to help get the car up and running. He's now underneath Adam Davies' car. He was over there when um, David Hunter's car wasn't running too well. He has the biggest heart, does uh, Daryl Turk. Some might not say that. Some might not say that. 
But a great man and uh, a very clever man is our Daryl Turk from Airfire and Turbo down in uh, Palmerston North. In Palmy North. Yep. So the five minute bell is basically on. Well, it's not really because they've got time till their battle kicks off, right? But the other thing is, is that he utilises the time you've got. He's had to call it. Why has he had to call it? No, he hasn't. So of course he has. He's, it's, it's on right now. How do you know this? I don't think it is. Because it's the next battle. Look, Steve's quickly scuttering away. He wants to find out if I'm right or he's right. But ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. It is going to be a great final as we come up to the next battle up ahead. Taylor James versus Liam Burke. It is going to be exciting. So get comfy, grab yourself another refreshment. Yeah, yeah. And he hasn't called his five minutes, eh? Nah, see, he hasn't even told you. Oh, no, what I was looking at was far more serious than that. I didn't want to bring it up on television. Why not? I'll talk to you after the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing too serious in this sport. It's all about good fun. And hopefully everyone out there has had a great afternoon here at the uh, Mercury Bay Park Centre. It's been an awesome day. It's been a long day, Steve, I might say. It has been a very, very long day. It certainly has. Here you go, just read this. No, they're underneath there. 100%. No, that's okay. We just don't want to talk about it. Oh, did the people not see that? They, they no, no, went no, no, underneath. We're not gonna, we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to move on to the next battle. Oh, okay. We're going to check and make sure. So, no, 100% I've seen them yeah, go no, underneath. No, no, but we're just not going to talk about it on TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see what the next battle is. It is Liam Burke, the animal, versus Taylor James. The Napa Auto Parts Riker 24-7 Mimico. I'd say on Trias, but that's on uh, Valinos. No, it's, we know it's not Adam Davies right now. This is Taylor Look, James. Look, he's fixed his car. Adam Davies is fit. No, that's Taylor James. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was just going with it on Valinos, which would be the indication that it's not Taylor. I'll tell you who that is. The animal, Liam Burke. Of course, Roundwood New Zealand, one of the many sponsors of Taylor James, along with ProWear and those Valino tyres. Also, Carl Thompson is in the house right now. He's come down from Auckland. Hello to uh, Carl. Hello yep. to Jesse Greenslade. Yep, they're also there. Geordie Cam Cole. Yep, Cam Bank. They're Cam all, Bank, of course. Yep, the uh, Reliable Cartage. They're, uh, he sponsored uh, David Hunter, I think, this weekend. So the lads are all down in the, uh, the corporate box having a great night. That's what I like to hear. All right, well, this is the top four battle. This is the semi-finals, and it is Liam Burke who... <laughs> Liam Burke who's throwing away his... Liam Burke's just thrown it away. What do you mean? Did you not see that? No, I didn't. Taylor James is not even... I thought Taylor James is throwing it away. But Liam Burke is just what? How's he just throwing it away? Did you not see the entrance? No. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Oh, no. What was that? Taylor James is struggling. He's rather put too much grip in the car. <laughs> oh, it's an exciting night out here tonight. The Bay Park Speedway, look at this. Liam Burke, realistically, like you said, Steve, has just thrown that battle away. Put it into the wall. Yeah, I, I, so I don't know. So watch Taylor's car through here, okay, before the yellow light. Uh, sorry, the yellow line, which is now. What's that car do? just did there? Was yeah, it straight? It's like a, well, it doesn't matter. Because you said it was already at 10 0. Yeah, or but now it's 0 0. Oh, look, Taylor's just called five minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's going to come down to half a battle. It's coming down to half a battle. 
Skibbity wop bop. Oh, what do we got? You nearly fell off your seat. At, I almost broke it. A Toyota Ute, Hilux Grey, with the number plate JMM373. Well, I've got no idea what we're talking about this car here because nobody could tell me anything, but there's a registration. It no, needs I'm, to be moved. Is that what it is? It needs to be moved. It is blocking the entrance for all vehicles trying to leave the stadium. All right, so that's uh, some form of Toyota Hilux Ute. I know that the team from Bay Venues have uh, headed down there with, they've got this Manitou, but it's got really bad forks on it. So hopefully that vehicle can move nicely because if those guys move it, oh, it could be ugly. Oh, look, it's a handbrake. You talked about bending a handbrake earlier. Is it the same thing that's happened there? Yeah, possibly. Oh, look, hands off. Hands off. No time has started yet. Look at that. Taylor James has an issue going on right now. Hey, where's Stephen MacGyver? Wasn't he just over there? Can coming, he come coming, back coming, over? Quick coming. run. Here I'm coming. Don't you worry, big boy. Sound like you're puffing. No, no, I'm good, mate. mate. You just worry about me. Time, you know, enjoy being the Drift King. I'll go around the other side and have a chat to Taylor. <laughs> if you remember, of course, Taylor said on his last that he may have bent the uh, handbrake and done something of which uh, Liam Burke said he'd done the same thing as well. So uh, we just watched that first run, and we're thinking he may have uh, blown that first run and not initiating properly, but not for us to decide, the, the judges to look at. Is it the handbrake? Yeah, well, I, I sort of went to enter behind Liam, and I seen him straighten up, so I got out of it initially. Um, but yeah, after that, I, I seen him sort of reinitiate, so I went to, and we thought we'd bled the handbrake and thought it was going to be all right, but now same again, no foot brake and no handbrake, so. Oh great, no brakes and drifting. Yes, no brakes. So, so can you believe how crazy this round has been for you? Oh, absolutely nuts. Like, we actually felt pretty good coming into it. My car, like, you know, had been behaving, um, and we felt, you know, that we could maybe have a shot at it. But, yeah, after that car failure, it sort of put a downer on things for sure. But, um, yeah, Adam um, letting us use this car. She's, um, yeah, see why they call it the unicorn. It's got a blessing on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it, all, if it all comes out the wrong way, right, it, with everything you've done, and you look back on this season, yeah, what will be the overriding thing that you remember? Yeah, oh, there's definitely been ups and downs, but um, yeah, I, I guess last round Manfield, it was a, a very, very make or, make or break point in the season for us. Um, we'd had a couple of rounds earlier on uh, where, like, you know, we'd, we'd, had, we'd had car issues and stuff like that, but um, it's... Keep pumping, mate, keep pumping. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it seems to be um, once more, mate. Pump once more. Uh, yeah, but no, it seems to be all coming together, like yeah, somehow. But yeah, we'll see where we end up. All right, mate, you're a good change. By the way, did I hear you've been invited to pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it? Come on. I'm in the way. I'm getting out of the way. David Hunt out of the way. Such a bully. Such an absolute bully. Okay, we're gonna go find Liam Burke. Somewhere over there. Don't follow us, it won't be a good look. Wow, this has just got oh, there. real hectic down there, hasn't it, Stephen? Holy. It is all a go. Wow, look at those two cars right there, Stephen. Can you see that? Look at that green, badass no, S13 right I can't there. I can't see anything because I'm running past Fang and Ann and finding another pit. So you uh, just notice the uh, evenness of the breathing. Oh, yeah, you look fit, mate. <laughs> Just, oh, someone's trying to high-five me, Gee, high, high five the old guy. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, this Look at you, really doing work. No, it's on the oh other my... side. Did you not know that? How far over? How far over? Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, you are kidding me, right? So this is You're now, on the wrong line. So now this is the comedy section of Velvet in 2023. There's Jace Brown. I could sneak through that pit. Okay. This, yeah, is, this is a bit like Martin Brundle. Good. Oh, just watch out for that uh, microphone. It does like oh, to oh. fail at about that point there. Oh, hang on. Where is he? There he is. There he is. Found him. Found him. Found him. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can still hear you, mate. Just. It keeps cutting out. Oh, just I, stop well, moving. I, well, if you'd stop talking, maybe it won't cut out. <laughs> <laughs> just come over here so in, in some light. Okay, Annie Marl. <laughs> What's going on? Shall we have a look? Oh. oh. Okay. He explains it. You know I'm going to go walk. So our handbrakes are uh, fully, fully cocked. So, so, better, so, better, 
need to replace the push rod in it. So are you going to call a five? Yeah, we're going to have to. Okay. We really need a, really need a little bit of handbrake here just to keep it safe. I don't want to, especially, especially battling Tay out. I'd hate to, a borrowed car, I'd hate to, hate to do that damage. It's always, it's always handy having a handbrake. Tell me, um, the fact that you've come back for this round, right? Has it reignited the flame? Uh, the flame's been there for a while, Steve. Uh, okay, you call me Steve one more time. Steve, I'm not gonna... <laughs> good on you, Liam. <laughs> no, carry on, carry on. It's all good. It's been there for a while. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of you know getting back out there, some sponsors and funding, and, and I'll be keen as to get out there. But, but I've got the family now, and um, oh, yeah, really? Two. How many? How many? One, two, three? Two. So I've got a two-year-old Layla girl, and uh, got my boy who's five months old, and his name's Jason. Nice work. Now, uh, the, 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 what's very busy. Keep the, oh, oh, keeping the wife very busy. Mate, you're supposed to be a metrosexual man and do all that, uh, some of that stuff yourself. Hey, um, so if you're a sponsor out there, this, this guy, Drift King, can drive. So if you want to be part of the animal and Liam Burke, uh, then you've got to go and get in touch with him. Okay, just talk me through this. Are you going to wait for their five to finish and then call your five? Uh, I have to figure out the process, but I imagine you guys only have one of those timers, so... Yeah, it might have to be. He finishes his, and then I go out for our nice cold tyres again, and it'd be good. Okay, so it's all about the handbrakes. All right, well, uh, you realise that you didn't... Is that the reason you didn't uh, initiate going in? I'm not sure if I misshifted there or went to pull the handbrake and everything just... I'm assuming it's the handbrake, it just, it just flopped back on me. So I do it, give it a little dab on the way in, it just helps set it up, and then... Um, so, so you're right behind, basically, now? Yeah. Hey, so yeah, sorry, sorry Tay, about upsetting that. I didn't, uh, didn't intend. Well, he wouldn't right, but because you both, he's he's got problems as well. So where we go back? What's what's? Uh, brake fluid. They, 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 it's the pump and the brakes are stuffed. He's got no brakes. Foot or foot or rears. Oh, I've got to go back. So I'm being told after yourself and get ready. Call your five. And we'll bring the little thing over. Cool as cheers. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, really? Okay, we've got to go back this way. All righty, let's follow me, Tony. This is the really cool thing that Paul Fallon and the team borrowed from their uh, W experience when it came to pits. And the pits have been magnificent, lined up in all different sections, and it's been outstanding. So uh, I'm just going to try not to play at people because that's not the brightest thing in the world to do, but I'll get here. This is uh, McManaway. Yeah, nice work, mate. Thanks for taking someone out tonight. Nice work. There you go. <laughs> What a surprise that is, eh? Oh, do you JM, know, do you bang, know bang, your bang, mic's bang, on, like, like, a, like a purple and black so Get out of my way. That's a great interview you just did, Steve. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Be very, very careful, lads. <laughs> just just remember to look after your seniors. All right? Yeah, yeah, don't run too far then, mate. No, no, there's Fanger Dan's pit. They're just waiting to see what's happening. There's the beautiful car. Where is it? Where is he though, by the way? Because where's that flash rowdy, look, rowdy NASCAR suit of his? They're kicking back watching TV in this. Ah, uh, okay, so Taylor James has gone out because that means that Liam oh, Burke has to line up on the line within one minute. Thanks, boys. Or his five minutes immediately starts. Correct, yeah. But obviously they didn't have another five-minute clock. Uh, they just have to have a stopwatch, that's all, so uh, every phone has one. But the other thing is it's the staff. Ah, uh, we're thin. We're oh, thin. Stephen McIver, have you still got something for us? Uh, yeah, I like my show. Where's the fanger? Where's the fang? Where is he? Where's he hanging? Where's he'll be, Fanger? He'll be in go, the stand. Go and oh, have no, a look no, what they're no, doing. No. Yeah, I told him to keep Rowdy. His, I'm calling his, his new race suit Rowdy. Who, who provided that race suit? Uh, Fastmaster. Like, someone sent me, uh, DM'd me, oh, yeah. and they said, oh, look, look, look what Fanger's got. I mean, he's, we're going to call him Rowdy because it's like a NASCAR suit with that big white strip down it. Yeah, no, Mate, it's really awesome. It's um, such an awesome quality um, that's made by Marina. And um, yeah, I'm really super pumped um, to have that this weekend, especially. So I'm trying to keep track of the points here, and it's as confusing as hell. But it's, it's going to be, it's, if if Taylor is out, is out now, right? We're waiting on uh, Liam. Potentially got a minute to get out. Yeah. Uh, there is an outside chance that Taylor can actually nick this title. Yeah. And, and like like I'm talking about many many outside chance. Yep. But we think he has to win the whole thing. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, you know, I don't you really are. keep an eye on um, <laughs> the points and stuff like that. And I just really wanted to go out there tonight and put on a good show and I was in the right mindset and just made a little mistake and, and that's all she wrote, so. So, okay, so so if you win tonight, that like, makes it four, right? Yes. So, when do you decide you've had enough? Because the one thing that has been most present with you this year, yep. and it was at the end of last year too, I remember when you had that, uh, you wanted to rerun with Ben Jenkins, you said, oh, just let's just run it, right? Yeah. 
is your ability to just give back to young drifters. Now, oh. does that mean that you want to keep competing? I definitely want to keep competing, you know, like um, I've got to keep them honest, you know, these young fellas. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, like I want to maybe bring someone up, uh, bring someone into the sport or help someone that's, you know, struggling a little bit as well um, to, to be the new face of maybe Fangadan, you know, like, or FTC Motorsport, you know, so, um, yeah, like, it's it's no different, like, people ask me that all the time, and it's no different to, you know, when, I guess, Dick Johnson turned around and said, well, you know, I'm getting a bit old in the piece or whatever, and i got to get these young fellas in, and Scotty McLaughlin, and he's still the, he's still a legend in my eyes, you know, but then he creates more legends as well, you know, so, um, yeah. You want to leave a legacy, right? I, want, I do. Well, yeah. well we're not Oh, yeah. leaving, leaving's a bit too, too certain, right? No, no, definitely. And, you know, like, um, hey, if I um, end up dead last every time and um, end up driving into the wall for no reason, well, then, uh, you know, i better give up. <laughs> what do you think, when we look back over three championships, potentially four, what what gives you the most satisfaction? Just just putting on a show, like getting the response back from, um, you know, the, the spectators and the viewers on social media that, Oh man, that was the best lead run, or that was the qualifier. Like, I've just been, you know, bombarded out the back here, you know, like it's like, man, there's still a show going on, like, get out there and watch guys, uh, but they just want to come over and say it was mean and, you know, should have won and whatever, you know, like, I know I made a massive mistake and I know I lost that battle, um, but I left doing an awesome lead run for Adam and, um, and still gave it all I got, and yeah, so, nah, I want to keep turning up and, um, keep smiles on faces and yeah like what else would I do if I wasn't doing what, well, what I, I know what you can do you've got this big new trailer on the back it looks like the, the biggest uh, motorhome I've ever seen uh, uh, but it's all white it's just not not you is it Rhett? No nah, not yet no nah, nah. we only got it like um, the truck we got like 15 days ago or something like that and um, it was a, a bit of an old workhorse and we've made it look something quite cool and we're going to keep adding to it and yeah we'll, we'll spruce it all up with some fancy signage and stuff for next season and yeah we'll come back better and stronger and, and just be by being Fanger Dan because remember there is only one Fanger Dan. The rowdy, the rowdy Fanger Dan. Rowdy, yeah, maybe now nah, maybe Fanger Rowdy. Nah, well we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll work on it, right? It was just yeah. a, it was just a suit, right? It just oh, reminded me of NASCAR, and a NASCAR name is good, like right, Rowdy Pickles, something like that. <laughs> yeah, and the cowboy hat was pretty cool yesterday. So um, I actually thought the missus was telling me to leave it at home, so I did. I left it at home, and then I got here this day, and she's like, "Where's the hat? I want to want you to wear that hat all day." And I was like, "Oh." Well, who knows, mate? By the end of the night, we could be crowning you your fourth Drift King title. So uh, I know you're not moving. So uh, see you soon. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. There you go. All right. So that's Rowdy, Rowdy Pickles. Do we? Do you? Are you asking me to go over to the other pit now? Is that what you want me to do? That's a lot of walking to do. You know what? There's some stuff out on track we can talk about if you like. Save the paces, okay. Koro. Well, there's Young Drift out there. Another man that Tia uh, Teed Young just went out. Of course, Dean Young went and visited a number of different schools uh, in the lead up to this uh, this event. Well, we've got a whole heap of cars that are uh, slowly packing up. A few cars are uh, making their way out as well. Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship, the grand finale here at Mercury Bay Park Stadium. We've got our top four. Adam Davies will go up against Cody, Paul and Burry. What is happening with Liam Burke versus Taylor James? It's anyone's guess. We're back down with Steve McIver. Made five. Made five. Not in the car yet, but they made the five. Come over here. Uh, oh, okay, oh, okay. Wow. I know it's tough. I know. <laughs> so, what was the real issue? And uh, you've sorted it, right? Yeah, yeah. It was just the uh, push rod on the handbrake. Yep. Yep. So we've changed it. So good to go. Hopefully, fingers crossed. All right, get on with it. Yep. Go. Okay, so the animal. Let's. Let's go. Well, that is the Vitor Tires Valvoline 07 Frankenstein. Look at that thing, crab walking down there. That is Jace Brown, hashtag because Jace Brown, crowd loving it, that's one heck of a skid. You know Jace Brown has a proper burnout car, eh? 
Ooh, is it a Japanese car? Is it like a hot yep. rod? Is it a Jap rod? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that is. You already <laughs> knew. I've only seen it once. This is how you put it on a show at Bay Park. I used to love getting the opportunity to go out and do this stuff. Look at this, at Jace Brown. So good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. And uh, Jace Brown, where's he going? <laughs> need to cool that sucker down because I bet she's toasty. Oh, it's good to see. I like seeing this stuff. Wow. <laughs> That's uh, four, four wheels off. That will be a zero score. <laughs> oh, great to see a good show on here where we've got a bit of downtime. Such a blast, ladies and gentlemen. Give a round of applause to Jace Brown. Tree, Steve. I hear a root tree. Ooh, yes, yes, you certainly do. Is that? Is that? Is that? Is Liam Burke had his car fixed? Where, where is? You know. Okay, well here's Taylor James. He's just got to line up on the line, and then he'll have basically one more minute to go. He's just got to drive up on the line, doesn't he? Oh. No, that was Adam Davies. That's Taylor James. 45? Yeah, 45 Taylor James. Oh, okay. Lucky you know. And then that was Adam Davies coming in behind, so they got their car fixed too. So what? Good to see. Is. So that's both of them cars ready to roll. Now we're just waiting on Liam Bird. Well, where is Liam Bird? Yeah, that's Taylor James. Do not tell me he is just forfeited. He's got to come out. He's got to come out. I think Banger would be walking down and saying, like, grabbing him by the ear and saying, like, get out there. Go out there quickly. Surely he'd be keen to do a run with no handbrake. No, I hear another car. Yeah, he's out there, Steve. That's a big breath. Big breath, bud. Here he is. Liam Burke, ladies and gentlemen, has got that little car fixed and ready to roll. Well, they kind of both have, haven't they? So, I really want to know, where are they at with the first battle? Because, obviously, like you said, Liam Burke didn't initiate. Well, he tried to, but he had a massive mess. So... Are we at a 10-0 advantage to Taylor James already? Yes. Yes. Oh, 10-0 or 0-0? It depends, because if he's straight into coming out, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Comes down to this battle. But Taylor backed out. Oh, here we go then. Oh, there was contact on the entry. You're kidding me. Taylor James so gets back in it. Liam Burt right there with him. These guys are right into it for the last part of this battle. But that Taylor James not really as deep as he uh, as he could be in the teardrop there. Liam Burt right there with him now as he rotates and tries to get back up on the wall. Look at this, Liam Burt right on the door of Taylor James. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. What oh. a battle that has been. Taylor James. He was right against the concrete coming through, scratching up that rear bumper. Look, that contact there. So, if we go back, the rule is 
Taylor's not allowed to go over that line. He didn't. Liam was on the inside of that line where contact hurt. So realistically, no disadvantage to really anyone bar maybe Taylor because it put him offline. Remember Kurt Blackie and Adam Davies That's right. that last Same year? Same time this year? Uh, last year, sorry? Yeah. Oh man, what's going on? Right up by the wall. Right up by the wall, eh? What a battle! What are they calling that? Like, I still want to know what call was done. I want to know. First. If, well, I want to know if it was zero zero. So watch this. Taylor James does not go over the white line. Liam Burke does. Bang. And he's no allowed. Fault, yeah. No fault of Taylor James right there. Full Liam Burke's fault. Okay. Well, hang on a sec. If we go back there, there was a dual initiation by but, Taylor James. Uh, sorry, by Tay. Yes, correct. Yep. But not his fault. Went to initiate. Ah, uh, because hit, of contact. Hit Liam so he's Burke. had to go up and initiate twice. Correct. Not his fault. Okay. Not his fault. Yep. No, that makes sense. And then as we look to come back through this section. You know, we've got to fall out the, the fault on that, but right okay, now we've got a result. I'm it. I'm assuming it, there we Taylor go. One, two, three, James Taylor James goes to the final. Jaden, gentlemen, Taylor James is, what? What? And the night gets crazier. Oh, honestly, I had in my head, I knew the handbrake wasn't going to work, so I thought, right, I'll get going, and I'll do a big flick to initiate because I can't use the handbrake. And I, I remember brushing into Liam's car, and it sort of stopped what I had planned, and then... Grab the handbrake, sure enough, nothing there, so a quick clutch stab and get going again, but yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know, we're fluking our way through, but um, I'll take it, eh? Yeah. So are you going to have to call another five with this break again? I don't know, um, I guess they're going to have, what, third and fourth battle now, um, but yeah, I don't know, we can't actually find what is wrong, like, um, it's because the handbrake is in line, it's the foot brake and the handbrake as well, so... Um, yeah, you sort it out. Yeah, thanks, man. Well done, mate. You're into the final. Okay, oh, man. If you want a final to be crazy, folks, you got it as we celebrate 20 years of D1NZ. Talking to a drift king himself. Well, you got it out there. Whose fault? He reckons he got punted into you, but our guys think it was your fault. What do you reckon? Probably me, Steve. Probably me. <laughs> You are such a gentleman. Let's let's see. I think Tay's still got a chance to say. Well, it's a, it's a it's a it's a really outside chance. Uh, there's, there's always a chance, Steve. So I haven't done the mass, but I, I wish Taylor good luck and, and Dan and good good stuff, man. Good stuff, guys. That was that was awesome battling. You yeah, mate. I certainly hope in some way we see you back here next year. It's been a pleasure just having you back. <laughs> awesome, mate. Thank you. All right, look after those babies, of yours. Okay, so we're getting close to the battles. We'll have the battle for third and fourth coming up, then the battle to win the round. Then we'll announce the championship. Oh, by the way, folks, you don't go too far. We've got a fireworks spectacular before 10 o'clock. Just got to get there early. All righty, here are highlights of the top 24 in D1NZ. Well, there's highlights to right the top 24 of the Bubbly D1NZ Pro Championship here at Mercury Bay Park Stadium. Alex Pellier, look at him flashing out there. He had Ben Jenkins tucking in behind him. Ben, a solid run, both of them, a little bit of contact between each other, but it was going to be Alex Pellier's. You can see working their way up, two amazing battles. From here we move on to another one between one of the elite cars, that is Jordan Joyce and that is not Jordan Joyce, that well, is Sean join in. <laughs> okay, you go. It's been a long day, but yeah, we've got Cody Paul go. Murray up right now and Sean Potros. This here was an epic battle by two stellar young drivers, but yeah, look at that. Sean Potros rotates. That was Jordan Joyce. <laughs> All right, well, then the animal Liam Burke, he's now already spat out one of the... Which one is that, actually? I, I don't even know who that is out there. So, but it's the animal Liam Burke. Oh, it's Dave Steadman. Dave Steadman, yeah. And a couple of mistakes. Yeah, he just had a mere memory, just drove off. That's right, came up to the teardrop. Yeah. And he got out of the way. This was a big one. Yeah, this was it a was. Big one. Connor Halligan and Kurt Blackie. Connor, great lead run. Great lead run. Kurt right there with him. And then this is something epic that uh, I'm pretty sure Kurt Blackie will not forget.
Poor old Wolfie. Uh, Wolfie got a scratch. He got it a looks spectacular. <laughs> Let's have a look at what happens here. Guns up off over the hill as such. Comes out through the teardrop. Everything's going well for Kurt. But then just gets a little bit too close to the concrete. Bang. Contact. Stays in it. Spits the rim. Spits the wheel. And spits the whole recorder. <laughs> I mean, that looks incredible. We got in trouble for... Well, from there we went to Russell Veer. Going up against uh, Taylor James, like the Black Rooms. Oh, maybe. That was a There's a 45. Battle. And it was the second part of this battle, wasn't it, Steve? Where where it all went, it all went wrong. Taylor's really had uh, had a bit of luck up the sleeve. Yeah, right here for Russell. Bang! Hits hits the wheel, straightens up, shuts it down, and uh, Taylor James guides through there. And then we've got Adam Davies up against Nico Reed, and this is an epic battle. Oh, Nico just putting on a display, but that display was not going to be enough as he goes up against the little rotary. Nico looks out the window, but it would be Adam Davies. No, this is the second half of the battle. Adam Davies powering out. Great battle by these two guys. It's so good to see Nico Reed back in the seat. Has such a passion. Look at that chase right there, Steve. This is what it's all about. Again, another battle between the JS Racing S2000. Alex Pelier going up against Cody Pullenbury. Pullenbury making his way further and further up the food chain during this round. Yeah, great to see. Cody just been the same all night, eh? Just, just consistent. On, yeah, consistent. Just up on the bank, running the wall. I really don't think that car has any tail lights. Now, who's this? Jordan Joyce. You got it. Oh, you got or is it, it Sean Potros? <laughs> it is Jordan. Oh, ouch. Big contact there from Jordan. Just coming in too hot. Bang. On the animal. And uh, he had it shut it down from there. I think, did he end up getting, he did get out for the next part of that battle, eh? I think he did. And then we see uh, this next battle. At the 45, of course, that is uh, Taylor James working his way. Those two battling in pro sport, now battling in pro. And, and I have to say, I thought Connor Halligan had that in the bag and just threw it away in the last part of the section. Liam Burke chasing down the triple three of Jordan Joyce. Jordan over rotating though, and that would be all she wrote. Rotes, wrote. There's been just some bad luck, eh? Hey? Like, Adam Davis, battles. boom. Broken bits and pieces. There has been some bad luck through throughout these battles that has won and lost, you know? So easy for the drivers out there. They're all pushing so hard. Here we go again. Oh, I see. I haven't seen that entry at all. Liam Burke, just no initiation. Taylor James just sort of backing out of it. And then here we go. The man who knows how to do a burnout, Jace Brown and Frankenstein, putting a show on for the crowd while we have a bit of downtime. And what a show he put on. Then we run again. Contact. Liam Burke right up on the inside there of Taylor James. Crazy, crazy battles we have just seen here, Steve. Well, it's the Valvoline D1NZ. It's getting close to the final time. We'll be back with more action after the break. Well, we are only moments away from bringing out our next cars, the Valvoline D1NZ Grand Finale, the Grand Final, the final of the final round. The 2023 Championship comes down to the wire, and it's coming up soon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mercury Bay Park. This is the Valvoline D1NZ, and we've got an incredible couple of battles coming up.
So here we go, battle for third and fourth, Liam Burke. Mate, come on, come on. You mate Adam Davies out on the track and ready. So this is good, we're going to finally get our third and fourth battle, then we go for the round win. Then we name our champions, we have a Drift King, will it be a new one, will it be the same one? Then we have a fireworks display on Saturday night in the Mount, how good does it get? And then they have a little chat. You know, sometimes I just wonder why we should have a cup of tea, have a cup of scone, a bit of a jam, and just have a little chat. I'm going to go, come over here, see what's going on, what's going on here. Hang on, pal, hang on, hang on, Taylor, hang on, hang on, you're, you're fine for round win. You good? You good? Get out there. Excellent. Here we go, lads. Time to go racing again. <laughs> you tell him, Stephen, you tell him. It is definitely time to go racing. This is the battle for third and fourth position. Of course, this one's a bit of scraped up and scratched up. Adam Davies out of Tauranga. One of the hometown legends. No, it's not. That's the 45. That is Taylor James. Oh, what have they both got 45 in their cars? I thought they changed the numbers. Yeah, no, that's Adam Davies for sure. Out there in the 20B. Get set, ready to go. Oh, the 20B's got one number and the 345's is another number. There we go, that's why. Press the button over here. There we go. Thanks to you, mate. Um, I've just been told that we're about to have the most amazing fireworks display. I've just taken the mic off, Cole, because I'm actually quite excited about it. I just wanted to do a big the shout out to The most amazing fireworks display. The biggest display in 10 years in the Bay of Plenty. Do you know why that better. is? because when we go up and send them up with the Pyro Company fireworks for the Battle of Third and Fourth, after this coming up, we've got fireworks. Why? Because we can blow things up at well over 150 metres, which we can't do on a normal speedway night. So we're going to go side by side, we're going to let them loose, and we're going to see the Battle for Third and Fourth. Which one of these drivers is going to step foot on the rostrum tonight? Will it be Liam Burke? Will it be Adam Davies? Off we go. Took us through coal. Look at that from Liam Burke, right up on the wall. A little bit of a touch there, pulled himself back in. Just a smidgen there, Adam Davies trying to close the door. Did a bit of contact there as they transition. Liam Burke right out on that outside line with the back of the car hanging off. As Adam Davies tries to come back through the smoke, Liam Burke has pulled a massive gap on Adam Davies coming through the centre section. Holy ladies and gentlemen, this is why we've been sitting around for a while. And I might tell you, that the road is going to be closed too so you cannot leave because the fireworks is about to kick off so if you're about to walk to your car now turn around go and get a beer sit down and enjoy this final because the road's closed right now for this fireworks display that is about to kick off. Well, this is the battle for third and fourth. Liam Burke doing a great job up front. You see him come through and switch. Nice speed. The whole back of the car looks like it's falling off. May have dropped the wheel. Who cares? It's right on the line. He comes through and powers out. He did. Did such a great job through there, Steve. And look at the gap that he just pulled by his great line coming out of the teardrop. He pulled a bustling and some on Adam Davies through that centre section. So. What a great drive there for uh, the third and fourth, first part of that medal. Bit of clean up to go, you can see the team working hard out there. Just while I've got the opportunity, a big thank you to the team from Fulton Hogan Bay of Plenty. They were the guys that came through and uh, sorted out our issues with the track. Time now for the second half of this battle for third and fourth to find a spot on the podium. We think that uh, the animal, Liam Burke, has got a large advantage right now. Is there anything that Adam Davies can do to fight back? Well, you know there is. He can just do a good, clean line, and it comes down to a mistake. And we've seen both of them be able to do that. But you know what? We don't want to see that, Steve. We want to see a real close battle that gets us real jacked up, ready to go. Here we are. Adam Davies leading out Liam Burke, look at that, Liam Burke right up on the inside there, trying to gather it back up now as he had a little bit of a moment, coming around that outside sweeper, transitioning nicely, bit of a wheel drop there by Adam Davies as they come in, it's a drop, but look at Liam Burke on the door of Adam Davies, this is good to see ladies and gentlemen, look at this transition, are we going to see a Liam Burke right up on the door of Adam Davies as they come through the last part of the section, Look at that for our third and fourth battle. Oh, Liam Burke showing you why he was once a drift king. Look at the side of that uh, Adam Davies door, still dinged up from a previous battle. Let's have a look at the replay as they fire it into the first turn. What a good entry there by Liam Burke. Just the car hooked up a little bit too much for him. Pushed him onto the inside, had to re recorrect and gather it back up. Look at that transition. Held the car up nicely. 
as they both came into the teardrop. Look at him right up on the door. A little bit of a touch there on Adam Davies' door. That door has had a hammering as now they drive and transition back up onto the wall. And look at this of Liam Burke. Beautiful line there by Adam Davies, opening the door for Liam Burke to get right up on the inside. Ladies and gentlemen, give these guys a round of applause because that was a great battle for third and fourth. Well, what is the result going to be? We're expecting it to be all hands, Liam Burke, one, two, three. Yes, it is. Let's go down to Stephen McIver. Turn that car off, I can't hear myself think. But congratulations, once a Drift King, always a Drift King, P3. Yeah, no, that, that, was, that was cool, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, whew, awesome. <laughs> I got nothing, I got nothing, that was so much fun. All I can say is if anyone is out there thinking about sponsoring a car, get this Drift King back in Valvoline D1NZ. Well done, mate, it was so good to see you. Awesome, thanks for uh, Adam putting on the lead there, that, yeah. Just having a great time out here. Um, big thank, uh, shout out to Scotty and the boys. Um, they pulled my car out of the shed. It was an absolute mess. Um, replaced the alternator, fixed up a few bits and pieces for me, battery, all that. And um, I just had to sort, sort of pinch a few tyres, and now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well done, buddy. Let's go and see Adam Davies. Home round, gets a P4. It's, been, it's just been a wild night, mate. Oh, it's been pretty crazy, man. The car's quite bent, to be honest, and it was a bit of a handful to drive, but. I wanted to do something, you know, I had to be out there and at least battle for, for third, so hands, hats, hats, hats off to um, Liam, and he drove really well, and I just, I just couldn't put it together enough to, to beat him, but massive thanks to my crew, all my family out there in the corporate box have come along and watched, everyone that's turned up tonight, and all the, like, like um, one of the boys said earlier, all the guys that helped out getting the track going, and, and for us to be able to put on a good show for everyone, thanks everyone, thanks Taronga. Well done buddy, we'll see you next year, and maybe, maybe luck will fall, fall your way next year, eh? Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Take it easy, man. There you go, folks. The animal, P3, but what's coming up? The battle for the round. And then we find out who is the new Drift King for 2023. Well, that was a good battle there, Steve. <laughs> here we go. It's got a lot. Here we go. Here we like to see a good skid here from both these drivers here. Finishing it off for you guys out there. Well, they head back out, and there can only be one more battle. What a great battle. Look at this. Look at the entry. Liam Burke right there. Man, it is the biggest thrill in the car, right up on the door of someone else in this, in this stadium event. It, it puts uh, shivers down the spine when you can get right up on the door like that. Bit of contact through there. Look at Adam Davies. Holding it together, contact or no contact, stays right in it nice and hard and then uh, opens the door right up for Liam Burke to come right up on the inside. What a show that is. Now just a heads up too for everyone here still at the stadium. We have got the massive fireworks going on after the uh, prize giving of this next battle coming up. So just remember the roads are going to be closed so you can't leave. Uh, so take a seat, enjoy this last half an hour because it's going to be a great end to the night. Well Cole, there can be only one more battle. One more battle? So I hope all the people that think they're in the championship hunt, you know, that, that old dog, that old sleepy dog finger Danny better be ha better get his suit on so he's set ready to go because he he may be in the hunt uh, you know Dave Stedman as well where's he he might be lingering around we we know we've still got Taylor James he uh, he is chipping on the heels of finger Dan right now depending on where this battle turns out. Well, we, go. we are ready to bring them out. They will go out and scrub. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the night. The time is getting closer where we will send the cars out on track. We have two more passes to go by these two drivers. You can see the heat starting to rise. Kenny Ruddle comes through. 
he says it's time to go out and scrub. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand the mic over to the man who runs it through the best in the world, Steve the Moldy. <laughs> That's why I love you, bro. Well, Bait Park, are you ready? Bay Park, are you ready? It's time to bring out the final. We can see them lined up. The first one will head out on to track. Sitting in the chute right now, just looking for the thumbs up. Attempting to drag on the introduction as long as they possibly yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that they just looked in that car and there was no one sitting in. I was like, oh, uh, you're probably really going to have to drag this one out here. Steve. Yeah, this is called padding. But I don't. I think that there's Dave Steadman's car right there. It is. Too. Look, there's his name there. They might be in the wrong car. You think? Where what? is the other car? Taylor James. Are they trying to get that handbrake sorted so they're all set and ready to go? Oh, I think so, but you, you know, people are follow, 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 king, follow, king. No, I don't know. Well, it's been a long night. Taylor James has called us five minutes. If Cody Pullen Burry drives up to the line one minute to get there, Cody's not going to do that though, because that's not a Cody thing to do. Not understanding the uh, the importance of making live television. <laughs> We will get there, Steve. We will get we, there. We will get there. We will certainly get there. Huge thank you again to all of our amazing sponsors that have uh, been behind the amazing team here. From the Valvoline D1NZ, of course, Mimico, Link ECU, TT Industries, Valvoline, the Valvoline D1NZ. A great crowd still here. Awaiting the final. Mercury Bay Park Stadium has been the place that we crown champions over the last couple of years. Why is Taylor James walking over? This is, he's not in his car and he's walking in this way here. Stephen McIver, are you in there? Can you give us more information? This is not a good sign, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a good sign at all. Which direction is he going? Wow, this is Taylor this is James, huge. he should be in his car right now, but doesn't look like it's happening. Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Taylor? What's going on there, mate? Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're kidding, kidding, right? right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Tell, tell everybody what we don't want to hear. Um, no, we just had a proper look over it now, and we found that it's actually broken the flaring off one of the hard lines on the brake lines. So. Um, we were trying to find bits and pieces, re-flare it, all of that. We couldn't find one. Um, we were going to clamp the rear brakes off and just have no handbrake and no rear brakes, only front brakes, but we just quickly done the math, and I, I don't think we can beat Fanger for the championship, even if we win, so it's not my car. Like, the sensible decision to me is just to call it, and, yeah, we can't win regardless, so, yeah, I'd rather not wreck someone else's car from something like that, so. Respect, brother. Uh, man. We're gonna have a chat out. We're gonna have a chat out there, okay? So maybe you get your crew together and uh, get out there for the podium presentations for the round and the championship, right? Awesome, Stephen. Thank you guys very much. Wow, we. That is not how you like to finish the grand final final run. Taylor James has forfeited his battle. So let's see what Cody Pullen Burry does. Is he gonna put on a good show for us? Because we know it's just him out there. So. Uh, this is something uh, you definitely don't see, but we're going to tell you right now, we think a new DK has been announced and he might be the four-time DK himself. Is it going to be? We'll have to wait and see. But this is crazy. Here we go. Cody Pullenbury, hopefully. Oh no, it, come on, you've got to do some laps there, bro. Let him out, Kenny. We've got plenty of time. Well, I don't even know like where, where we at. This is we're all quite lost on this one, aren't we? Taylor's forfeited. I don't have Steve I'm by myself in this little box room. 
what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, just to uh, keep you in the loop, so Taylor has now forfeited. His car is unsafe and obviously a borrowed car, so doesn't want to run it. But uh, we will be right back after these messages. Well, welcome back to the D1NZ, and here are our highlights of the top four battles. What an epic load we had this uh, this night. It has been full on. Taylor James, Connor Halligan, Connor throwing it away here as he just washes wide off the track. Giving the uh, victory there to Taylor James, holding himself through here. Jordan Joyce up against the animal, Liam Burke. Uh, what a battle that was before the uh, massive contact um, between Jordan and uh, Liam. Obviously in this battle here, Jordan over-rotating and then the big collision there from Adam Davies just going in too deep into the uh, outside wall and uh, collecting the uh, front of the car, really bending the, um, the front lower control arm. Now I also found out they uh, had to remove the sway bar, so it made the car very uncomfortable. Now both of these cars lost their handbrake. Liam Burke throwing it away, not being able to enter into the section. Taylor James getting thrown a bone and uh, being able to move on to the final. The animal himself, Liam Burke, and then another animal, Jace Brown taking out the 07 Frankenstein. 
putting a show on for all you out there. But uh, as we can see right now, the podium presentation has uh, is, is about to kick off. Now, it's been a real turn of events tonight. Normally, we would have an epic final, an epic final battle. But this time, we don't. Taylor James pulled the pin and uh, set the car back to Adam Davies. Said, thank you very much, but I can't take the championship. But what a night. So uh, I think we're going to see two brothers, Case Pullenbury and Cody Pullenbury, taking the top step for tonight. So pretty epic to see. And uh, a real great achievement for their family. There we go. Is that Fanger Dan? Is he our new four-time DK? There's only one other man who has that title, and that is Gaz Wider. But we see we've got one car there. There's Adam Davies as well. Drove really, really well. Finger Dan. Got the new suit on. Kurt Blackie out there as well, just picking up a few parts that he lost uh, when Wolfie collected the wall. Stephen Daniels out there. Look at him. Great, man. I'm waiting for Dave. Stephen. Yeah, there's Stephen uh, McIver as well. Obviously, I can hear him on his mic. So can everyone. Yeah, that's Emma as well. She's the director or helps out uh, with uh, running the whole show. So hopefully, we'll fire it down to you uh, down there. Steve and um, or Stephen and you guys can catch up with a few of the drivers down there. Why thank you Cole. Uh, folks it's time for the official podium presentations. We'll start with the round and we'll also chat to everybody. We're, we're still missing uh, one third of the uh, championship presentation. Uh, we are locating the individuals. So Let's just uh, have a chat. First of all, where's uh, Liam, uh, Rod McLean, uh, the Mr. Va actually, Mr. Valvoline, come over here first. We haven't even spoken to you. I'm, I'm mindful of the time and about the fireworks. Just briefly, another cracking season of Valvoline D1NZ, Rod. Bay Park always delivers, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Fantastic. Real shame there for Taylor, unfortunately. But hey, fantastic for all the fans out there as well. You loving it all, though? Absolutely. Yeah. I saw the kids here tonight, yeah? They were here. They may have left because of the noise. But yeah. Did they get out because we've closed everybody in? Uh, they, they managed to escape under the fence. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate, let's get on with this podium. You, get, you go get your trophies ready and we will officially do the round presentations. In fact, we've spoken to all of them. Let's, let's just get on with the run. In third position in the final round of Valvoline D1 Ed Z, it was Liam Burke. In second position for the round was Taylor James. And in first position, your round winner for the final round of the year, Cody Pullen Burry. Hold those trophies up, lads. Smile politely to the snappers in front of you. And then please feel free to spray some champagne. Okay, now we get part to the moment we've all been waiting for. So this is your championship standings for the 2023 Valvoline D1 NZ Championship. And in third position, come on over here, Dave Steedman. <laughs> Not the night you wanted, but mate, third in the championship. It was a late rush in the championship. It's been a roller coaster championship, I'll tell you that much. But uh, yeah, today wasn't the greatest. I'm so, so stoked to be on this, on this podium. Really, really stoked. <laughs> Blown away. Okay, go receive your trophy from Rod McLean, mate. Congratulations. Dave Steedman, third in the championship in 2023. Up you get, mate. Up you get. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Thank well, you very much. And well, in second position, it could have been a different story. It could have been a different story, Taylor James, but, mate, 
congratulations on the season that was almost. Yeah, uh, literally full of ups and downs. We had um, good times and bad times. Um, we had a late push trying to get the championship, but yeah, we, we worked out if we had won the final, we would still would have missed out by a couple of points. So yeah, it was close, but not quite close enough. The qualifying, right? The qualifying killed you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if he hadn't uh, qualified first, like congratulations to him for it. But um, yeah, we might have been a bit of a different story, but yeah, it is what it is. Congratulations, mate, up on the podium. Second in the championship in 2023, Taylor James. And folks, he has successfully defended his Drift King title. And so for the fourth time, he becomes a Drift King. Please welcome your 2023 Drift King in Valvoline D1NZ, Fanger Dan! You know, it's got to be the race suit, Rowdy. Oh yeah, yeah, like, just looks amazing. I felt amazing, you know, like, turning up here this weekend and the car actually drove the best it's ever driven all season. Um, my crew have done an amazing job just making sure everything's 110% ready for this final and, oh man, it was so stressful, just, um, it's a long wait. It was a long wait, and um, I can't, you know, thank my crew, um, you know, like time away from their partners and family and um, my partner, Nicole, and, you know, we're also leaving our little fella at home, you know, because we're just, you know, it's so intense being here and focused and stuff. So, um, yeah, all my sponsors, you know, Century Batteries, Cash Roll Edge, and um, Ford, RTR, Mustangs, uh, and the list goes on. All my brand partners, they know who, they're behind me 110% and yeah. Just briefly, because we want to get this fireworks under space, because you've provided fireworks all season, buddy. Is the fourth as good as the first, the second, and the third? Oh, I think it's, um, it's really just that 20 year thing, you know, that for me, um, you know, winning another championship is awesome, but this is most probably a really special event and a special, um, um, milestone for D1NZ and um, a credit to Brendan and his team and, and our fans that um, you know come to these events and support us and give us a good following so uh, and all the other drivers in our series you know big ups to them and um, make sure they come back bigger and stronger next year to, to take me out. Thank you Dan, go get it man. Ladies and gentlemen your 2023 Valvoline D1NZ and four time Drift King Fanger Dan! And now, lads, please feel free to celebrate. You had fun? <laughs> All right, boys, there's only one thing to do. How about we do some celebratory skits? And then, folks, we'll have to clear the arena for the fireworks displays. But let's see more of the smoke show right here.
So Steve, Steve Daniels joins me right now. Crazy end of the season. Uh, what do you make of this, mate? Well, I've watched them all season. We watched them last season. To see a driver get four, basically make himself a goat just like Gaz Wider. We haven't seen it. We didn't know if he could do it, but tonight he did. The season has been... No, I, I, I was looking... You know, and there were some things that I really enjoy was the improvement people, right? Uh, Alex Griffin, Michael Thorley, Alex Pelea. Oh, not just that, but so many of our pro sport drivers as well, they've all stepped up and I think they saw the pinnacle of drifting this weekend <laughs> where we saw just the absolute height of our drivers, where they've gone to, where they started and now they are just fighting for top positions, anyone can win because they're that good. I know we, we talked about it but we actually didn't talk about it <laughs> and the fact that Case, Bull and Burry won all four rounds of pro sport, won the final round and, and his brother Cody wins the final round, although probably not the way he would have liked. Oh, what an amazing effort for the Pullenbury family. Uh, Case Pullenbury, we know how good he is, but to, he's the first person since Nico Reed that's ever gone four in a row. But of course, he's done every single one. Leeds didn't win the lot. Uh, Cody, we know how good he is. It's just great to see a family taking that step up into New Zealand drifting. I think we just might have to move out of the way here because uh, I think uh, we, uh, we might just get a bit of a nudge here from Taylor James and for safety purposes. So we just sort of split split tack for a moment. A bit of a, a nautical turn, a bit of a split tack, but uh, here comes in Taylor James so close, but yet so far. But our thanks to, to Rex and the Mimico team for, for doing what they do. And oh, that was Dave Steedman. I got that. Is that Dave Steedman? Anyway, now we get Fanger Dan out there, and, and I, I, I'm sure you can see he's actually strapped, strapped the trophy to the top of the RTR Mustang. So it looks, it looks pretty well settled there, but are you confident it stays on the top of the uh, Century Batteries Mustang? Well, I tell you what, it's made here in Tauranga. If it doesn't, we'll get it back to Barclay and Gravers. So they'll fix it once this week. I'm sure they can fix it again. A good big, big thank you, of course, to Barclay. They've been looking after us for the last couple of years. I have all faith in that because I assisted the tie down. If it falls off, it's all my fault. Oh, OK. Hey, Fanger, could you hurry up and skew a skid, folks? Come on, mate. Get that skid on you, four-time Drift King. Come on, Is he listening at all? Come on, buddy. Light that tyre up. Or all four of them, actually, that'd be handy. Here we go. There's your four-time Drift King, Fanger Dan, doing what he has to do ahead of our fireworks display, and we are certainly looking forward to seeing that. But look at that. How good does it get? Lights them up and proudly displays the Valvoline D1NZ trophy on top. you got to love this sport, don't you? I absolutely love it. Fanger said to everybody that he was going to blow the guards off that car. He was going to turn it into essentially a canoe today. He is keen to blow this thing apart. Let's see if he can do it with those rear tyres. Yeah, I know. I was talking to him earlier in the season. The one thing that we have to understand about Fanger, his following is, is, is amazing. And it's, it's really loud. And I'm starting to not be able to listen to myself. But again, I think we might have to move out of the way, Steve. Let's just move out of the way because here comes the king. So let's go into, uh, oh, I don't know which way to look actually, we've got the left hand side here, shall we? It's done, he's done his victory scar. <laughs> he didn't, didn't get rid of the guards. Yeah, the, guard, the, the wheel's still on. But there he is, how good did that feel, buddy? Oh, that was awesome. I just said I want to blow the guards off this thing, I don't care what it looks like after it. It's going to come out with a fresh new look next year. Um, the new 2000 and 24 Mustang S650 and it's going to look epic and um, I can't wait. Man, it's not electric, please don't tell me it's electric. No, no, it's not electric, <laughs> it's going to be louder and everything. 
Have a look at this. How, how does that look? Have a, have a look at that. Hold that up. Hold that up. There you go. Hold that up. Not bad to say the least. There he is, folks. Your four-time Drift King for Valvoline D1NZ. Fang it in. Oh, yeah. Make the most of it. Why not? Well, he, he didn't blow the guards off, Steve, but uh, tyres are sort of, rims look a bit dusty. Well, he certainly tried. I couldn't help but go over to a printer earlier on today and print out 300 of those uh, signs. Uh, I probably should have made sure he was the champion first, but I was that uh, confident that he was going to. Yeah, OK. Just part of D1, right? So there you have it. How good, how good is this, right? How good is this? Fangy Dan is our, our four-time champion, and uh, it's, it's just going to leave the car there. It's very tempting, isn't it? I don't know if we could get it going. It's uh, missing a couple of tyres, but have you seen the speed of his crew? I'm sure we could strap on a couple more. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. So there, there you have it, folks. So that's it. Let's just take a look around here. Folks are still, still waiting for this uh, fireworks display to get underway. We're going to have to get his car out of the way and uh, get busy because it's going to uh, certainly uh, light up Mercury Bay Park. And uh, actually, I'll tell you what, where's Brendan White? Brendan White? Brendan White, come here. Come over here, mate. No, people are asking about the fireworks. No, we have to reflect, Mr. D1, we have to reflect on a D1 NZ in the 20th year of which you have had, a, had, had an enormous contribution. Stressful times as always, are you keeping your eye on the fireworks, right? Keeping, uh, just keep, keeping an eye on the time. We're, we're one minute away from obviously off here on Sky TV. Uh, so for everyone joining us on Fox Sport, on KO, around the world on motorsport.tv, uh, here in New Zealand on Sky TV, and the 6,000 fans that came out tonight for the 20th anniversary of D1 NZ. Make, Make some noise. noise. Oh, okay, yeah, so, so it's starting to do my job, eh? It's as, it's as simple as that, but when you reflect on 20 years and where you see the sport now, it's just a, a trajectory going like that into the stars. Yeah, look, uh, drifting uh, hasn't hit its room yet. It's very, uh, it's very in its infancy. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's new compared to motorsport. We've got a long future ahead of us, but I'm just super proud, man. This weekend, you know, we were getting tested, right? We were getting tested time and time again over 20 years, right from the start, 2003, where JT took it out. All these DKs to be here tonight, that parade was something special. We united and we had a sport that came together and celebrated 20 years of its history. We're one of the only championships in the world still running for drifting for so long, Formula Drift, D1 GP. We hold our heads very high for what we've accomplished over the last 20 years. Guys like you and all the crew, I want to say a special thank you to Valvoline, but also mainly the D1NZ crew from past to present over the last 20 years and all our fans, our supporters, our sponsors. Without you guys, it wouldn't have happened, but mainly with our guys, the drivers, putting it in, it wouldn't have been a show. Are you going to breathe after all this and have just have a, and have a couple of deep breaths go, it wasn't bad? Oh, no, man, we've got 2024 to plan. We're straight back on. Mate, you're a good bloke. You put on a great show, and I know it will continue long, long into the future. But congratulations on 20 years of Valvoline D1NZ, Brendan. Thanks, Stephen. I think we're actually about to hit our off-year on time, aren't we? I don't know. No, one, no, no, one's, no, one's, no one's counting me, actually. I was, wait, I was waiting, waiting for someone to count me off. So, so all right. Uh, no, they're waiting for fireworks. No, they're waiting for fireworks. I think we actually have to get off here, don't we? I think it's called padding in TV time. Padding in TV time, isn't it? No, it's not five minutes, but they're still doing. <laughs> We've got all sorts happening down there. Go there.
do things here in the D1 NZ. Uh, Bang is done. Bang is on a shoot. Hey Sam, come on. So here we are with Fanger Dan. We just had to get out of a, a dead area. You've done, you've done your first shoey. Uh, how, how disgusting was it? Oh, it was, it was like good. It was worth it. After um, a pretty stressful um, last few hours, yeah, just a really special moment for um, for myself and the team. Yeah, just being part of the sport. I want to talk to this guy over here, Sam. Come on here. Now, Sam is with CTB Performance, right? Yes. Yep. In fact, come over this side because I don't want to stretch across the champ, right? What's going on there, pal? Is, that, is, is, is it an XL or is it a large? <laughs> so, Sam from CTB Performance, and you guys uh, do ma magical things with, with Mustang cars, but you've spent so much time on this car with, as part of the crew. Tell me what it's like to, to work with Dan first and foremost. He's, he's pretty inspirational. He, um, he's, he's always the first to, to get in and working on the car, and um, he's, yeah, like he's, he's an awesome leader for the team. And how does that make your job easier? Well, sometimes they can make it harder, but, but it, definitely, um, it, it definitely makes life easy when you've got a driver that knows what they, what they want and that can communicate that to the team to make sure that we can deliver the best, the best results. So, so what, what is your actual, actual official role on the team? I've always wondered, Sam. I see you say, G'day, Sam, how are you? But what do you actually do, pal? Oh, I just sit back and watch. <laughs> come on, come on. Nah, I, um, I, I, I actually, a lot of the time, will sit back and watch. Um, there are a lot of people that, are, um, a, that know their stuff that we have in the team, and they, um, they all have their, their role. So I, will, I can do a lot of different things for the team, but like I said, there are, there are definitely more people involved in, in just me. Look, I'm going to go down this path. He mentioned about a, a, a new a new muzzy, right? And and we and we don't. I don't like to talk about things that go zzz. So, but we're seeing so much growth even even today. And when the world's working against us in many ways, uh, for, to spe up spec cars, and that's what you guys do at CTB, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And we. Our role is to, to make sure that the, the end customer that buys the Mustang can customise that in the way that they want and, and want or have what every little boy wants or little girl wants when they were, when they were younger. Um, so we just, we just try and deliver that and uh, with our partnership with Ford New Zealand we, um, we, we do a pretty good job of it I think. Now you were telling me the other day that this guy's profile across the, and his, with his brand partners is exploding uh, because of who he is. It's, it's a big personality. It is. It is a big personality, and it, um, it's there. Are, there are some pretty exciting things coming um, for next year, and um, we'll be we hopefully announcing that shortly. This is the, the fireworks truck is this way. They're going to extend the fireworks. Okay. So Sam hates being me being talked talk to on the on the telly. You've got quite a few words out of him, actually. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. We've got more than that and a and Dan. Uh, you, no, you tell me the influence think, um, that they have on you. Um, you know, Sam has a massive influence um, in between rounds, you know, um, the conversations and the catch-ups we have, um, what to do to make the car better or what, you know, not, not just what we're doing in between rounds, like what's, what are we doing in the future and, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, like, you know, if it wasn't for Sam, I wouldn't be driving these Mustangs and, um, you know, and there's a whole lot of other people behind the scenes, you know, with Ford and, and RTR vehicles and stuff like that. So... Um, like I say, and like Sam said, we've got some um, pretty exciting things happening in the... Well, give, us a, give us a sneak. Can you give me a little oh, sneak? Yeah, well, Come on. You, you, uh, you can see what um, FD, uh, the boys at um, in RTR in the States have done with their cars, like the new models coming out and... Um, That's not much of a sneaky. Come on. No. Nah, someone out. Uh, you know, there's... Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a few other things going on, like, and I can't wait to share with you and... Um, yeah, I think um, people will love it. So Did you think when you first took the Mustang, gosh, how many years ago was it now? Uh, there was about five, coming up six years ago now. That's yeah. right. Did you think going to a left steer and a big old tank, V8 tank, was going to uh, earn you a, a few more titles? Um, no, no, I didn't. I like, like, you know, like, like, obviously, obviously I wanted, wanted the challenge and, and, and to take on um, something, something different, but more, more going to the left hand drive was about learning something and, and, and hoping that I'd get the opportunity to go up to the States and just feeling comfortable 
driving whether it was our car or whether I got the opportunity to drive a car up there is that I could just turn up and I know the ins and outs of, of a left hand drive car and, and I feel pretty comfortable now I don't, I don't really mind what I drive um, there's some tracks I wish I could actually adapt like change my car in between certain rounds because I believe that in drifting um, and certain tracks that um, there's an advantage with being on some, you know, either either side. So, um, like this track here, is actually an advantage for me. You know, like coming back around the wall, you're sitting on the inside, and you've just got a clear vision, and that's where the smokiest part of the track is. And um, but then we go to Manfield, and it's you know, it's against me because I'm sitting on the outside with smoke just coming through the the side window, and and um, so that's quite challenging. So. Um, it would, it would be quite, be quite cool, cool to be able to go, oh, oh you're going to Manfield and make a right-hand drive. Right was, he, was, was, he, was he listening to that? Is Sam oh, listening to that? Oh, we can, we can do anything in the FTC stables. Did you bring the lovely wife down tonight? Did you bring the lovely wife with you? I did. Where is she? Nicole? Where's Nicole? Nicole, oh, no, she's running away. Come on, Nicole, come on. No, she. No, I don't want to go. No, oh, okay. okay. Well, talk to me about the support of having, uh, you know, you work, you do this, and then you run every five weekends of the year. Yeah, um, you know, like um, her support at, um, in between rounds, and, you know, the behind the scenes, the sponsorship and stuff like that. Um, you know, communicating with Sam, that stuff that I don't need to get my head caught up in, and um, yeah, so that's that's a big part of our our championship and, and our success. So um, yeah, we all, you know, everyone in our team, you know, um, needs a big pat, pat on the back and. Um, yeah, yeah like, I just I couldn't do it, do the do it without them. So. I'm, I'm being tapped on the arm here. here. Oh, we're, oh, good, we're good, to go. good to go? We're good, good to go. go. Okay, okay. Uh, Dan, uh, um, do you, you like to say, say something for us? Would you like to say, bring on the fireworks? Like, like as, if, as, as, as if you're starting off an IndyCar race or a NASCAR race. I'll give you a gentleman. Okay, okay. Three, three, two, start. you're in. <laughs> start the fireworks. <laughs> okay, that was bad. Folks, thank you, Dan. Four-time Drift King. Right here, you saw it. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the fireworks. Until next season. Ciao. All right, are you guys ready? Bay Park, are you ready? Ten, five, eight, seven, six, five, four, 